Welcome in, DK Sim Fam. It is time for our, I'll just call it final eight. I don't know what, what's trademarked, what isn't, what I can and cannot say. But we are here in the Madden Bracket Challenge. The final eight is upon us. We'll run through the bracket, we'll run through some of the results, and we'll probably talk a whole lot of nonsense. I am Jason Rossi over at Twitter at Jason D. Rossi. And with me is the smoothest man north of the border helping you win that dollar dollar cash cash y'all that's right that's what it's termed up there it's 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 a, it's a currency change uh and also maybe the smartest man that's been helping you so much with the greatest program here during the dream stream that would be the ultimate Ulrich lineup creator he is yep. the brilliant yep. mind over at the fantasy grind jeff Ulrich, everybody Woo! ultimate Ulrich lineup creators golf show uh is its correct name and yeah, welcome in to the eclectic eight, as Ooh. I'm going to call it now. Um, ecstatic eight, ignatimus eight, erratic eight is the way this tournament is gone. Dude, it's wild. But obviously, first one, we're opening. We got Tampa Bay, we got the Rams. Lineups are going to lock in a minute, but I, I'm not shocked by these two teams, Moose. And obviously, we got this game and we have the next one. We'll talk all about this as we go along. We're here with you for the 2 p.m., the 4 p.m., and then we'll hand it off to Marka and Cough for the nightcap. But it's, I've been like, okay, let me ask you this actually. I'll start this way. Did you put together or did you have at least a hunch of who you thought would be in the finals or like the final, like I was called, we'll call it the, the Elite Four? So, um, <laughs> I picked Tampa to win this. So, I mean, this okay. is a good game for me. I mean, this is like make or break, man. We got to get by the Rams here. Uh, I'm on team Tampa Brady. I've learned my lesson. Just never fade Tom Brady in anything Smart. I like. It's going to work out for him. I feel like it's probably going to work out for Sim, Sim Tom Brady just the same. So, um, that, they were my pick. I'm not shocked the Rams are here either. Uh, obviously, good defensive players. But I think this is the ro- where the road ends for the Rams. You know, Jared Ooh. Goff. I don't even want to call him a poor man's Tom Brady. He's like a very, very, very poor man's Tom Brady. So he's like layaway. He's layaway Brady. Layaway Brady. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. Uh, I like that. Um, So that's where I'm at. I'm all over the Bucks. Um, They're my pick. Did you put a lineup together? What is that? I did. What did I do though? Uh, What did I put in it here? Let's see. Most important. uh, Mike Evans in the captain. So a little bit chalky. Brady, Gronk, and Shady McCoy. So I went for that. You know, passing attack. And then uh, I put Higby and Reynolds in, so the kind of value guys. So I'm expecting points, but uh, yeah, one heavy Tom, heavy uh, Tampa Brady or t- t- Tom. Yeah, it's all. Brady, you know. Call it whatever you want. You just call them the Bradys. It, we we get it at this point. Uh, I went Cup in the captain. Brady. Go- I actually put Goff in, and I could. I did this lineup yesterday too, so I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, Mike Evans, Gronk, and Reynolds. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. I will also take Tampa in this one. They had to come from behind to beat the Raiders in the last matchup, win yeah. overtime. So I heard. M- maybe they're ripe for the pickings. We shall see. We appreciate you guys all joining. Let us know your picks. Uh, we Again, we are here for your um, – basically the whole early bird special. There's a 6K contest right now. It's filled up. Appreciate you all jumping into that, having some fun with these tournaments. Yep. We have, again, the Bucks, number one overall seed versus the Rams, who are the number eight seed. And then we'll have the Chargers, who are the 20 overall seed, versus the Saints in your four o'clock matchup. So you get lineups in for that. But, again, the early bird is filled up, so we'll be monitoring that. We got a great crew with us today. We got Jordan, our producer. We have Andrew, our technical director on the ones through one thousands. And we have Mr. P, our ops guy. So we're in for it here, Moose. Football, a little football that matters. It counts today. It's like that time yes. the All-Star game did. <laughs> Playoffs. Big time here. Who's gonna get to the ferocious four? And like sound effects going. Uh, don't forget, also just want to let you guys know tonight, while the 6K early bird has filled, as we see, there is Goff connecting. It's a nice catch there. Is that Coop? Looks like it is. There is a 8K bracket challenge tonight. 2K to first place. So make sure you get your lineups in. All right. There's also a free pool for this round as well, but. I'm just telling you, get in on that contest at 8K, 12K to first place. Like, come on. Also, we have 2K. Uh, sorry, 2K. I don't know if that's a 12 of action. Uh, 2K to first place for both these contests, early bird and the late. Here's the handoff. The, it was a late classic for the, the last two games. For the last two games, yes. That's cool, yeah. So definitely get in on that, guys. The little, little tiny classic slate for the last two games. 
it'll make the fact that you have to listen to Kaufman on the call for two games in a row a lot better as well, getting that you know, that chance at big money. It'll make it all worthwhile. I know Kaufman really wrecked the stream with me yesterday. Uh, he made the internet terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, again, apologies. You know, it was all laggy on, on YouTube. Hopefully hopefully they figure it out for the uh, the Madden After Dark, but that was... Uh, not gonna lie, that was you know annoying for everybody because it was laggy. But, uh, this one's not laggy because Rossi's here. He knows how to work the internet. So shout out, give, give a hit the like button for Jason Rossi, folks. Mm. You know, pulling us through the dark times. <laughs> that, yes, that that's what I do. No, we actually said we blamed cough was heavily. I did Madden After Dark with Tommy uh, Freeze Bob. Yeah, we blamed cough and we said and there could have been some Madden After Dark last. Night. I was so we came oh. in. I had to apologize. I said, you know, the internet in Canada can sometimes be a little wonky. Um, you know, with everything that's different, the wires are different. It's weird. No, but obviously things did happen. We appreciate everyone's patience. We had a great game last night. A lot of fun. We saw the Kansas City Chiefs get absolutely trounced and wow. bounced by the uh, Miami Dolphins. So Dolphins have made it here to the eight. They're going to take on the, I believe, Seahawks this evening. It's a tough scene. It is. We have the Dolphins. Yeah, Dolphins. Oh, I thought we were going to lose to the Patriots in the opening round. They've looked good, the Dolphins. Like, I've, I've seen, like, their last four games now. I, I obviously didn't see the one last night, but, like, the ones before that, they all looked good here as uh, the Rams get shut down here by this big Tampa Bay defense, fourth and nine. But, yeah, so Miami making a little Cinderella story. My Cinderella team, the Browns, got hammered Same. last night by Seattle. Yeah. Hope Russell Wilson just making a mockery of them, so... I, um, well, I'm actually going to yell this up very quickly. My wife is asking where macaroni and cheese is. So I'm hey, me texting her. This I would not, like to know. You that. guys need to know. Hey, Dan, it's on the second level up on in the overhead cap or the cupboard. The, the cupboard, the second level the up on the cupboard. The on cupboard. the right. On the right. On the right hand side, you, you open the cupboard, it's on the right. Yeah, the cabinets, the cabinets. <laughs> wow. Did you find it? It's right up there behind stuff. Big grocery shop today. This is a this is a fantastic lesson. And it's I'm not I'm not picking on uh the other uh I'm not picking on pick. women in general. Oh, but go ahead. it's not that they can't follow directions, it's that they don't listen to their husbands. It's that they they, they tune us out. So they're actually, you know, women are quite good at, at, at everything, quite frankly. But when you get into a relationship, oh, that's right over the middle. Nice play there. You get tuned out, like Jason giving proper instructions. <laughs> Dude, uh, she, did, she didn't believe you, did she? No. Hold on. Let's find out if we confirm because we get that big catch from everyone. <laughs> you got it? You're good. We're good, okay. everybody. DK Simpson, we can move along. Um, your other rights is Brian C. Uh, Yvonne I mean, saying. It, it, it goes both ways because I don't listen. Like, my, my wife tells me something, and I, I don't believe her. I, oh. like, legitimately, I've just, like, I've come to, you know, you're just like, no. I've lived no, with you f- for too long. I can yeah, see Oh, it. please. You're fallible, so. <laughs> you have one cupboard? I meant to say cabinet, to be honest. I don't even know what a cupboard <laughs> is. It's just, it sounded, it sounded right. Well, there's one place, and we all know this. In your house, you have many of the same things, whether it's a cupboard or, or cabinet or drawers, but there's one that has certain elements of food or the junk drawer or whatever it may be so she knew she knew and by the way i am oh bad pass for brady as you may take this or not i'm the guy who puts away the groceries i have a very seamless system i need things to be in a certain place because if not like her i would have no idea but she yeah. chose not to put things away so I, I like she'll put stuff in the fridge and i'll go in like 20 minutes after and be like all right let's let's situate this so like a normal person can find so- things yeah, um, I put things away in our house, and then it, it gets moved. Just you know. Yeah, see, I don't like that. That would drive me crazy. Is Brady another incompletion? Look kind of rough on this drive. Two wild, in, inaccurate throws. So they look like suck ups coming on, but that would be a real deep field goal here. We're we looking at like a sixty yarder. Oh my! We're gonna, we're gonna try it. It's fifty five. Fifty five. So okay. Still not gonna happen. I, well, I guess Let's I have. It's probably like a. We'll give it twenty percent. Oh, ooh, little short right there. Nice try by Suckup, or uh, former Mr. Irrelevant. Two weeks. Is it two weeks from today is the last day of the draft? I don't even remember how long these go anymore. Right? Saturday is the last day? 
Fr- we still do Thursday one round. Friday's got the two, and then Saturday's got the final three, four. Should I say? We're gonna go with it for next week. Two weeks with the draft when the draft happens. Oh, you mean like how many days the draft goes on? <laughs> yeah, it, it ends on Saturday. Sorry, I'm sorry. Don't be. Dude, you've got a PGA going on. This you have tough. tons of hockey. Drafts I mean, two just, weeks away. I just, you know, was was ragging on your wife for not listening to you the first time. <laughs> I can't even all this. So, anyways, um, no, I actually don't know how long the draft is. I, I think it's three days, but I actually don't even know. You know what? Hold on. Let me ask my wife. Hey, Din. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Din. Do you know how long the NFL draft is? <laughs> She's really upset. Do you know how long the NFL draft is? Yeah, how many days? Okay, thank you. She said she did not know. (laughs) Three days. Thank you, Jordan. Hey, Jordan! (laughs) No, I know it's... I just... My point was, Ryan Seckham was a former Mr. Irrelevant. Two weeks from around, a little after this time, we'll have this year's Mr. Irrelevant, the final pick of the NFL draft. (laughs) Good stuff. Good stuff here. It's the draft in the cupboards, says Andrew. Now, where's the draft? <laughs> to the, the right! <laughs> By the way, in the um, top owned in the early bird cl- special, 2K to first place, uh, Chris Godwin with the highest ownership, right under 64%. Robert Woods, 54%. Uh, Mike Evans at 50, uh, 45%. Buccaneers D, people expecting big things, shut him down the first drive at 41%. And Tom Brady, just 36%. Fascinating. It is interesting, but there's a lot, of, a lot of good players on on both sides. So, and you also have Chargers and Saints to pick from. So, right, right, yeah, obviously we're talking about a, a classic, not a showdown. So, Ooh, I think he got stuff there. I don't think he got the phone. Yeah. I got oh. it. No. Yes, he gave him. It. In this game, just so you know, for the two fifty free contest, Brady is wildly higher at seventy eight percent. Godwin at fifty seven. Uh, Evans at uh, 57 as well. Robert Woods, 53. Cup at 50. And Jared Goff at 49. Goff here in the gun. Goff to the, the cupboard. To the right. He throws it. Top uh, shelf. Sorry, I get very frustrated with that play. It's on my list. Big B. With that catch and go when you're out of bounds. Tippy toe, my friend. Yeah. Turn. When, they, when they throw it 10 yards over to the to the line of scrimmage on the Seriously. sidelines. And they throw it so hard that it drags the receiver out of bounds immediately. Fantastic no. play. <laughs> uh, Yvonne saying Washington is the dark horse. They're going to win it all. Mark my words. That would oh. be something. It would be wild. It would. That's, like, that's like, you know, up there with the 1980 U.S. Men's Olympic team. I mean, Washington won this. And do you believe in Mer- – uh, we will make sure. I believe it's going to be Emerson and Mr. Adam Koff. I mean, for the first time since like the early days together on a sim uh, Monday 8 p.m. Eastern so if Washington gets there I'm, I'm making sure that Emerson even though he has changed he's now big time we will make sure he do you believe in miracles is called as Dwayne Haskins raises the banner is that oh, is gonna be it. yeah touchdown back of the end zone nice find from Jared Goff gets it to Robert Woods opening touchdown of this game with just under oh, two left Oh, was it Reynolds? Oh, even better. So. Sorry, I thought I saw seven. I think that was a one-one, but um, either way, look at this dart. Right. Oh, you're right. One-one, baby. That's why I got to get those glasses. Moose with that 2020 vision, just like Jared Goff on that Ooh. strike. Wouldn't it be a sim if I didn't start calling the wrong names. <laughs> By the way, have you seen a Twitch fan? What's going on, Reeds Yogi? Cool again. Truffle, Piercy. What else we got in here? Scrolling back, Heavy Kevy. Tim the Man, I thought I saw in here earlier. Hope everyone's doing well. On YouTube, we got Noah, Chris, Jason, not me, Jordan, Kid, Abby, Good Crew, Endzone, Terrace. Appreciate everyone hanging out. Smash that like. If you're enjoying yourself. Reynolds, just 13% owned in the 7K contest. Nice. So there you go. Reynolds getting some low ownership there. Yeah, I dig Tampa, it because Tampa back again. It back back against the uh, back against the wall again here. They were off to a bad start, I guess, in the last one against the Raiders too. So yeah, they were de- when I tuned in the other day. I think it was Zach and uh, Glash on the call. I think it was yesterday yep. morning, and 
it was 13 to three with like three minutes ago in the third. And I had to jump into a work call and I was like, oh, wow, Raiders going to move on. Okay. Then I came back later and I heard them talking about that the Tampa Bay came back in overtime. And also the Rams also won in overtime against the Steelers yesterday. These teams holding on, man, making things interesting. We'd love to see it. We'll see here as Brady, as you mentioned, the back against the wall, five wide to start this drive. Looking around, has a receiver. It's caught. Good win. My son's looking for the uh, cupboard as we speak. He's searching through. I hear a screaming up there. The draft's in the top left corner. He's like, what are you talking about? How does he not know that? Doesn't he kind of do this for a living? Yeah. Uh-oh, must be says, stop with the lies. You are not getting no darn glasses. It doesn't take four months to make glasses. Must be. I'm telling you, I'm going to get glasses. I just am very, I am an extremely homebodied all of a sudden. Like, I used to always be out and about in the city. I, the place I'm going to go is in the city, which is about 40 minutes from where I am. And I'm, during my week, I really just don't want to do anything. So, so, so you're actually like you're, you're getting glasses? Yeah, I have to get glasses. I have really bad eyes. Oh, okay. Like terrible. Um, oh, Tam, Tom, 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 Tampa, Tom, Tam, Tom, <laughs> Tom, Tom Tampa. Tampa. Stacked. Either way, so there's another three and out here. For about a million yards. Um, so you just you have to go get certain eye frames, or? Yeah, I be, here's the, the, the very quick story. I got the fan was here one time. I got my eyes dilated, and I almost couldn't do a sim. I've never, I've never had my eyes tested since I was like real little. Like okay. I've never been dilated before. It was scary. I didn't know I was going to cry like yellow. Have you ever had your eyes examined recently? No, I have perfect eyes. All right. Well, we already knew you were perfect. And now they're just somebody pinched the man. Um, but I basically, they put like iodine. You, you dilate your eyes. I did an eight right. o'clock sim. Right. This all happened at four o'clock. You got to put like dye in there, right? Yeah. Dude, and it was scary because you like yellow. It was bizarre. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I did it. This had to be a month and a half ago. So one of my friends who is an optometrist told me, all right, come to my place. I'll take care of you. We'll get you nice glasses, all this. Stuff. I'm like, cool. Just haven't done it. When things are convenient, Moose, and I don't know, this says a lot about me. And it's like, oh, it's my friend. I'll just do it anytime. Yeah. It becomes less of like, a, I should do this right away. Yeah. So. Yeah, you I, there. You know, you can just do it anytime. Yeah. Oh, bounce oh! already intercepted. A little deflection, and then he just, you know, if he just runs straight, you got a touchdown, but instead he decided to zigzag a couple times and he got tackled. So, nice uh, deflection catch, though. But yeah. uh, Levante David getting it, so Tampa Bay right back on the attack here. Yeah, I, I uh, my, my dog way back in the day, RIP, um, he got his eyes yes. scratched by a, uh, by a cat, oh. and he had to get his eyes dilated. So, I saw the, I've seen Wait the, a the second, process. really? Yeah. For, oh man, that well, must be he's, even... a, he's a Boston Terrier, and they have like those big bug eyes. Yep. So, like they don't like they, they don't have, like quite frankly they get eye problems or they can. And uh, he was just being he was he was being he was trying to make friends with a cat, and this cat was like a complete you know yeah. bad cat. word. He's just a cat. <laughs> he decided oh, I think I'm gonna claw him, and uh, you know had to go get a he, he ended Poor up with guy. a tiny scratch on his eyeball, but nothing nothing major. He's fine. It's when he was young too. He was a puppy, but. So Jeez. I've seen the process of the iodine and stuff, and it's not its not pretty. Yeah. Oh, it's not. And Jordan even says the worst is when it's a sunny day after you get dilated. So for me, Jordan, it was like the traffic glare of dark with light, like the lights coming in my eyes. It was brutal. Getting absolutely annihilated by the chat right now. They're just calling me. <laughs> who was it? Uh, someone said, don't believe my web of lies. Also, <laughs> uh, Abby says, Rossi, you shouldn't be able to drive right now. Till you get lenses, bro. Just thinking of your safety and all the drivers. DK SimFam should crowdfund you for that. Well, they're not need a crowdfund. Happy is on you, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, it's, it's DK Make Rossi uh, Needs Glasses contest. All right, well, all right. Was... let's all relax. I, I I could read that, Abby. Like I can read. <laughs> I, I can drive. Actually, driving's fine. Like just at night, I always have had issues, but I, I promise you, I would never put my family or anybody in danger. I do get like this sometimes, but <laughs> but I appreciate you, Abby. I appreciate you looking out. No need to crowdfund. I can put, but trust me, I can afford the glasses. It just becomes a, it's just laziness. I'm a complete lazy human being, and I, I this is this is a this is a wake up call. I get it. Uh, Mike Evans in this one, 42 yards off of three catches, leading all receivers. The touchdown. If you're just joining us, one catch, 12 yards. 
it was Josh Reynolds from Jared Goff, our lone scorer. Goff also has the interception that is where we pick things up when we get here to the second. He's at the fantasy grind. It's Jeff Ulrich. We're all excited to be here. It's fun times. Yeah, here man. In playoffs. <laughs> Reed's T, did you know? Or Reed's, did you know? I still go with it. It doesn't matter. I call you what you want. He says, Rossi isn't tall enough to drive. Listen, I got a booster seat. <laughs> Just use the uh, the phone books. Yeah. Here's a real question for you, Moose. Do they still make phone books? Uh, we stopped getting them up here a couple yeah. years ago. Thank God. Because, oh, my God, those were annoying. you get them and you'd be like, great. <laughs> like, well, I, I, like, who's still registered? You know, numbers are still. The, thanks for the 10 pounds of paper, you know? <laughs> uh, Yogi saying, uh, what's up, Rossi? Jeff, love you. Feelings mutual, man. Absolutely, dude. Glad you guys are all here hanging out. A little golf action today. What else is going on today? Assume some MLB. Oh, you're going to get tons of baseball. You got some basketball, hockey. Got yep. all the majors going. Got my head over to DK Nation. Got my hockey uh, article up there today. Liking the, uh, the Panthers as a little underdog. There's a touchdown. Whoa, touchdown for Chris Godwin because Moose's article is a godsend. Because if you need some. <laughs> Listen, I like no. I'm not joking. I'm not going to say this is no hyperbole. We're going to get a tie game here. Godwin, don't forget, has that high ownership in the classic. So a lot of happy campers out there. Uh, I will say this 150 times over: when you write, the people should listen. Especially if you're not a, a puckhead, if you're not someone that's big into hockey, a sticksman, if you will, any other innuendo based uh, hockey references. You need to read these things and go for it. Take a chance because. Whether it's low buy-in, high buy-in, these guys know. Moose knows. You can credit him later. If it doesn't work, you can blame me. But I would just say that's what I do. I like to read, especially like hockey I'm pretty good with. Basketball I know enough, but I always check yourself with the experts. Again, you can check it out. DraftKings Nation, baby. Absolutely, dude. You're taking the Panthers. You like the Panthers. Too. Panthers. Wow. <laughs> Oh, dude, speaking about Panthers, we talked about this last night, but you've seen the Bobcat video, right? The dude who had a pick Oh, the, 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 the guy who throws the Bobcat? One of the most... Isn't that just an, an exhilarating... That's, that's got to be, like, stuff right out of your neck of the woods. I know it's in North Carolina, but that's got to be, like... The, the Bobcat's up in Canada? They're chilling near you? Um, we don't, we don't have Bobcats. We have Cougars. Mm. Bobcats are small. Cougars. Yeah, I was going like, to say, I don't, think a, I don't think you're picking up a Cougar. No, uh, if you see a well, Cougar, you know... <laughs> you're pretty much done. Um, yeah, you're not picking it up. You're wrestling it, you know, to the death, basically. Um, but yes, you know, wildlife encounters. Did this guy find, like? I, I what I don't understand about the video is, mm -hmm. okay, what, like what? How did it start? Did she find a bobcat somewhere? Like I just no. So I've watched this video honestly 500 times because okay, I'm yeah. hysterically like, there's the loop. Man, I love the loop on Twitter. There's a nice play by Anderson Ooh, getting Anderson. down. Nice play. Very quickly, I must read this. I'll get back to Bob Bobcat. Rock yep. Forever says, I was dating a girl in Cali. He goes, I live in Texas. Thanks. Says, back in 2006, she she sent me to an eye appointment out there, and I went with her, and they ended up dilating my eyes. And that was torturous. <laughs> Dude, like, I get what you're saying, but, like, it's also for a reason. It does stink, though. Um, but also, uh... Gone Fish and says, Rossi, once you get your glasses, you will see that you're actually taller than everyone thinks you are. <laughs> It'll happen. It'll happen. Um, but the Bobcat, so what my understanding from watching it, again, this is my self-analysis of this video. So that's going to go out of bounds for Higby. The woman who comes out, the man's wife, first of all, just the guy, the pleasant morning, yeah. is unbelievable. Puts the coffee down, talks about how he needs to get his car chain, uh, cleaned. The woman has some form of animal, I believe, in a case. So the bobcat's lurking, and I think once it finds prey, if you will, there we go. Okay. and I think that's when it attacks the woman. The guy, though, what? Uh, there's two heroes in this video, like all time, yeah. like Die Hard style. The bobcat goes after the woman. This man picks it up like Simba yeah. and the Lion King, holding it up, yelling, "It's a bobcat!" The woman who was he says good morning to is jogging, gone out of the film. She comes running back. So this man then chucks a probably 20 pound to 30 pound cat just chucks it and then the thing that he just pulls out a gun like <laughs> nonchalantly like i'm gonna shoot the bleep and I, it's amazing it's amazing i i also have to 
It's, it just escalates so quickly. It's so, and it's 46 seconds. It's perfect. Nice catch so, there at a first I'd down. Like but. Zero to 100, you know? Yes. Like, <laughs> I think it was. It's a bobcat. <laughs> and he's holding oh, it's a bobcat. And it's just. Oh. Rah, rah. It's like, oh my God, amazing. The ball was tipped, by the way. Cop, nice concentration. Um, I think it was Kimes over from uh, ESPN said, she tweeted that, like, the best part is the loop when he says good morning, like, after the loop. So it's like crazy. He's running after a gun. There's swears, there's screaming, and then just loops back. Just morning. <laughs> <laughs> like, this guy had no idea what the next less than minute looked like in his life. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, look at this. Jordan says, we used to have Bobcat sightings where I'm from in upstate New York. He says, he luckily never saw one. Uh, Jordan, you would have dominated that Bobcat. I'm trying to think of what we have around here in terms of just, like, animals like that that can, like, uh, you know, cause problems. I'll, I'll tell you what is, like, you know, what can be actually, you kind of have to watch yourself around around here is the Canadian geese, man. Oh, the Canadian yeah. geese travel in packs, and they're very productive, and you know, if you if you just piss off a Canada goose, like look out, dude. You and actually, Rossi, on that note, mm -hmm. if you want um, some hilarious, Google Canada geese taking on animals bigger than it. Oh, and, I'm uh, saving that. I'm saving that. It'll distract me. Yeah, you will. You will get <laughs> lots of plenty of, of videos. There's, there's videos of like Canada geese taking on like lions and like winning. No. You know, what? Like, yes, and like there's there's one of them like backing up a herd of cows or something like. <laughs> These, these are, like, geese are, geese alone are, like, can be, you know, they're aggressive. But, like, Canada geese, just, like, they take the cake. Like, these things do not back down, so. Okay, I'm just, not messing with that. I think their just demeanor just really puts off other animals. It's like, what, what am I dealing with here? It's like this weird, like, long neck thing. It's oh, very it's awkward. It's like two tons. It's like, wow, I better back off. So, yeah, Google that if you want to. Uh, Blitz picked up. No, I'm definitely going to check. That might be my in-between. Because I'll tell you, if I do it now, I'll, I won't be able to. You can probably no, think. for sure. We won't get it open during the game because it'll, it'll be. I'll be done. Oh, Even my... me. Like, I, I kind of want to open it. I want to get those open now. But, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I got to check it. But I will. Oh, go for it here. Fourth and inches. Hold tight. I'll tell you what CJ had to say in a moment for Twitch. There's a quick draw. Has a man. It's caught. Will he get the credit, though? Oh, they got it to the four, but the ball is turned over to Tampa. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What? Cup makes the catch. He falls. He, his momentum. That's just an awkward acrobatic catch. Went the wrong way. Wow. So Tampa takes over. John what a turn of like, Wish I could have traded uh, Jared Goff <laughs> before this sim ended, before we got to the new sim. Great. He's like, put the wolf in. <laughs> Bring wow. him over. Even John Wolford. So with three minutes of play here in the second, Brady takes over. There is our yeah. first real sighting of uh, Bracket Lenny. Bracket. Uh, CJ over on Twitch said uh, he was trying to tell me that it had rabies, the bobcat, and the guy picked it up, and that's why he had the handgun and was going to shoot it. Can you Here's tell it. when it has rabies? <laughs> In that type of, like, quick action, too? Like, would you know that quickly? Probably just from its behavior, I assume. Maybe. Um, also, someone earlier said, you could tell my laziness by the uncapped plug behind me. That's some good eyesight on your part. Holy smokes, I can barely see that, and it's right there. <laughs> How did you see that on YouTube? Oh, dude. What the? What, did you zoom in? <laughs> yeah, that, that is true, though. I have to put a cap on that thing. <laughs> oh, wow. Cap on that thing, yeah. Seriously. Um, Emerson's baby gap shirt over on uh, YouTube says, "Ah, Moose is scared of the goose." Listen, you should be scared of the goose, man. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to mess with those things. You might chase them back at once, and then and then it's like it's on. They're like, "Oh, oh, you want to go?" You know, like trust me, I, I I see people like trying to scare the goose, and I'm like, mm, "We're in for it." <laughs> Sit down and grab the popcorn because this is gonna be a show. You gotta steer clear. Um, Piercy asks, uh, am I ever going to show you the comics behind me? Dude, which one do you want to see? I mean, I huh. I got a new Wolverine in the other day. Nice. Show that at halftime. Do you mean amazing. new as in a new edition or new, new as in new to you? Okay. New to me. Yeah, new to me. Yeah. Got it in the mail there. Love it. 
So do you subscribe to something that mails it to you, or are you no, just, I just ordering? Buy, I just yeah. buy them off the interwebs, find deals. I'm mainly looking for graded ones, or sometimes I'll buy raw ones and you know send in a batch. It's my next plan of attack. But love it. Yeah, man, I love it. I will say that's one of the things I do miss is we're gonna get a punt here deep here. So can we get a a block punt? Hey, it gets it off clean. Yeah, bad uh, Tampa Bay. What a have. punch! I mean, the, the, the punters Ooh. on the Sims are just throwing <laughs> something, man. I'm like, what? That punt went 70 yards. He booted that from the back of the end zone to the opposite 30. It's, and then it didn't even get to the 40. So, run that Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, <laughs> crazy, you know, the late 90s or whatever. Seriously. It's, you know, Daryl Anderson again. Do you remember that when, when it was when McGuire and Sosa were hitting? And then someone's like, what's that above your locker, Mark, Mr. McGuire? It's a big, massive. Thing of creatine, and then it was like that was the news for like the next like six months. What is it creatine? Put, it put creatine on the map, and to this day, and I, I know what it, it's a bulking. So if you're someone that is trying to gain weight, it can really help. But it's still funny how like that really turned like you know protein's always been a thing and yeah. different supplements. But when, when that happened in ninety uh, seven ninety eight, it's like oh creatine. That's what I gotta get on. I gotta look like Mark McGuire from Just Creatine. That's it. <laughs> Every high school coach everywhere is like, all right, kids, start taking your creatine before the football game. Yeah. GF, oh, that way. GF uh, JR from, uh, from Twitch says, if you see a raccoon during the day, they have rabies. That is actually probably oh. true. I Raccoons, the, I don't think yes. It works the same with bobcats, but it, it could be. Definitely would not shock me if that bobcat in that video had rabies. <laughs> I just, I just love the guy just yanks it, picks it up, and chucks it. It was it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> then just pulls out a firearm, just like no big deal. Dude's no. wearing like boots, shorts, had his coffee. He was holding some sort of like food packaging as well. That's my hero. Yeah, just, I don't know where the gun was, but it was there somewhere. Always ready. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, we'll say one thing as you mentioned in geese and reminded me also of my wife. I'm not going to yell up to her this time, but she has a famous story when she was a kid and she was feeding like birds at a pond. Oh, yeah. And then one of the geese came over or the gooses came over and they just kind of like they did this hiss where they just do like oh, an yeah. open mouth. And she yeah. was thought they wanted to feed. So she threw food at it. This thing just charged at her. Oh, she yeah. Had, and they just like I don't think it hit her. I don't remember the story for the sake of the story. I'll just say it knocked it over and knocked her over. But she had to like run her full space. So she was probably in her like. 11 10 range so she could run but still like to this day like she always like she was a runner for as an adult and so anytime she would run in what was known as like the boston common area over we have another area near water they all the geese hang out and she always was worried like running anywhere near them because they'll charge at you when they when they feel threatened or if there's a baby they'll come at you there you go man you got first-hand experience with this this is you know this isn't a joke. Like the, these the, are these are these are North American uh, geese. They they're they're not as they're not as tough, risky. But they, yeah, just the geese as a whole, you don't want to mess with them. Yeah. The, the, the Canada geese will really, you know, the Canada geese are more like you know they'll 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 sit back, they'll, they'll take things in. They're, they're <laughs> to be honest, they're they're a little bit calmer, if I'd have to say. But if if you if they start to to, to to charge like you're done like you, you just need to get out of there because they're they're not just gonna hiss at you like they're they're going for the, the jugular you know the canada oh. geese. Right. are geese protected <laughs> i will just answer this guru yes they're always protected wildlife oh catch not going anywhere is henderson there get another time out did she get bitten in that scenario or? no I, I don't think they caught her like i said for the story i'll say they knocked her over and she scraped her arms but i believe she escaped they took her to the ground. Yeah, yeah, they took her. They brought her to the brink of bringing her into the pond to make her the That's goose right. queen forever, but <laughs> she just merely escaped. Bring uh, me the human. Yeah, we need her. <laughs> Here comes a field goal attempt. Just under about 38 yards. Kick is up. It's good. 10-7 Rams with just under a minute to play here in the second quarter. Death Pond says, if you see a cougar during the day, it means her husband is out of town. But um, <laughs> shh, shh. Wow. Waiting for it. Somebody had to. May have missed some, but so. <laughs> Those are the ones you really just toss. Just get out of here. Uh, 
Uh, Guru says, not always. Hunting exists, Ross. You're, that's right. You're right, actually. Good point. There's, you know, like Carson Wentz, who's a big game hunter, I believe it is called. Good point. But I feel like in the geese, I feel like I don't think, I'm, I'm no, I know for a fact you cannot harm a geese or a goose or whatever you want to call them, geeses. Um, you can't, at least in Boston, there are signs up in most areas because I have wanted to take a punch at one and I was told <laughs> you don't want to do that. I used to do, we used to put a concert on one of the radio stations I worked at, right? In uh, what's, what's known as the uh, Hat Shell in Boston, where like the famous uh, like 4th of July, big celebration in Boston, right over, right next to a body of water, and there's all these geese hanging around. And one time they were like near us, I was like trying to shoo them away. There's a nice catch. Scotty, oh, Scotty Miller, is he going to take a house the call? Afterburners. Go down the sideline, Scotty. Go, go, go. Oh, down oh at the one. Wow. What oh, a no. It was run. so good. He needed to go for the pylon. Oh, oh. I can't believe he didn't get in there. All right. Well, I know. He, the half. He's not going to get the payoff either. You know he's not going to be out here on this play. No. Who will get it? Who do you need here? Nice play there, though. Brady connected with Scotty Miller. Wiggled his way down. Fournette in the backfield. Two tight ends at the give. Stuffed. So they're going to call their last time out at some point before the next play. It's going to get interesting. Oh, wow, well, yeah. Scotty Miller, four. Oh, no, Tampa, don't owned. do this. Don't settle for the field goal, Tampa. Or what I'm worried okay. about is 16. All right, yeah, the sack. or the... Did they get sacked? Because we've seen this time and time again. Oh, this is a tale as old as The time. Hoyer. The Not Hoyer. Okay. okay, 16 seconds. They're probably going to go for it here. They're probably going to take it. If they let it run down to 11, they would have been kicking the field goal for sure. But yeah. 16, usually the sim goes for it once. Oh, oh boy. boy. They're going to run the single this coverage. Top of the screen. Brady's going to look. Oh. Got a man. Hey, Touchdown. Oh. All right. All, oh, it's my boy, too. Mike Evans. Uh, all our uh, trepidation and um, sigh relief. So, yeah, great drive there. Quick. I had less than a minute to play with. Two timeouts. And Brady to Miller. Then the run by Fournette. And there it is, capping off the touchdown. 46% owned in the 6K early bird special is Mike Evans. So nice play there. If you were one that took a stab at Miller, nice play as well. Then the score, but Evans now into the end zone. Still 14 seconds to play here. Two timeouts. We'll see if the Rams try to get maybe a big play. Take a shot. Let's go, baby, says Yogi. Whoops. Stack T uh whoop, stack Tampa Bay. This is nasty. Glad he caught it. C E H. Tampa taking the lead here, so. Rams do have two timeouts. Uh, no, yeah. no. They're, 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 we're just going to go into half here. <laughs> yeah, I would assume. Well, let's see. They've been passing out to Henderson out of the backfield here. Maybe they'll take a shot. Two quick plays could get him in field goal range. Or they'll hand off. Just don't call the timeout. Don't even waste that. Ah, you oh, sons of guns. They you. always do that. Those guys. They're going to do that. Just run it. Or that's pass what, it on the first That's play. what I mean. Take a shot. No, oh, completely. You know what? They're going to do it again. They're going to call another timeout. <laughs> if I knew this was going to happen, I'd be watching Canadian geese versus larger animals. Right. I'm trying to think of the most impressive one I saw. I mean, there is one with like a tiger or something, I think. There's a pass. Caught. All right. So actually, the one with the tiger might not be. That might be like some kind of Asian goose. There's some with, uh, you know, taking on like a herd of cows or something. <laughs> it's still anything. I don't care if I it's. I know, a, anything. Right? Uh, human beings, anything. We're going to get a, at least a deep touchdown attempt. I don't know if Goff's with his power. With his arm here, man, 21 with the latest update. It's going to be able to reach the end zone from here, but we'll see. It's going to be close. We get a miracle. Only three man rush. Goff looking, waiting, unleashes. Not even close to the end zone. Throws into like four guys for Tampa. Ball's incomplete. So we're going to the half here. Moves 14 to 10. And Tampa Bay over the Rams. Winner of this makes it to tomorrow night as our uh, Fantastic Four. Oh, wait, I don't think that's got to be trademarked, too. Um, the fabulous four 
tomorrow night again. That's going to be going down. So touchdowns in this one. Jared Goff connected with Josh Reynolds for the opening touchdown, a field goal as well added to the mix for the Rams. Goff has the interception. He's thrown for 168. Pretty impressive. Brady, 141, two touchdowns, one to Mike Evans, the other to Chris Godwin. Two, all of these guys were highly owned in the early classic so far. So good. So we'll see if Tampa Bay can hold on here. Rams trying to find if that glass slipper still fits. Well, we got a leader. GM19 leading the 6K early bird special with 67 points, 64 points. Shout out. See if you can hang on. Speaking of shout outs, we got Jordan, our producer. Andrew is our technical director and Pat is in ops. We got a great crew. We got Moose, me, Jason Ross. We'll be hanging with you for the four Eastern as well. There'll be Chargers and Saints. Again, both these two, the winner of this one, the winner of the next one, face each other tomorrow night in the final number that is bigger than three and lower than five. Cup with five catches, same with uh, Henderson. Not having a great game, Henderson, but he's got the catches. Higby, all these guys right around that one, you know, around that 40 yard range. Evans with the touchdown, 45 yards and four grabs. Oh I'm literally God. just what the hell am I looking at here? I'm literally just dropping Canada geese. Oh, here we go. I got the a good what? one. There's a there's a geese there's a geese. If I call it a geese, I don't even know what I call these things. A goose cobra on chicken. top of a, a cobra chicken. I, that yeah. still feels light. Watch on top of a one. man. Watch the last one quickly. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh wait, this there's a is that a cow or a bull? That's a cow. They're like trying to charge at it. The thing doesn't move. <laughs> this thing doesn't even take no crap. Yeah, all right. They we're done. We can play the sim all you want. I'm not watching anything but the seven second clip on seven second to clip on move. Wow, geese really don't care. Wow. It's crazy. Appreciate you guys being here. Guru Abby C E H. Smash that thumbs up. If you could over on YouTube, yep. let people know you're liking what you're seeing. So much more content, by the way, has been coming here to the Dream Stream. Uh, next Sunday, by the way, mark your – oh, is it this – no, next Sunday, right? That the uh, – Oh, the eating? Yeah, the eating contest. Is it Sunday or, Sunday or Saturday? Thought it was Sunday. We should probably get this right considering it's our job. It is Sunday. You were right. I was wrong. No, uh, no you're you were smart. wrong. I'm stupid. Stop um, that. Stop 6 it now. 6 p.m. Eastern is the uh, – Major MLE action instead of a sim, you're going to get uh, at 6 p.m. Eastern a little bit of uh, Major League eating. Yeah, it's like popcorn and like crazy stuff. Is it popcorn? Oh, I know it's part of it because I think it's like Oscar driven for the Oscars. Oh. So, yeah, they, they're theming it out. It, it's going to be gnarly. Like popcorn to me, like I love popcorn and I, I think of all the things I've seen and I've watched them really, I'm pretty into uh, competitive eating. Uh, okay. I've watched some crazy stuff. Like I've watched them eat like trout and trout. <laughs> yeah, like like oysters and just like the wild, the candy one we did here around Halloween. But something about popcorn is so unsettling because you can't eat it too fast because of the kernels. Oh. It's actually dangerous. Completely, yeah. So like hot dogs, all that, you know, like obviously all of it is dangerous to an extent. But popcorn to me seems like the most, and like you could bite and hit a kernel and really ruin your day. It's just like popcorn is like one of the least friendly foods for like eating fast. Like it's, yeah. it's not something you just go and like, oh, like you just suck it down. Like, you know, they just suck the hot dogs down basically. Like you can't do that with, with popcorn. It's like, have you ever tried to eat more than like four soup crackers? Like those, what are they? Who makes those? Oh, um, you're talking about the saltines? The saltines. Like try and eat like more than three of them at once or like four of them at once. <laughs> no. Like it's, no, your, your mouth just like it. it it's like dries up. It dries yeah. up all the moisture. Yeah. It's it, it kind of I feel like that would be a similar situation with the uh with the popcorn. So seriously. Oh, Jordan drops in here. Yeah, it's the major the DraftKings red carpet film feast. Love that. Mm. It's in Vegas. What a graphic. My lord, that's nice looking. So let me see. Does it say the foods here? So we get a pass. Uh, uh where am I looking? Let's see. So World popcorn. Oh, it's just popcorn. Joey Chestnut. It's just popcorn, right? Wow. That's oh, dude, that's gonna be so 
hard to watch because I just oh, know. A, oh, wait. There's a hard-boiled egg-eating undercard, which is recreating a scene from <laughs> Cool Hand Luke. Wow. Okay. That's, That's pretty a, cool. There's a hard-boiled egg undercard. That's hilarious. When do, where else do you hear this stuff? Come on. This is the well, best. Have you seen Cool Hand Luke? Yeah, I sure have. Yeah, yeah. I, okay, great. It's a classic. I was going to say you should see it if you haven't. But, um, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. I like that. You know? It's oh, good, my uh, God. Good Oof. Okay. Yeah. I didn't, dude, that, just like the way you said that, though. There's a hard-boiled egg undercard. <laughs> it's not, not and, something I thought I'd ever be saying. Yeah. On, <laughs> um. Must be says nobody could ever challenge Rossi. He is the undisputed daily fantasy eating champ. Dude, I'd give it a shot. I'd give it a shot. I would. Uh, I would not give it a shot. Not popcorn. I, I couldn't. I mean, I don't, be terrible, but... Yeah, like eating fast is a very. It's a skill. Like you yeah. think we've all done it. Like we've all eaten things quick. But like to do it like on a competition level. No, uh, I could never. I can't hang. And most of those guys, by the way, it's like a joke if you're like, oh, it's a way of calling somebody chubby or whatever, but those guys are like in elite shape most of them, especially the good ones. Well, I feel like it, like you got to train your body to like do, like burn that many calories. I don't know. Anything. No, you're right. That was it's, the whole thing. Kobayashi back in the day kind of, you know, put the hot dog eating contest on the map. Yeah. That was a huge part. He said like he conditioned like crazy. He would run like half marathons he was just such a sprinter he would burn you know 13 14 000 calories to train like that's a lot of calories a day for someone that's small and yeah. then if, you know when you put think about when you're eating those hot dogs probably putting two times that for real Ugh. it's crazy to think about it. just your your whole body your system you're not supposed to do that just like you're not supposed to run a marathon technically your body's not supposed to do that it's not meant, meant to do it should i say Tampa Bay Drive, another first down here. Kind of read through things sometimes. I just, like I love when you catch. I feel like it happens a lot more on Twitch, where like they're in the midst of a conversation, so you're trying to think: Do I read that or do I not? Because am I in the middle of a conversation? <laughs> but I love it. Second and nine here, one yard run. See, Nasty says, nah, Matt LaMarca MVP. I, with all due respect to LaMarca, love him. He's going to be on tonight. I don't think he could do it. No. I cannot do it. I don't, but I don't think, like, LaMarca's so chill. Like, I don't think he's going to start, like, all I right, like man. Anderson would, would, would get all you guys. Yeah, like, he, I think he could train himself to the point where he potentially could. Like a cereal. We should do a cereal version. Emerson just downing it. So you got that expected lit inside the 30, taking time off. Try to go up two scores with a touchdown. Yeah, big play. Oh, time here. Look. Clean pocket. Oh, God. That was, I mean, uh, it's those... throw, but, like, come on, buddy. Yeah, possession oh, catches forward. on the sideline. Come on, dude. At least that one was, like, for five yards. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it wasn't, and it didn't go out of bounds technically. Yeah. It, didn't, it didn't go out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Death Paws says, my money's on Freeze Pops and his magical mic play. Oh, oh yeah. Duh. Yeah, Tommy would be up there, too. Could have a pretty good competition, you know, get uh, the, those four names already. Um, Listen, I would be I'm out. No, you got to be. Kaufman would be a dark. I thought Kaufman would be. No. Kaufman He's all would, like, you know what he would do? It would, he would do, like, the thing where he, like, would, like, just not really participate to be, like, and he thinks he's funny when he's, like, just taking nibbles. <laughs> Like you gotta, if you're gonna compete, get in. You would fully withdraw with an injury after, like, you know, the first round or whatever. So. Yeah. Oh, Andrew, good call. Maybe Christian. Christian probably could. He could be a dark horse. That, yeah. that could be a dark horse. Yep. Here we go. Big plays now. Forced in gold. It's been a great drive thus far for Tampa, getting down to the eight-yard line. Already up four. There's the snap. Brady looks. Coverage is good. He's got a man at the sideline. Brady's oh, taking his time. Oh, okay. Eventually goes that oh, way. Oh. Tries to break it. Is... I think that's Leonard. Oh, no. That's um, oh, Shady. 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 He's one of your guys in your lineups. 
butter eating contest is disgusting, says Philip. I actually watched that. Very unsettling. Butter eating? Yeah, it just sticks to butter, bro. Just, ugh. Ugh. Jeff looking for Gronk here. Gronk is like double covered. Has a man in the back of the end zone. And again, Mike Evans. Same play as the touchdown earlier. Just a little less coverage from the Rams. So now a commanding two-score lead with just about 11 minutes to play total in this eight engaging erratic round. Brady sneak, nah, Nathan. We don't really see much of that. We have seen it, just not much. It's usually him like in the backfield, dance around and goes for the run. So, Mike Evans, 16.8% out in the free showdown. Oh, in our little league showdown, anyways. Yep. A pretty popular captain spot. I'm not sure what he is in the uh, the bracket challenge, but I gotta gotta think he's got some some decent ownership there. In the early bird, his overall ownership was 45, uh, but basically 46% if we're rounding. Yep. There we go. Yep. Oh yeah. 23.6 points today now for Evans. So, good good game from the two touchdowns. That's got, I believe, his fifth catch, too. So, getting there. Still got plenty of time, too. The what Rams the... don't score here. This, this, this game could be just about done. Yeah. No, they're, they're starting to pull away. This is um, this is good for my Tampa pick. <laughs> Going to really cash in on this, you know, Brady um, confidence for once in my life. What, uh, what with the, the NFL draft coming up, you, uh, you excited for it? Like, you got the, you, what do you want the Patriots to do? That's a question, right? Uh, I'll be honest. As I sit here today, I kind of wouldn't mind like the, the old Belichick trade back and get assets. Like I yeah. don't think they're gonna at fifteen. I don't think there's the quarterback. I don't think Belichick values a, a first round talent in quarterback. He never really has. If you look at the history of him as a head coach, not just New England. So yep. and, and just knowing his style, he really does like the lower end value. That's why I really think he. I believe, and again, I'm nowhere near connected as I once was with that organization and the rumors and things that I've heard, but I still think he really wants to get Jimmy Garoppolo. I think that is still his his final toast. If he can have Garoppolo, let's just say, for the next eight years and he breaks the all-time wins record as a head coach and potentially gets another Super Bowl ring post-Brady with a Garoppolo in the move he wanted to make, allegedly, but pretty seemed mm-hmm. like it was going to go the way four years ago. So to me, I think that's the plan still. I think it's just the 49ers have you know, tried to play hardball and now them having number three. So for me, at 15, if they take a pick, give me a good linebacker. Maybe if one of these if, – if the rumors of, like, Devontae Smith just slipping, like, I'll gladly take that. But yeah, yeah. Um, I just personally see them probably trading back because there's going to be other teams that are going to get desperate for a position right in the middle of the first round. I got, uh, I got the Patriots in there as, like, one of about three or four teams that could move up. Like, See, uh, if, like, like start- I, again, I don't, I don't know if anyone's going to be willing to like pay the King's ransom to like move up to four, but like, you know, my scenario and cause I think San Francisco is still going to take Mac Jones. I just really feel like mm-hmm. Kyle Shanahan, that's his archetype QB kind of like, you know, what you said with, with Brady or with, uh, with Belichick that, you know, Shanahan, I, I think has a guy he wants and I think it's Mac Jones. I really do believe Agreed. that. And, um, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I think Atlanta isn't going to take a QB because I think they're just going to try and rebuild with, with Matt Ryan. And I think they're going to ask for too much. I think Fields could drop. I, I think there's like a handful of teams that if it gets to like six or even eight, they're going to they're gonna move up. So I could, I still think it's in play. Obviously, it's like a lot of things and has to happen. You know, Fields does have to drop to pass three. Atlanta has to do what I say and not take a QB. But I, I feel pretty confident saying they're not. They're not. To. They're not. I don't think they are either. It comes down to when when does a team willing to pay up and how far will Fields drop? So I think Fields – oh, wow, there's no oh, touchdown. Good answer by the Rams. Yeah, that was – oh, wow, second touchdown. So he's matching Mike Evans here. They're going to go for two to make it a three-point game, five wide. Reynolds, again, low ownership in the 6K. Looking around, throws into traffic. It's caught, no Ooh. drops. I don't know if it would have been in bounce either. So right now, if you're just joining us again, it's now 21 
to 16. And don't forget, the real swing of this game, Moose, we go back, Cooper Cup on a fourth in inches from, yep. the, from the five yard line or the four yard line, caught the ball at like the two, stumbled, went backwards before being touched, turnover on downs. Now, I understand that the Buccaneers punted on that drive for like an 80 yard punt because, like you mentioned, the creatine. But that's been the swing because the Rams, this is their first time scoring since. And again, they wouldn't have, if they kicked a field goal at that point, we're looking at a different ball game. But nonetheless, uh, Goff, two, four, uh, 224, two touchdowns and interception. Brady's got three touchdowns, 193. So bonus potential for Jared Goff. Uh, in the running game, there's really not much doing all the, inter- all the touchdowns through the air. So two for Josh Reynolds, two for Mike Evans, one for Chris Godwin. And uh, obviously the two-point conversion not converted. But uh, going back to your NFL draft, I, I, I just – I was saying to a friend of mine and that was asking me a similar style question, how many quarter- – he said, is this going to be the first time, like, all the high prospect quarterbacks are gone, you know, early, like in, like, the first, like, 10 picks or eight picks? Mm-hmm. I think that's what they're trying to make us believe. But yeah. I personally, I'm kind of on your side. And whether you call it slip, slide, scooby, whatever you want to call it, like, I – I also think there's going to be a point where these teams don't overvalue. So I think Fields should still be a prospect that's a top 10 pick, but like the Trey Lance of the world, like I, yeah. if Washington is so like, I also feel like you're hearing these rumors, Moose, and you, you must see this too. Like you yep. want these teams to believe that other teams are going to jump up. So it just creates that opportunity. Exactly. Like, I think Atlanta must just be sitting there with phones ringing all day long. Yeah. I think, I think with Atlanta, it comes down to how much they ask because mm. San Francisco has set the bar by paying a ton. So Atlanta is going to be like, okay, that's the price. And I do, I think, I just feel like teams are going to be like, no, like we're not, we're not doing that. And, and Atlanta is just going to take like Kyle Pitts or something. I think that's what they're going to end up with. Hmm. And then I think the same thing's going to happen with Cincy. And uh, I can't even remember who comes after them now. Uh, Miami again, Miami could be a spot to trade back, but like they might want to take like Jamar chase or something. Like that's the other thing. There's other players in play, right? Like, you know, Atlanta, I think, ultimately wants to take Pitts, but if you're going to give them, like, three firsts, then they'll they'll trade back, but you're going to have to pay up. So I think that's where those teams are all going to do. And uh, I think I think someone will drop. We always see someone drop. Like, it, it always happens, so. Um, yeah, and, and I, I agree. I, I just – I think it's very interesting that – I think it's almost like NFL marketing without trying. Like, they're, like, allowing us to, like, buy into this. So it's like we can't miss that first round because yeah. quarterbacks, like, this is a great – narrative heading in but I, i'm just on the idea that i do think top three you're not making trades in the top if no. you're not you know sam donald wouldn't have been traded from new york if they're not taking quarterback san francisco would not have traded up if they're not taking the quarterback you don't not this early right like you're not trading five weeks before the draft to take an offensive lineman the draft starts with who is san francisco take and then what does atlanta do those are you know the first two picks obviously are irrelevant because we know what's happening there it's it's who does San Francisco take? And even that I think is, it's not settled, but it's, we have a, a knowledge. I know Justin Fields odds have dropped, but um, you know, I, I guess, I don't know. I guess that's still the first surprise. And the second, the big one is really, what does Atlanta do? Does anyone trade up? Do they, do they just surprise everyone and take a QB? So it's going to be a, it's going to be a really good draft. I th- and I think you'll see guys fall. And I think that'll just make it interesting. Like everyone's like, Oh, like Trey Lance could go here or there. I want like if Trey Lance falls, that's going to be interesting too. Cause who steps up and takes a shot. Right. So that's really what you're right. And I think you, the perfect position that you kind of looked at, I think anybody who's looking forward to the draft, whether your team's high or not, uh, you're right. It's San Francisco, which quarterback is, is the answer in their eyes. I agree. I think Mac Jones fits again, what Kyle Shanahan has had the most success with also like people have to realize you have to, you're, you're, Kyle Shanahan has plugged in some really good offenses in his days. And he's been to two Super Bowls as either offensive coordinator or head coach with a Matt Ryan, who was an MVP and Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm not saying anything about those players, but those are the archetype can move in the pocket, but is a stand back block for me. Let me sling it type of quarterback. Mm -hmm. He's not, I don't see them taking Justin Fields there regardless of the talent. Definitely not a Trey Lance. I, it's, it's you know and I think he would have loved Zach. I think in the past go back a month or two months they probably thought Zach Wilson was in play there when they were yeah. considering these moves but yeah obviously a lot has changed 
Yep. So I'm excited. It's it's definitely going to be a lot of fun, and I I personally get a lot of. I still wish personally, Moose, and I know people are, and there's a much reason for this. I love the Saturday Sunday NFL drafts. Starts right. at noon, all day. It's like you know, kind of like a Kentucky Derby style of day where you just like, if you're you know gathering with friends or even zooming, whatever you're doing today to stay safe and be well, like. It was just a fun day. Like, you had a whole day of, like, this non-sport activity sport. Yep. And and I think having the Thursday night and then Friday night, while it's great for ratings and advertising, it just yeah. takes up that, I think, community side out of it. No, I agree. The big – maybe have, like, maybe have the – the first Friday night, and then just do like the second. I don't know. Yeah. That's no. That's what I agree. I, if you want to make the, the prime time, or yeah. call me crazy, do Saturday night for the first two rounds, and Sunday, right. like literally, start at like 10 a.m. on. Like these yeah. coaches and people have to be prepared. I'm not worried about them needing an extra day. No. Entertain me, damn it. Yeah, having like, uh, yeah, would like stretch it on the weekend. Have like a full Saturday. Yeah. I agree. And guess, what's football yeah. known for? Sundays. How does the draft not even have anything to do on a Sunday? True. <laughs> That's right. Shady getting a little work on the stride, the catch there, run on the play, a couple plays before, but third and 14. Yeah, getting so involved. Rams going to have a chance to possibly take the lead here if they can get uh, a stop here. Yeah, it's going to be very fascinating what happens here. Also, going into this quarter, Jordan lets us know we had a two-way tie. Same guy. Tied up for the 6K early bird special. So a lot hanging here as this will be your last opportunity to get points out of both of these teams. Okay, he's going to spread it out from the 34. Needs to get to the 50-yard line. Brady with time. Aaron Donald trying to break through. Look at the blocking here. All the time oh, in the world. Going for it all. Oh, Got God. him in. Come back and get it. Godwin. Nice catch. Gutsy play there by the Buccaneers. You know, if you're going to trust somebody, that's the guy. That's why I picked them, man. Tom Brady and these Sims just converts, gets things done. Especially there, third and 14, hanging yep. in there. Had about six seconds to throw. So Godwin with a decent game now. Uh, Evans obviously having a big game. Let's see. Evans, 35.4 in the captain spot, six receptions, 56 yards. But Godwin... I think that was his fifth reception. I'm not sure if that one's been updated. Obviously, we're doing manual scoring. Oh, that was a sixth reception. He's got 75 yards, 20 points in the flex for Godwin. Is it another catch for Evans? Mm -hmm. Getting involved. Listen, these guys are having great games. Nathan over on YouTube says, because it's called Super Bowl Sunday, not Super Bowl Saturday. Duh. Mm -hmm. Talking. <laughs> I wish they make Super Bowl Saturday, but this year we, you know, with the moving of schedules, it will fall in the U.S. side on President's Day weekend, so... You don't got to worry about that. Monday's off in the state's federal holiday. Sorry, Canada. But you have Friendship Day or whatever it's called, right? Family Day. Yeah, Family Day. <laughs> it's still the greatest. Friendship Day. I, I wish I, it was called Friendship Day. That's so much better. It's like a My Little Pony episode. Yeah, I was just going to say Care Bears, Friendship My Little Pony. <laughs> Everyone must call all of your friends and celebrate together. Oh, too much. We go looking around. Brady's got time again. The blocking has been insane. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Gonna get a hold, hold more than though. likely. I think this is a hold. A little too much time there for Tom Brady. You're going to watch. You know That's why. usually. Yep. You know what happened there? Earlier in the drive, somebody complained, said, ref, watch <laughs> on this next play. All the good Brady. players do it. So that's going to take them back to the 27, a second and 15 here the catch that's the reason the yardage wasn't 10 yards yep take it right back Gronk down to the two yard line first time we've really called his name second catch what what a way to just pff, holding no big deal hold hold my uh concussion water he just chucks it down there Gronk doing what he does just bulldozing his way to the two Happy Saturday, DK Sim fan. Appreciate you being here with us. Again, we always say it. There's a million things in the world. Content at your fingertips, and you being here means the world to us. Appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely, guys. You're having a good Saturday. Rossi and I will be back for the next one, who I already forgot is playing, so I'm going to check. It is it's the Chargers Saints. Don't you worry. Oh, yeah, Chargers, another good upside team. Uh, Saints, obviously, a really good Sim team, so 
Yeah, I like that we're getting deeper in here. We're getting a couple good matchups. This is going to be my last uh, last call on the bracket. Actually, yours is same. Well. Yeah, we're going to tip our caps and let Cough and Lamarca tonight. I believe Glash and Lamarca tomorrow. Might be two different squads, but Emerson and Cough will have the call for the Simper Bowl. That no, ball is, is caught. Gronk. Huge touchdown, Gronk. There he called it. Gronk smash, puny Rams. <laughs> Just like he did the last time he played them in the Super Bowl. Had that big catch down the sideline here, the touchdown. So Brady, his fourth touchdown with under four minutes to play, puts him up by 12 points pending this suck-up extra point, which they never miss. So it's good. Gronk, ownership. That Jordan has been crushing it today. 34% in the 6K early bird special. So, again, people are pumped for that touchdown. First time, first time said over on this is funny. Uh, over on YouTube, uh, Twitch, he says, "If Evans gets another three-yard touchdown, then he's give, I'm giving him an honorary vulture call." <laughs> Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. But I know what you're saying. You give him some kind of recognition. We give him like a bobcat call. <laughs> <laughs> don't hold on. I don't know if my cat. Actually, I don't know where. Oh, my cat's sleeping in my bed upstairs. She'll come down. Yeah. The problem is with, with my cat, at least, if I don't make my bed, like, right away before he's unleashed into the house because we keep him downstairs, yep. he goes, finds the bed and just, like, curls up in, like, a spot, so then I can't make the bed. So it's just, like, it becomes his bed. It's, like, you can't messy. move the cat from the bed? Well, I, I could, but I, I do sometimes have a heart, and I'm like, ah, he's, he's chilling. Let me. Oh, man. So, it's I, used one of my... find, I used to find my parents' cat in my room, and, uh, Two seconds later, it was gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I just time for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I just those are like the few times you just look so comfortable there. It turns into like a little Swiss roll. I'm like, all right, dude, I'll leave you alone for now. I'm because... okay with dogs doing that. I wasn't okay with cats doing it. I don't know why. I just wasn't. Maybe it's just because like their fur or something. But I always took more offense to it if it was a cat. Andrew using the same video you used earlier of the goose trying to can't be moved. He says Rossi trying to move his cat from the bed. It is. He just looks <laughs> at me. He's like, "Oh, you want me to move? Yeah, call me in a couple hours when I wake up." It's Garfield. He's like, "Oh, you're gonna." As soon as like he hears any of his food or a treat or even if my son's like shaking macaroni or whatever, he'll be like, "Oh, is that food for me? I'm up." He's like, no, dude, it's not for you. But now I can make my bed. CJ says, "Sure, people have hearts too." I do. Yeah, cats get really um, sensitive to noises. Like if you're opening a can or something. Mm, you know, oh, like, yeah. What's that? What's that? Light speed, like yeah. Jumps up on my counter. I'm like, don't get just go back to bed. Nice play. So Rams got to strike quick here. As we're at the two minute warning, they still have all three timeouts. Need a score here, and now at the thirty, and need to make a stop. So they realistically need a score within the next five six plays, pending time. Sure do. So we will see as they get here from the two-minute warning. Again, at the 30, Rams coming in, the lower seed, because the one overall seed, Tampa Bay Moose, called that we're going to take them. So all my other final, or the, the four finalists are out. I had the Browns, the Niners, and the Ravens all got bounced out. The, you know, the rest of the way. There's Cup down to 10. They got to hurry up here. Got to do the no huddle. Nice 20 yard grab there. Okay. Cats are stupid, says Nasty. That's not very nice. <laughs> They're not stupid. I just don't want them in my bed. My cat is blind. If you make any noise, he's all over you. <laughs> Shout out, El Bongo. Appreciate you having a blind cat, dude. That's awesome. Very kind of you. Uh, Trent says, okay, no more woods. I hate when they just dial in on one guy. No moon looking for a woods. 100. Well, we need get in that 8K bracket challenge tonight. First K, 2K to first place. You guys are enjoying the early one. Oh, and it would have been a nice play. Nice defense there. 
Get in there. Also, the winner of this game takes on the winner of Dolphin Seahawks tomorrow at the 8 p.m. time slot. But, yeah, plenty of spots left for tonight's AK Bracket Challenge. And I know you, DK Simpam. I love you. And I know what you're going to do. You're going to start entering as we get closer. you got five hours. I get it. But I suggest you at least reserve your spot now because these things will fill up just like our 6K did. I know it took closer to game time, but yep. don't be the one that misses out in trying to get that 2K because... 2,000 sounds real good right about now. Wide open receiver in the court in the end zone. Nice touch pass from Jared Goff. Touchdown, Cooper Cup. There it is. Captain, my captain. Finally. I was in ninth place before that play in our little contest. Midwest Heather just balling. I'm up to four. Oh, she had one of them. Darn it. Cup, 28% owned in the early bird. It's classic special. Got a bomb text from my mom who really texts. That's gonna be fun for after. <laughs> my mom has this knack for texting just me, but thinks she's connecting with all of us. So uh, I will go ahead and give her a call when this is done and watch a bunch of geese videos. <laughs> There's the boot. So we have ourselves a five-point game. The Rams need to make a stop and quick to have a chance there, Moose. They still have all three timeouts with one minute on the dot. Oh, I'm in second place right now in our contest. Right behind Cider, who has Reynolds in the captain. I have Cup. We both have Brady. Both have Goff. Both have Evans. Both have Gronk. So we have the same lineup, but I captained Cup. He captained Reynolds. And ah. he has that. Wow, he's just beaten me by less than 0.6. Oh, Cat. Cat's here. What's up, dude? Oh, wow. He must have been hearing me talk. We, there's no reason for you to be here. You heard my bobcat. Yeah. You want to come up? Come on. Ooh, onside kick is picked up by Tampa. We need to throw someone out of the house today, Jason. Oh, I'll, throw, I'll just, yeah, seriously. Do I have to chuck you? Do you <laughs> want to reenact that video? All right. I guess I'm going to pick a play every game here. Um, oh, yeah. Well, I could tell you, just to give you the highlights, obviously, Brady's got four scores. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, it's, I know we had the high ownership. Godwin, you know, Evans with two. Reynolds, lowest ownership out of the guys who had a big game. He had yeah. two touchdowns, so. Reynolds is definitely in there. I don't want to put a Bob, there's no, you know, Bobcat gun to your head, but. <laughs> who's going to be the moose, I'm, magnificent player of the game? I'm going to go Mike Evans. Um, got it. Seven catches, two touchdowns, yeah. 25, 28 points. Assuming we don't get, like, some kind of Tom Brady, like, 50-yard run here or something. <laughs> so, with that being said, is Fournette gets stuffed in the backfield. So, we might have a shot here with the Rams going to big third down next. Who's going to be your Who's going to be your babysitter, Billy? Not my kid award. Man. Like, get over. Him. Running backs could also be in play. Yeah. Paul Henderson had some good catches. Uh, let's give it to Leonard Fournette. He was, he was pretty terrible. All right, there he is, Fournette. So let's see here. Third and nine, 51 seconds. Need this. Yeah. Brady Game's delivers over. wide oh. open. Game's over. <laughs> maybe I was just maybe I was just foretelling. I just have seen Tom Brady and the Sim do this so many times that, you know, knew he was probably going to convert somehow, and uh, he did. So now the game is officially done So done. Leonard Fournette going to be the, the Not My Kid Award. He was up there in ownership too, Uncle Lenny. Yeah, just didn't get it done here. Wasn't in the top five for the K, for the 6K early bird. Again, that's Godwin, Woods, Evans, Bucks, D. Also kind of fadeable here. But yeah, there's Brady going to take one more knee after this. Or we could get the run. We've seen this time and time again, Moose, where they run the ball here. So I actually did a game with Babysitter Billy. Like It might have been last – it was last Sunday. And there was actually a fumble on the play – Right. That caused one last chance up. They're not even going to risk it. Look at this. That's why Tampa Bay is going to win this thing. They don't play no, we, foolishness. We saw something similar. Uh, Seattle, I think it was in round one. They could have just closed out. I can't remember who they were playing. It was Dallas. They could have closed out Dallas. And uh, they ran instead of instead of just kneeling. Foolish. They fumbled. And Dallas had a chance to win the game. But uh, they just they were terrible. So, But uh, we saw some, we, we have seen late fumbles like that when the computer gets too tricky. But... Um, I'm gonna come up. Come on, my cat wants to say hi, and then we'll get out right. of here. Look at that. 
Bring that Desmond. beast up here. Look at that thing. Look at this thing. Hey, you want to see? What do you got? All right. What did you say? Yep. Yay! Up next. Up next is who? Yep. Chargers, the 20 seed versus who? Five, the five seed, the Saints. And uh, Moose, it was a pleasure, he says. Yeah. Go check out his articles at DK Nation. Yep. Mm-hmm. And all right. Yeah. We got to get out of here. Here's Ross Tucker with some content. Us two fine people will be back in just a few. See you guys. It's time to eat. What are you hungry for? Sit down and get ready to consume an abundance of fantasy football knowledge from Ross Tucker and Joe Dolan. Feed me now! I'm starving! On the Fantasy Feast Eating Podcast. Yeah, let's eat, baby! It is the Fantasy Feast Eating Podcast presented by the DraftKings Sportsbook app and the lovely DraftKings DFS app. I've got them both on my phone. Hopefully you guys do as well. I am Ross Tucker, former NFL offensive lineman, five teams, seven years. Most of you guys know about that. If you check us out on YouTube, you can see the helmets and the game balls. I actually have a couple other game balls, but like the stickers or whatever that the Bills use, I don't know if they cheaped out or what, or in got messed up in transport, but like the they're all disfigured or something. I guess get somebody to fix those at some point. Anyway, I'm at Ross Tucker NFL on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. If you enjoy all of our shows, like Even Money and Ross Tucker Football Podcast, College Draft with the draft right around the corner, please check them all out at RossTucker.com or just follow at Ross Tucker Pod on Twitter or Instagram, and you'll know exactly when they are posted, when they're available. Last week was awesome with Joe Dolan talking about the rookie quarterbacks and the importance of talking about them before the actual draft takes place this week we're bringing in yet another big gun from fantasypoints.com so you guys know the drill fantasypoints.com is the only website you need to go to for your fantasy knowledge use the code 21 feast and you will get the knowledge of guys Like at FG underscore Dolan, the fantasy gangsta Dolan, and Scott Barrett, DFB. So if FG underscore Dolan, I have turned into fantasy gangsta Dolan, at Scott Barrett, DFB is dat freaking boy. At dat fantasy boy. At Scott Barrett, dat fantasy boy. Uh, what does it really stand for, Scott? Am I supposed to know that? Uh, it's Dude Fantasy Bro. That was my longtime handle as I reveled in obscurity for years on Twitter. And then as soon as I changed it to Scott Barrett DFB, I got like 8,000 followers overnight. Just a just a stu- No one wanted to follow a Dude Fantasy Bro. I don't, I don't blame them. So Scott Barrett DFB, Dude Fantasy Bro. So this is back when you were just doing it for fun, right? No, no, I, I've been in the industry for a long time. I was writing, but I was writing for free. And like I said, just, just reveling in obscurity. I, you, no one wanted to interact with Dude Fantasy Bro on Twitter. Okay, so, all right, so that I get it. Because I was going to ask, like, I'm always curious when it switches from being like a hobby or a side gig to your main gig, how, like, the the pros and cons of that, I guess I would say. Yeah, for me, it was it was just like, oh, yeah, this is amazing. I can merge my passion and hobby with my profession and get paid for it. I'm going to have so much more free time. And then it turns out it just – I just – all my free time is – it is non-existent. It's just all fantasy all the time. But, I mean, what, a, what an amazing life that is, huh? Yeah, that is pretty awesome. Scott, of course, one of the, I don't know, double-digit rock stars they have over at FantasyPoints.com. It's the greatest value in fantasy. I don't know what your guy's slogan is, but fantasypoints.com, the greatest value in fantasy football. Boom, right there. Give me some money for that. Fantasypoints.com, use the code 21FEAST. So here's a question, Scott. Joe and I talked last week about quarterbacks and the importance of evaluating these draft draftable prospects before they're on a team. Because I feel like on some level, and correct me if you think I'm wrong, Scott, as soon as they go to a team, it's really hard 
to think of them in any way other than like the scheme, the quarterback they're with, like that team. So do you think it's important to evaluate the player themselves ahead of time? And if so, why? Oh, yeah, a- absolutely. Uh, so uh, what we're going to be talking about today, I guess, is is my pre-combine rookie model. And, and so that's basically just raw production and efficiency. And then there's I guess parsed through a second model that incorporates athleticism. And then the third mo- model uh, just incorporates draft capital, which is the most predictive variable. You know, all these NFL teams have, you know, draft cap, a, a vested interest in these players succeeding. So they're going to do everything they can to, to have these players succeed and not look like idiots for taking them. Uh, so, and it's also just, hey, you know, the NFL thinks this guy's a round one talent. He's probably a lot better than however we thought pre-draft. And then, you know, so I, I take that and things don't change too much beyond that. Uh, you, you can get into landing spots with how, how run heavy is the offensive coordinator? How good is this quarterback? Something I care about a lot is, is regime uncertainty that a lot of people don't think about. Like LaVisca Chenault, I was worried because of, all right, there's a lame duck head coach. He's probably out. And then the new regime comes in. How They're not invested at all in, in this player succeeding. He was kind of a raw route runner. You know, Are they going to have the, the patience? Are they going to be able to design packages for him? Things like that. Uh, but something I do, this is like maybe my most valuable article I'll write for me. Like no one reads it, but it, it's, it takes so much effort and time, but it's so valuable. I, I watch every single post-draft press conference, all the interviews with the position coaches, the offensive coordinators, the GMs, et cetera, et cetera. And you really get so much valuable intel. It's, okay, we like this tight end uh, used as basically a wide receiver. We don't want him in line. We don't want him blocking. Or they're like, oh, uh, DJ Chark. Yeah, we actually had him as the top wide receiver in this class. We were in love with him. Things like that, that goes a long way. But but at the end of the day, really not much changes beyond where I have these guys pre-draft and then incorporating the most important variables, which is draft capital. I, I think that's a good point about the draft capital. Uh, question for you would be, and maybe, Joe, you can chime in on this yeah. too. You know, I was mentioning last week, Scott, that we, in general, like Steve Fezzik, right? on the Even Money podcast. And he talked about this yesterday when we were doing season win totals. He used to really fade teams that had rookie quarterbacks, right? Like, he's not going to be good. They're not going to be good. Blah, blah, blah. You know, fade them. Take the under on the season win total. Bet against them week one, et cetera. I remember, I don't know what year it was, but there was a year where, like, people were pointing out that Terry Glenn – was like the only rookie wide receiver that had a really good year for like, and then there was Randy Moss, but it felt like productive rookie wide receivers used to be a really unique and rare thing in the NFL. And then we've had the last couple of years where it feels like rookie wide receivers can be as productive or as good as anybody, Joe. Yeah, I mean, it, it, again, landing spot is very dependent here, but it's just the NFL evolving too, where you talked about last week rookie quarterbacks and and how you know they didn't used to play, they didn't used to produce. And again, it, the NFL in today's world is coaches uh, adapting to the scheme, teams investing in these young players, and teams learning that it's advantageous to win when you have young players who you aren't paying as much as the older players on your team. So, you know, uh, and I think a lot of that with the marriage of college and NFL concepts, that line has become blurred quite a bit. That's also becoming um, a, a big factor in some of these guys coming in and and producing as rookies. And that's going to that that's gonna be a question I have for, for you, Scott. When you are – looking at drafting a rookie wide receiver for fantasy, what are some of the the hallmarks you look for? Because again, this is not a full fade scenario. It's not really a scenario where you're like, well, he's a rookie. I'm not taking him. Justin Jefferson just had the best rookie season we've ever seen from a wide receiver. So what are the factors you look for that maybe your model captures when you're looking to draft a rookie wide receiver? Yeah. So one of the most important things in my model is, is age adjusted production. That's, that's so important. And, you know, people who are experienced in dynasty football have heard the term before breakout age. 
Um, and it's basically just, you know, a wide receiver who in college hit a certain threshold uh, uh, at a certain age. And, you know, the hit rate on that is exceptional. I, I look at it a little bit differently. I, I look at age adjusted, you know, yards per game, age adjusted receiving yards uh, versus an expectation, things like that. But, but like intuitively, a priori, it, it makes sense as well. It's, um, you know, a 19 year old wide receiver is at a physical disadvantage of against 21 year old cornerbacks. So the, the ability to operate at a handicap is indicative of surplus talent, just as if a wide receiver were to total 800 yards playing the entire season with one arm tied behind his back. So it's just a, a really positive indicator for uh, a wide receiver success at the NFL level. Wow, that's interesting. So, all right, so let's dive into it then. Let's get to, and and I'm sure you guys both noted, like there have been a lot of good rookie receivers lately. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, a bunch of them. You know, I, I mean, Justin Jefferson must have won some people some leagues last year. Where were people getting Jefferson last year? Oh, he, was a double, he was a double-digit round pick, right, Scott? I mean, uh, yeah. uh, like uh, double-digit rounds because, like, people were wondering what kind of fit he was because he got slapped with the, oh, he's a slot receiver deal. And people were like, well, Thielen's a slot receiver too. Well, how's this going to look? And um, nobody anticipated what Justin Jefferson did. Nobody did. Yeah, he's probably out there winning leagues for people. All right. Oh, so yeah. there's a bunch of good receivers again this year, Scott. Is there, using your model and the age-adjusted stuff, is, is there a clear number one guy in your mind? So, so 2019 was a special class. Uh, uh, the rookie wide receivers in their rookie season totaled the second most total receiving yards of any class in NFL history last year. I mean, Justin Jefferson, Jerry Judy, C.D. Lamb, T. Higgins, absolutely stacked. And this class looks to be a very special class. And all the way at the top, for me and my model, is Jamar Chase, who I have as the best wide receiver prospect to come out since the 2015 class. I have him right above Amari Cooper over that span, according to my model. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, so special. You want to talk about age-adjusted production? Uh, guess what? He just put together uh, something like the, the sixth most receiving yards and the sixth most, most uh, receiving touchdowns by any Power 5 wide receiver since at least 2000. Guess what? He did it at 19 years old, a full year younger than Justin Jefferson. This guy outproduced Justin Jefferson significantly on fewer targets. And look how good Justin Jefferson's going to be. And the other guy, Terrace Marshall, he's being mocked in the first round, second round at the latest. So, you know, what he did, uh, and, and especially within this, you know, really special wide receiver core that LSU was sporting was – you know, phenomenal. Uh, by age-adjusted seasons, by total receiving yards, it was the second best season since 2000. The only season better was Michael Crabtree as a freshman, which is like the most ridiculous season ever. Uh, but yeah, if you look at all of the top, if you look at like the top 20 wide receivers by that stat, something like 70% went on to have at least one wide receiver one season. So just really, really strong. Uh, so wide receiver is the toughest position to evaluate the NFL gets this wrong Bill Belichick gets this so wrong and it's it's ju it's just such a tough position to evaluate so since 2015 uh there's there's been 23 wide receivers drafted in round one only two pro bowlers Mari Cooper Justin Jefferson the hit rate's bad and the reason for that is a it's a laundry list of things you know not as much up against man coverage not as much up against press coverage um, you know, uh, uh, the, the, um, you know, a lot more production in the slot and it's a lot easier to get production in the slot. You, you don't have sticky nickel cornerbacks, things like that. So there's, there's all these concerns with all of these wide receivers, least of all chase, you know, a beast on the outside, majority of this production on the outside beast against press coverage, the best wide receiver against man coverage. And it goes on and on and on. I've really, and then a factor in an elite, elite pro day. There's just, I see, I see no red flags and I just see massive upside and it's, and, and it, it leaves me salivating. All right. So here's the question, Scott, you said he's the best receiver you've had since 2015. Was there somebody better in 2015 or that's just when you started doing it? I know that's just the cutoff for my model. 
God. Okay, so he's the best receiver you've ever evaluated. Right, right, right. Wow, okay. Now, very curious about this next one. Who's the next guy? Because, well, well, let me take a step back, actually. While we're on Chase, Mm -hmm. how high is too high for people to have our Chase? He's still a rookie receiver. Let's assume he goes to the Dolphins or maybe the Bengals. How high is too high to take him, even though you love him so much with your model? Um, I mean, so there are some concerns. Like he, he, but I mean, like, okay, that didn't stop him from having one of the most ridiculous seasons in college football history as a 19-year-old. Um, how high is too high? I mean, I think he should go where uh, – you know what I think? I think I could say, you know, right now, if you if you have them higher than you've had a rookie wide receiver, you know, in the past like four or five drafts, like, hey, I get it. This guy is so special. Uh, but at the same time, he is a rookie wide receiver, and you know, you, you you can't expect a Justin Jefferson every season. What do you think, Joe? In terms of that question, how high is well, too high? Uh, let's uh, let's see where he ends up first. Uh, I, I know that's that's kind of. Uh, kind of damaging right now because you're asking the question fifth round maybe um if he goes to cincinnati where there's t higgins and he gets to play with his old college coach and joe uh, a quarterback rather and joe burrow sixth round feels about right to me for jamar chase and then by the end of the the uh the fall that might look like a complete steal um when if, if he goes to miami where it's tua who uh, i still have some questions about I think he's probably going to go in the sixth or seventh round, and he could certainly pay that off. Uh, but I, I think anything beyond the fifth round is probably going to look right for Jamar Chase. Uh, and and uh, you just have to keep in mind just how talented this player is and and you know, the fact that he can help a young quarterback get better as well. I'm assuming, Scott, one of the Alabama – maybe maybe mistakenly that one of the Alabama guys – is next in your model. The question is, which one? Yeah, so that's going to be Devonta Smith. At this point right now, it's I'm looking specifically at college production and efficiency. Once I factor in athleticism, which incorporates BMI and weight, I do expect him to fall. I don't know that he's going to fall beyond two, honestly. I, I, we'll have to wait and see, but but this is another special prospect. So so he ranks third. He ranks, It goes Chase Amari, and then it goes Devonta. You know, Justin Jefferson and C.D. Lamb and Jerry Judy are, are all right there in that range. But another special prospect. So, I mean, I just talked about what Jamar Chase did. Uh, you know, won the Bolitnikov. You know, two hundred plus yards in the championship, which they won. You know, uh, some of the best production numbers ever. Guess what? You know, Devonta Smith beat all that. He, he first wide receiver to win the Heisman in nearly 30 years. He had 200 plus yards and just a half in the championship. Uh, You know, more, uh, more, the second most receiving yards since 2000, the second most receiving touchdowns since 2000, just a ridiculous season. And people are sleeping on his 2019 season because his 2019 season was actually the fourth best season by any wide receiver in this class. And, And he excelled, in you know, the production was there in the fact that, I mean, he outproduced three other potential top 15 picks, let alone first, first round wide receivers. But the, the efficiency stats were just absurd, looking at really important metrics to my, my model, things like yards per route run, yards after the catch per reception, my favorite stat, depth adjusted yards per target over expectation. That was kind of a mouthful, but... Uh, just just an absurd, absurd season. Uh, the knocks on him are, one, uh, he, he stayed in college all, all four years, and the hit rate on that is bad. The reason the hit rate is bad is, like, typically if a wide receiver gets a draft-worthy grade, they come out. So it, it's always, like, not great wide receivers staying. Guess what? He had a round two consensus grade by the GM committee, so that doesn't apply to him. The other knock is, you know, late breakout age – my numbers don't say that. My numbers say great age-adjusted production. And then the other knock is weight and BMI. And the hit rate on that is really not good. And he is 
way skinny, way skinny, like incomparably skinny over the past since 2000, incomparably skinny. And, and I do think that's a concern. And, and Greg Cassell said it showed up on tape, the corners, you know, squeezing him to the boundary, uh, things like that. So, so I do think that's a legitimate concern, but just looking at the raw production, I mean, this is, this looks like a special guy. So what did you say about the, the hit rate on the BMI is not good? Yeah, it's it's not good at all. I, I could actually I should, I could actually pull it so up. So you're just he saying is, guys with low BMI have not done well at receiver. Yeah, and not just that, but guys with who, who are high BMI have have done ph- phenomenal. So well, so that, then I should enter the draft. <laughs> <laughs> I should enter the good. draft. If the, the, uh, I know we're we're all knocking on BMI, but yeah, I mean Devontae Smith's weight, Scott, is is a big concern for people. Yeah, so his BMI is at 22.4. Uh, there's only other ever been one other wide receiver with a BMI below 24 since 2000 who was drafted in the first two rounds. Uh, among those wide receivers with a BMI of 29 or more, uh, 50% had one 1,000-yard season. And then, you know, below 25, that hit rate dips to, like, 19%. So it's, it's just a statistically, you know, discouraging. Interesting. Okay, who's your third receiver? Uh, so this is basically a tie. This is basically a tie. But uh, I have Elijah Moore, who I think is, you know, I'm acquiring him in every single dynasty draft. And and I'm in a lot of drafts that are before the NFL draft. So on draft day, I'm rooting for Elijah Moore to go in round one more than I rooted for my Giants in years. Um, and I think he's going to be an immediate contributor uh, in the NFL, I think he, this is a guy to target in 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 redraft leagues. Uh, I am so excited for him. I think he's being massively slept on. The concern with him is he's a slot wide receiver. I talked about before; it's a little bit easier to produce in the slot. It's it, it's a devalued position, just like running back is devalued in the NFL today. But again, age adjusted production off the charts. Uh, so you know he basically had the same posted the same numbers as DK Metcalf as a freshman when he was uh, 2.4 years younger. And then as a sophomore, when those guys left, he had 850 yards, which might not seem like a lot, but the next closest receiver had only 192 yards. So like yardage market share, that's another great predictive variable, crushed that. And then his 2020 season was insane, insane. He had the most yards from scrimmage of per game of any wide receiver, I think ever. I think ever, at least 2,000. That's as far back as my sample goes. But I think maybe ever, 157.1 per game, just absurd. And people are sleeping on this guy. And uh, and frankly, I don't get it. Look at other stats, yards per route run, PFF grade. He crushes it all. And I think he's going to be a PPR cheat code at the next level. 10.8 receptions per game last year. And, 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 you know, that goes a long way in PPR leagues. It feels like he's a guy – that the more people I've spoken to over the last couple of weeks that have really watched him, everybody's starting to like him. Like the mainstream media doesn't, but like the Cosells, the Dane Brugler, like the people that actually really study, everybody seems to think, like, wow, this guy's really good. Lance Zierlein, too, that's his guy. So so I, I own him everywhere in all the leagues I've already drafted. I, you know, I, I, I love Dynasty. It's like, it's crazy out here, but uh, yeah, big fan. And I expect to have him in a ton of best ball leagues, ton of redraft leagues. He's, he's going undrafted in best ball right now. So yeah, wait until what? he gets drafted in round one. Yeah. Wow. All right. And then is he basically tied with Waddle or in somebody else? Uh, so I'll just say real quick on Waddle, any, produ- any, any production model is going to miss on Waddle. Although, my model least of all because it, I think I think it's really good with efficiency. So so he ranks he ranks sixth, um, but uh, and he's going to get a boost probably for athleticism. But uh, yeah, it's it's Rashad Bateman who's another guy who just you know insane insane age uh, adjusted numbers that he put up in Minnesota. Um, my model didn't incorporate for atrocious quarterback play, which it needs to. It didn't incorporate for the fact that he lost 10 pounds due to complications from COVID uh, in his final season. Uh, you you have to factor those in. He, he might be wide receiver three. There were 
a few, you know, nitpicky concerns with him. Uh, drops was an issue. Uh, my model loved Tyler Johnson and like he went day three. So like it makes me worry there might be something scheme wise with Minnesota, but uh, yeah, otherwise I think this is another really solid prospect. He has all the age, age adjusted things uh, you want to see there. Uh, the uh, best wide receiver in this class and career yards per route run when lined up out wide, which this class, this class is an interesting class. It has a ton of, undersized guys who are amazing and a ton of slot guys who are amazing but this you know alongside jamar chase you know uh proven proven outside uh out weapons on the outside it's funny joe you probably remember this but a couple years ago penn state had a really good team they ended up going 11 and 2 they lost to minnesota and tyler johnson and rashad bateman absolutely massacred that game and i didn't realize like I didn't know Minnesota had two, like, high draft pick receivers. You know what I mean? Like, it's Minnesota. Since when there was they a bad offensive receiver? pass interference call at the end of that game, Ross. You might remember that, too. Oh, yeah. But, <laughs> they, <laughs> but no, they, those guys they, crushed it. They destroyed Penn State in that game. Turns out they had two stud receivers. Like, those, these are, like, legit guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Bateman, obviously, the higher regarded. Johnson, Johnson, I think um, a lot of people had concerns about his athleticism. Uh, that was the well, big yeah, concern he, he, he he fell in my my post combine yeah. model, but he but he's my single most egregious miss in my my pre combine model. I I think he's sandwiched in between C D Lamb and Justin Jefferson in the top seven. He's like the the one guy who sticks out and makes me yeah. Shake my well, head. I mean, you, but Scott, you're gonna miss though if you're using like a production model, right? And like right, so, right. L- l- let me let me bring this full circle. What when it comes to a wide receiver, what is important and what's noise? when evaluating a prospect? I mean, I mean, so much, so much is, so much is noise. Um, I mean, it's all the things I already talked about. It's what's, just what's, knowing what the best, most predictive variables are. Yeah. What, what would you, what would be the most surprising thing that you would call noise that might surprise people where are like, Oh, this doesn't really matter for wide receivers. Um, I will say, I will say drops, you know, fairly irrelevant unless the number is, insanely high um that's that's one i mean there's uh anything per target is is really typically trash because targets are a positive indicator of right. talent if you're getting targets it means you're getting open you've earned the quarterback's trust uh he, he thinks you can you can do damage after the catch things of that nature so people looking at yards per target it's such a trash stat yards per route run is you know the single most predictive stat at the nfl level not for evaluating prospects, but but it, it's it's great for that too. All right, so Scott, you can talk about one more guy. Is it Tutu Atwell, Amari Rogers, Rondell Moore? Is it um, Terrace Marshall, who you mentioned? We haven't said anything about Kadarius Tony. One more guy that you can talk about. Oh boy, that that's that's tough. Um, I do, I do love me some Rondell Moore, but uh, but but uh, oh, his name is Justin. Wait a minute, Scott. So I did the U.S. Army Bowl when Rondell yeah. was in it. He was yeah. phenomenal, and then his true freshman year at Purdue was amazing. So his age adjusted must be off the charts. Yeah, so it is insane. All right, we could we could talk about some Rondell Moore. Uh, I was going to go with Jalen Waddle, but look how yeah, happy so... he is, Joe. Look how, how look how happy. Yeah. He, he, um, like He's so, we giddy. did a mock draft. We did a mock draft for our for the draft. Oh, how annoying was I, Joe? Uh, like uh, I, I basically Ross, we did a staff mock draft, and basically all it was was I, I gave uh, the six staff members who were doing the mock draft, and I went one to six. We each get a team, and we get them in one to six order, and then you repeat the order. So it was like one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and one, two, three, four, five, six. There was no no trades. Just that's how it was. Scott saw that I had the Packers, and he's like, "No, you need to give me the Packers." And I'm like, "Why?" He's like, "Because I want to pick Rondale Moore for the Packers." So, <laughs> so let him let him wax poetic here. Yeah. So that's that's just my dream landing spot for for Rondale, who who by the way is is tied with Jalen Waddle, perfectly tied. Uh, I mean, insane pro day, insane, insane pro day. But just looking at statistical production, yeah, his age 19 season was 
easily one of the most ridiculous age 19 seasons ever. Just, you know, he just like a month after turning 18 years old in his first game, he had nearly 200 yards from scrimmage and 13 touches end of the year, 114 catches. So PPR cheat code, this guy could be a real PPR cheat code. Uh, 12,000 uh, yards through the air, 200 or 1,200 yards through there, 200 yards on the ground, uh, just insanely dynamic. One of the best seasons ever by missed tackles force yards after contact yards after the catch PFF grade yards per route run, just absurd. And then unfortunately he dealt with injuries over the next two seasons. He missed 11 of 18 games, but he was still dynamic, highly productive on the field. Uh, 10.3 catches, 106.5 receiving yards per game when he was healthy. Uh, and this guy, to me, I, tape evaluation doesn't factor into my model at this point, but he is so fun to watch on tape. My comp for him is like a Kryptonian Cole Beasley, uh, <laughs> a, a, a smaller, less complete, but more athletic Steve Smith. If, if Secretariat was a Shetland pony, this guy is just like you take Calvin Johnson and you just like squeeze him really into a tiny package. But that's the concern is the height. The height is a massive concern. Uh, he's going to be very scheme dependent. He's going to be very landing spot dependent. That's why I loved Green Bay. He has he has a very small catch radius. That doesn't matter when you have the most accurate quarterback in football in Aaron Rodgers. And, and they're missing that dynamic element. They're missing someone to keep defenses honest when they're playing against Devontae Adams. Uh, he's going to be a first down machine. He's going to be a PPR cheat code. Uh, there's there's red flags. There's there's concerns. He's risky. But I, I mean, I see also massive potential. And this is another guy who, you know, he's he's, you know, round two in mocks, maybe round three. And, and you know, I, I, I just love this guy. And yeah, love him. So if you have 114 catches and 2200 yards as a freshman, all purpose yards, you should be allowed to go pro. Like you should be allowed <laughs> to leave school after your freshman year. That's when he was 18. Right. 18. Yeah. Like so, so you keep hearing with him is like the concern is durability because of the injuries the past two seasons. And I want to just like cut him some slack. It's like, hey, they told you you're gonna be a first round pick, like halfway through your fre true freshman season. Like, you know, if he's gonna like take it easy a little bit, like wh why not? He he put up all the tape we needed to see as a freshman, I think. Scott, this was fantastic. It always is. Encourage you to check him out. Gosh, I was making up that fantasy beast. It's actually dude fantasy, bro. Like, there really is a name to it. Just like Joe is fantasy gangsta underscore Dolan. <laughs> check them both out over at fantasypoints.com. Just make sure you use the code 21feast. Check him out on social as well. That was awesome. I guess we got to talk about running backs and tight ends next week, Joe. It'll be fun. I think we're done. Oh, absolutely. We'll get Graham Barfield on for those running backs. So that'll be that, – there's Ooh. a little tease for you. Ooh, yeah. I like big, it. I'm big Najee Harris fan. Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Fantasy Feast podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker football podcast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and the College Draft, all available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mention DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 109-WITH-IT. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, doesn't always. Sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit.
Welcome back, DK Sim fam. We had the Buccaneers, the number one overall seed, advance in our 2 p.m. Uh, bracket challenge matchup against the Rams. Here we go, L.A. Can they make it 0 for 2, tie it up 1 and 1? Because the Chargers are traveling to Nolens, and they're going to take on the Saints. Jeff Ulrich, how you doing, my man? Doing good. I'm doing, you know, I'd, I'd say two hours better. I'm two hours older than I was the last time I talked to you. So, I mean, I'm wiser. I'm no. smarter, uh, you know, doggone it, people like me. But, uh, no, um, <laughs> yeah, looking forward to this one. I mean, let's see if the Chargers can get through. I mean, if we can pull the upset off, obviously we, uh, you know, t Tampa took care of business like I thought they would. But I'm going to call for the upset here, Jason. Um, Ooh, I'm gonna call really? Justin Herbert, Sim Justin Herbert is on a mission, and uh, it goes through New Orleans. So, Okay, I'm fascinated to see if that comes true. I see these are two of the more infuriating sim teams because you never know who's going to hit. Like the Chargers will have those games where you have guys like two of the best receivers in the game, obviously reality and even it's inland at times, Mike Williams or, or Keenan Allen. And one of them will go for like two points. The other will go for 30. Yep. You throw in Hunter Henry. You have Austin Eckler who's been a monster, but I don't know. It's just such an inconsistent. Same thing with the Saints side. Like Michael Thomas will sometimes – be Michael Thomas, and at the time, still it'll, it'll be Traquan Smith or Mayo Sanders, Jared Cook. So a lot of players to choose, and I cannot not mention uh, Alvin Kamara, but a lot of players to choose from here. You, we'll see what the numbers look like in the early classic because we'll get a winner. Someone's going to take two grand by the end of this sim. Please do enter with the um, tonight. We have another one, two grand to the top, the AK uh, nightcap. So the late slate has that open as well. You can check that out in your app in the lobby. Let's get involved. You can let us know what your lineups is. Moose, you're taking the Saints. I mean, sorry, you're taking the Chargers. I, I like your pick. I'm still just going to go with the Saints just so we have something just to fight about throughout the whole season. Sure. Team. Let's just, just fight. Let's just be like really, you know, let's just hate each other for the next half. I, uh, and make it really, really my style. For everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, listen, we've all been there in one of these sims. But um, – here with this one, what does your lineup look like? What, what, how did you put together and construct your lineup? Okay, Jason, why don't you just calm down, pal? God, your Boston accent, you know, I, have my, I just I can't believe it, man. Uh, I put Mike Williams there since you asked, Ooh, okay? okay? But Mike Williams in the captain <laughs> spot. I'm just kidding. Uh, I, can't, I can't even fake be mad at Ross. He's too nice. Um, Mike Thomas is in there as well. Okay. Herbert, Kamara. Cook and uh, Will Lutz. So I actually did. Oh, kicker. Yeah, kicker. Woo um, I did put more Saints in kicker. than uh, Chargers, but I'm expecting a big game from Herbert and Williams. Like you said, feels like one of these Chargers receivers always has a big game. So I leaned, uh, I leaned towards Mike Williams. I, I did the same. Captain uh, Michael Thomas, Eckler, Kamara, Mike Williams, Traquan Smith, and Badgley. So opposite on the kicking side, but we'll see what happens. Uh, Disco with an exclamation point says, I need a miracle every day. But for you, from from the bottom of my heart, in Boston accent, I bless you with hopefully the love in the world that can bring you a miracle, Disco. We both do. We're going to take the energy of Canada, you northeast of America, and all around this beautiful world, and hope you get that miracle. Every day is Amazon, a miracle happens, so... <laughs> that the truth is uh the chargers nice start to the drive three yard i'm sorry nine yard gain on the play so here's herbert under center i formation eckler gets the carry gonna be stood up in the backfield though all right must be i'm not gonna even repeat it i feel like you're trying to catch me in something not taking the bait you've done it for two sims don't care what said object you're talking about is and i won't mention it just like, there it is. There's there's my recognition of what you've been asking for two straight sims. Uh, our guy Cena saying Captain Cook, Thomas Kamara, Reed. Oh, nice throw there. Eckler and Henry. Eckler was the only charger I took. Says Smash Lantern over on Twitch. Yeah. See you guys. I forgot about Eckler to be honest. Eckler's like a beast. I probably should have lost him, but uh, oh well. Herbert. Hmm. Not a beast on that drive. So they no. get nine yards on the opening play. Eckler gets stood up, and there's a sack going back nine yards. So fourth and ten, going to punch it away to the home team, Saints. 
It's kind of funny that they're playing the Saints. Do you remember the t- the the game the Chargers and the Saints played last year? Did you see that game? It's not striking a, a okay. chord no. with me. No, no fair enough. I mean, it, basically what happened is Herbert came out, and I think the Chargers had, like, like they were up big. They were up at least 14-0. They ended up losing the game. But, like, Justin Herbert made a couple plays in that game that were just, like, ridiculous. Like, go, running outside the pocket, throwing, like, from the 35-yard line to the, the back of the end zone, you know, a couple things like that. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a good coming out game for him. Uh, it's one of the games where I saw it. And I'm like, holy cow! Like this guy's, this kid's gonna be a stud. So then he went on to win Rookie of the Year. But yeah, kind of funny they're playing because uh, the Chargers. The, oh, and that's the other thing. Actually, Michael Badgley had a 50-yard field goal to win the game, and then he missed it, and then they lost in OT. So let's uh, see if uh, you know history plays uh, a similar role or follows. I don't know. This game follows history, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested. The only reason I want to, I, I, the only thing that stands out to me, I think Herbert did have a big game because he was my fantasy quarterback. Yep. Yeah, I had four touchdowns. Oh, yeah. Look at that. 264, mm-hmm. four scores. Look at this. Catch. Michael Thomas just about broke free there. That was, that was Almost. just about touchdown city there, folks. That was, uh, was real close. I love looking at stats of the games like this. Michael Williams had, Mike Williams had five for 109, two scores. Allen had two for 29, a touchdown. Hunter Henry had a touchdown. No one like you know those are those Mike Williams before you know injury got had just had massive games. Yeah, I still think he's he's right on the tip of becoming like if he can put together a full well we'll call it seventeen game season now which is odd. I think it's going to be a massive like he could be one of those guys that we're looking at like taking over the league. I think he has that type of talent. Yeah, I think he's got a little bit of like Kenny Galladay kind of talent in him. You know, like he could be a number one receiver. He's got to kind of stay on. The field. I also think that he's been a little bit hamstrung by like having Philip Rivers as his quarterback for a few years because I just really don't feel like you know Rivers at that point was was like the right guy to have a, a guy like Mike Williams and he had Keenan. He loved he liked throwing to Keenan Allen so much. So yeah, it's like he used him almost in like specialty. Like when he knew I need to throw one up. Okay, Mike right. Williams it's, is there. Just, right. But Keenan Allen was his you know safety net. The the go-to guy but yeah i think with herbert now he is just spreading the ball around and i I, yeah like i said i think that sky is be there's no ceiling to mike williams talent he is just one of those guys but just so often gets hurt yeah yeah gets hurt uh a lot (laughs) yeah it's like i feel like he's gonna turn into like sammy sosa like sneeze and like throw at his back yeah so unfortunate because you know how hard these darn guys train every year to play and want to be healthy and want to be there and then boom like one little thing hurts him like we saw with like aj green for years especially with wide receivers like you know you just pull your hamstring or something it can just mm. it affects how you train it affects your burst a little bit hamstring injuries are, are one to keep an eye on if guys start having hamstring injuries at the start of the year i know that there's even stats like guys who incur like hamstring injuries at the start of the year they typically just don't have as good seasons so yeah, yep. last year Julio Jones, if you remember, his breeze is going to go to the end zone. Wide open man. Oh, yeah. Got That's him. Right no, in front man. of the defender. Mike. No shock. And Tom is there. He's been playing so hot. Yep. Kids hot. Give him the ball. What a drive there. So three and out for the Chargers results in a deep touchdown pass to Michael Thomas. Get out of your seat, Saints fans. As soon as I saw that oh. play, we had like one on one there at the back. I'm like, that's Mike Thomas. This is going to be a touchdown. And lo and behold, it was Mike Thomas, and it was a touchdown. So incredible. We saw the Chargers fall behind uh, when they beat the Packers, too, though. They got behind and they came back and won. So. True. Yeah, so we'll, we'll be we'll be a fascinating road here. Good way to start, though. Trent winning the classic by 10. Nice jump there. Thank you. Jordan, our producer, Andrew on the ones and twos, our technical director, and Pat, our ops guy. Here we go. Top owned in the 6K early bird in this game. Kamara, 93%. Wow. <laughs> Nine, right behind him, Eckler, 92%. I'm sorry, both basically at 93, separated by a little under 30 uh, tenths of a point. Michael Thomas at 78. Chris Godwin, who we mentioned earlier, 64. Robert Woods at 54. Three. So, this game, a lot riding on those two running backs. Michael Thomas obviously stepping up there, getting it done. Also in this game for that early bird, Breeze and Cook, Keenan Allen all under 50% owned. But getting up there. Oh, 
So we'll see. Don't forget to enter that contest for tonight. There's plenty of spots still available, but you know they'll load up. We've all been there. Oh, yeah, I'll get to it later. No, yep. later, later never comes. It's, it's like the Simpsons when he was going to go see... Uh, <laughs> who was he going to go see at the mall? Um, Mr. T or something? It was, yeah. We'll go uh, a little later. We'll go a little <laughs> later. But then I went <laughs> and I asked... And he said they had already gone. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you, the Simpsons are like the ultimate, obviously you can reference with just about everything that's ever happened in, in, in like the history of time with that future and past. Uh, but the one thing about the Simpsons too is like, you could just pop down if you're like, even like a fringe fan of the Simpsons and you could just like sit down and watch an episode and just start dying laughing they have so many things in those episodes that they weren't like over the top like i love family guy but family guy's over the top yeah yeah but family man. guy's like smack you in the face you yes know, like, yes hey look at us look at this like <laughs> simpson's just like yeah you know we're just gonna do this you can laugh like, or not look at this <laughs> nice play yeah it was like well written nice play <laughs> oh look at oh yeah look at uh, jordan says, saw this video on youtube the other you all right can you melt them oh, off? Yeah. I'm good. <clears throat> I'll, I'll hop a plane. Uh, <laughs> Jordan said, saw a video on YouTube the other day uh, of the guy that voices Homer and never realized how many other voices he does on the show. It, 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 those voice actors are so damn talented. That's why, like, to this day, Moose, one of the things that frustrates me, and it may be odd, <laughs> but major, like, animated movies will get these big actors, and I get it's because you want to put them in, the, like, on the talk shows yeah, and stuff like that, sure. but, like, most of the time, like, I was like, reference, like, Aladdin. Now I understand Robin Williams. But, like, I couldn't tell you any, well, obviously you had Gilbert Godfrey, who I said Kenny Ducey would be in a movie, who would play <laughs> Kenny Ducey. Um, I said you, Dana Carvey would play you. Was my, <laughs> yes, because I think he... Has, I like, like Danny Carvey. I, I think that was a very big compliment. I, it was. It, like, obviously, so last night, me and Freeze Pops, I'll get back to my animated point. <laughs> we were playing like rapid fire. He was like, who would play? Like we were doing like, if we there was like an MCU of the DK Sin Fam. So I was firing as quick as I could without overthinking it. And Dana Carvey came up for you because I think you, cause you, have the, you have a great subtle humor. But then you're also, you have this like way about you that is just so calming as well so i think that and i think of dana carvey with that with most of his comedies like he has like a funny way but his characters are always like like pretty chill and they're not like over the top like they're ridiculous sure. something wrong like garth dana is crazy carvey was, was underrated as, as a, as a yes. back in the day like beside uh when he was on NS and snl so mm -hmm. well like yeah, i said i take that as a compliment i agree should yeah i forget i can't remember all of them I, free stuff says he was gonna tweet him out i, I originally said um glass was mclovin <laughs> <laughs> but I think we cha I changed it because that was just right away. But um, oh no, go with your first instinct. That's I have weird. to, right? Yeah, but I think we did because it was like a better fit. Right. Yeah. For I was sure. try and I was trying to make like the cough one more like embarrassing, kind of like what I did with the Kenny one because I just think Kenny and Gil were like that was. Just <laughs> oh, gosh. But That's Kenny would probably, simple. yeah, like, obviously a better looking. Yeah, just, <laughs> that's all it takes. Uh, but I forget where. Oh, cough! I end up going with Paul Rudd, even though I really shouldn't have, because that's yeah. almost like disrespectful to Paul Rudd. It's the borderline blasphemous, but that's yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, because then we realize he's basically like the every boring dad. So I should have went with like uh, I was saying like a Michael Scott type, not Michael Scott obviously, but like somebody like like that can act that way. We were saying like Phil Dumphy. Now I'm just using characters because that's kind of what Kaufman is, but. <laughs> and the other one I, I, I really still feel good about and he said wouldn't it be a lot of speeding roles Zach Thompson would be played by Tony Gonzalez <laughs> he's not an actor but he's been in a few movies but he would just be like it's too perfect to me what about Tony Danza <laughs> oh my lord we got it oh that's who coughed we should just have Tony Danza just to make it ridiculous Tony Danza <laughs> I can't remember all the rest now oh you know who I got it. I actually have a good one for cough what you got Alan Thicke that really is. But I almost feel like Alan Thicke is like, yeah, I know it is too perfect because he might be that, you know. I don't know. Is that good? It, it might. It's, it's like in the vicinity. <laughs> no, you're good because you know what? Also, he's just at the point where he would like that work. Like I'm taking it into reality. Like if you actually put him as that character, he's like older too. So it'd be like hilarious. Let me tell Actually, his mannerisms might actually be better suited because like, um, what's a guy's name who plays Phil Dumpy? Ty, uh, damn it. It's not going to come to me, but. 
he's almost like too core like funny where yeah. Alan Thicke I think would play it just serious enough like yeah. with that cough balance no not too much they had a lot of fun they had a lot of fun that was a fun one. those are those are some pretty good ones you guys Ibrell thank you Jordan I'll, I'll be dead honest those are some oh, yeah. pretty good ones you came up with there's a run I feel like I'm trying to <laughs> over God through one is <laughs> crazy hopefully kenny takes that the right way oh he won't he won't he <laughs> i know doesn't he doesn't take anything he doesn't take anything the right way I love that's the part kid. of the reason why he's gilbert godfrey though. yeah it's, that's that was my point <laughs> like there is nobody and i know kenny is like you know uh, i don't want to give him any more credit than he needs to right now but i, I think kenny's fantastic i really do like him i always say oh, just great. i love doing dig so in good. kenny just dig in on who you are don't do yeah. don't try to be nice like it's you need to sometimes we need people like that like just like shooting off the hip and like believing in everything they say and like can't be wrong can't be made fun of like it, it plays into your character anyway speaking about characters in this one mike thomas strike for a touchdown breeze four for four for 72 yards i'll uh, be getting an update here lonnie three two two eight is tie oh sorry the second entry is in the lead of the 6k early bird with 150 points 46 or 150.46 points overall thank you jordan uh smashing it today uh you know the two and done just so you know the roadmap the rest of the way there is two games tonight matt lamarca who in the movie will be played by kevin james uh will be joined by adam kaufman who paul rudd will be lowering his standards to be in such a role um so they'll be here for the eight and the ten uh we still have that late classic to get involved in 2k to the first to winner in first place tomorrow two games will be your four of finales what did you came up with a better one what did you say for the four earlier do you remember moose wait what what are we talking what, about what, we, our, what was our non-trademarked number for like the four oh, the four. Oh yeah the ferocious four ferocious four thank you yeah sorry um don't ever be sorry as i typically do and the chat knows i was just, you know drifting off into space here no no a, no you're in the zone dude there's a big right. difference there's up. a big difference just thinking about uh, the next slate <laughs> <laughs> he's already constructing his his uh, roster. Uh, by the way, Zach Thompson wrote a killer thing about all the games for today, so check that out over at DK Nation as well. The playbook, and there's a touchdown That's strike. A Herbert to Keenan. Oh. We both yep. faded him. Yep, Keenan Allen, number yep. 13. <laughs> yeah, right. check out uh, DK Nation there. Yeah, love uh, what Zach Thompson does. There's still articles up there too, guys, obviously, for the classic slates. Mm -hmm. Good advice. We'll get a tie game here early yeah. into the second Chargers quarter. Chargers coming back again, man. Resilient. This Justin Herbert kid is. Uh, with the uh, first touchdown for the Chargers, Keenan Allen owned in 45% in the 6K early bird. But yeah, so two games tonight, two games tomorrow, just one sim on Monday, and then we're back to it. Six sims, seven days a week. There will be an eating contest next Sunday that me and Moose talked about in the 2 p.m., but Aside from that, we're, we're rolling. Appreciate all the engagement. We've been hearing nothing but great things from behind the scenes, from the from the higher-ups, the ones that sign our multi-million dollar checks to be announcers on Madden Sims. Uh, they said, great engagement. Love what we're seeing. So smash that like. Let them know you're liking what you have here. We're not going nowhere, baby. Hope you guys have been digging the tournament. It's been a lot of fun to be a part of. Yeah, man, I like this bracket style. I think it's cool. Hopefully we'll do a couple more, you know, things like this. Mm. Yeah, but it's just fun. And again, you guys, how many times are we giving away that kind of prize pool on a daily basis? It's not not often. So, you know, with two a day, and especially heavily involving when it's just two games or three games that we had throughout the week earlier. So, that's why we appreciate all the engagement, all the fun we're having. So now the Saints will take over. Drew Breeze puts the man in motion. There's Breeze looking to pass. As a man wide open. And Emmanuel Sanders or Traquan? It looks like Traquan Smith. No. Take it back. Post. Strike it. Edit and post, please. That is Jared Cook. We see you first time. Uh, if you didn't know, I don't... Don't quote me on this, but people have always asked for, like, you know, when we say, hey, what else would you like to see? They always say retro teams. And Madden... Yeah. They don't do retro teams anymore. Those party poopers. Yeah, so they have, like, the ultimate team stuff, so... So you just, I was talking about, I know, I think it was Tommy I was talking about this. The NFL needs to just, like, give itself a slap in the face and get get on the deal with these jerseys. Like, 
You get 17 games a year. Like, Bro. you got great retro jerseys. You got, you can, the color rush is good. I like that. It's a good idea. But, like, let's get some more alternate jerseys here. We only see these guys 17 games a year. <laughs> but, like, six of them should have cool jerseys, at least. You know, like, you wear your base for, like, four away, four home. Mix it up, NFL man. Like, look, look at, look at how much people love the the Chargers and stuff like that, and their mm-hmm. retro, and the Tampa Bay creamsicles. My God, gone. they're do gone. Not like money. Like, do you not like money? I just it, this is one of those things that irks me to no end. For if you're running the NFL, to just a, you just break it out. Like, get bust the ball and chain of like you know the traditionalism, and the, this thing. Oh, we only going to have like three uniforms per year. And just it, bust it out. Give the people what they want. It's just uniforms, man. Like, let's go. Go back when they did the, the AFL 50th anniversary. All those AFC teams had, like, five uniforms that year. You had those Broncos with the brown. They had the Steelers with the prison stripe. They had a lot. Uh, real quick, uh, James Farrell, it was the Tampa Bay won the last previous game. So they're going to take on the winner of this one tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Um, no, I agree. And I, I I get frustrated more about not just the jersey, but the helmets. There was that whole rule with the new oh, helmets that they can't do multiple helmets. Like, that is such uh, a real dumb thing. You're just limiting, limiting your, your marketing, limiting yeah. what you can give the people. Like, Please. come on, man. Like, let's be 2021, honest. 2021, you know? The, like, uh, yeah, like, if you're a Saints fan, they used to have those old school, they, where they had the state of Louisiana on the side oh, of the helmet. That was, that's, you don't see that stuff anymore. So many cool things you could do. With, like, you, you, could, you could hire... You know, some kind of you know, different artists for each team to do a design every year. You could do a retro as well. Man, like, like, let's get on this. Be helpful, people. And I know, like, I know that what they're going to tell us. The NFL's like, well, we actually sold all the merch from those eras, so now we're going to try to sell it to these new. And I get it. That's what they have. So many new uniforms over the past two years, but why not make more? <laughs> Why fans are always coming in? People are children are being born every day. You're only going to get more and more, especially when you. Anytime you mention that Tampa Bay Creamsicle, I could not believe that with Brady going there, that that was not one of their jerseys. Ridiculous. Just that that gray is. Oh, don't like that gray one. It's like the worst. The red one, fine. The white, great. Yep. The black, cool. Creamsicle. Give it to us. Give the people what they want and what you want. Money. Yep. That's just one of those things. It's it's so easy to well, I mean, it's pretty easy to do. No, it I mean, is. Moves. We're not like recreating rocket science. We're just talking yeah. fashion. Out of bounds. Oh, out of bounds. Michael Thomas. I wonder if we'll get a review or something there. I, I thought he might have toe tap, but usually they'll they'll credit the touchdown and then review. So yeah, Robbie Noble yeah. says Oregon uses a different uniform every game. Robbie, know. you know, them in Maryland started this trend like 15 years yeah. ago. Yeah. Just wild uniforms like, and helmets. Like if a college team can do it, and I understand, you know, Oregon is like the Nike factory kind of thing. Um, but still, like if they can do it, I think the NFL teams can probably pull it off too. So, yeah, that's that, – I've, I've always wondered why people haven't done that. Like it's like Oregon is changing uniforms literally every game. Like why Why isn't someone else like taking this more approach? Why isn't the NFL like caught on to this? You're telling me. You still have wild. your base uniforms. Like it's – Anyways. No, I, listen, preach, dude. I'm with you. I get – it gets me all fired up, especially as a Patriots fan, like the old Pat the Patriot. Like, I want to oh, see that helmet. There's so many good ones, yeah. The Patriots have good ones. The red Reds, ones. Yeah. The blues from the 90s or whatever. Oh, same going to get it in no. no, we stopped at the two. But will we see the AI get aggressive here? Fourth and goal from the will. two. I think we will. We saw it in the last game, and we know when Cooper Cup was stopped short, which really was the turn of events for that game. First time playing Fortnite says, I think these plays are designed for Taysom Hill. <laughs> Feels that way. Cook, TD this pass. Get bid. I think I think every Saints play is designed for Taysom Hill. <laughs> just, how, just, just Sean how Payton being goes. just odd with his... Well, so, you know, Taysom could play tight end here if we wanted. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to kick it. Out. Lutz taking those guaranteed points here. 420... Delay here in the fourth. The old goal is good. So there it is. 10-7 now. Saints take the lead. Chargers defense held up tight when they needed the bend don't break. 
Robbie Noble says the founder of Nike went to Oregon. That's where it all started. Sure did. I did sure not did. know that. And if you just said that earlier, I apologize. <laughs> I didn't say it. But... Okay. I feel like that, I'm not going to lie, when we could break fourth walls again, that's my, not like a pet peeve by any means, but I've noticed certain people, I'm not going to name names, not going to do it, not going to do it. Simfam already knows. <laughs> not going to When, do like, it. you nope. say something, be like, oh, you know, must be, um, says Oregon changes uniform so much because they are NCAA and then just, like, trash. Like, ha, ha, ha. And then, like, if you were two minutes later to go, oh, must be, says the Oregon, like, there's some host and, or commentators and people we do that sometimes and i always like it's one of my things i try to avoid so <laughs> fair enough i laugh every time it happens like behind the scenes because i know the production crew knows when it happens too which is hilarious which by the way it's not a shot i do a many dumb things or things that people can make fun of so i'm open to it. i'm the charges second and nine now those end of rounds haven't been working today Jet sweep runs. Do the end rounds ever work though? <laughs> Very few. Like it's so weird too. Like how many times tight ends get involved with those? There's the pitch. Yeah, I know. Eckler. You know, we talk about every time. I feel like we talk about Eckler. Uh, we always talk about like his fantasy stock last year. I was just having a conversation with someone, and you know we were talking you know, NFL draft coming up. So it always makes me think like, like is there someone in this draft? moose that's going to be like remember ceh last year was like a first round pick in fantasy which i yep. still was like this is insane yeah. uh, was, he had a fine year but definitely was not first round value in a 12 no. but is there anyone coming out of this draft that's going to be like that guy this year like a running back or any any position is there any guy that's going to yeah. be drafted in two weeks that as we get to fantasy draft season is could be a first um, round pick so The Eagles and the Lions uh, both kind of are – people have them pegged for potentially taking wide receivers. Mm -hmm. I would say if the Eagles take – like if they end up with like Devontae Smith or um, or like uh, Eric Waddell or something like that, that could potentially be something, I guess. But just because they're gonna, oh. probably going to be like the wide receiver one. Detroit as well, like if they took uh, Devontae. Mm-hmm. But I just do you really pick, see that? Yeah, I don't know. Pick, yeah, I don't know. I don't, but I those don't quarterbacks, know. like, if somehow the Chiefs took one of them, maybe we're having a different conversation. But. Yeah, I, I think, no, the easy answer is no. I, yeah. I don't think there's any way that's going to like, – and generally what you see is it'll happen with running backs because a guy will get mm -hmm. hurt. So maybe I honestly – and running back is not a position I have paid attention to much this year, so I'm not even going to, like, try and guess which guy it could be. But, um, you know – if a running back gets taken and then like there's an injury, that's generally when it happens. It's the running backs that, that get moved up. Either that or like a team. The thing is, there's not that many teams that have weak running back situations, right? Like, I, I I can't even think off the top of my head a team where like if, if they if a if they just drafted a running back in like the second round, everyone would be like, oh one. yeah, this guy's gonna slot right in. Like, I got one though, and I, mean, I got a team. Good. I don't no, know. No, good. Give it to me. I want to hear it. The, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ah, that's a great one. That's now, great I know their line still has plenty of issues, but they, they basically, as, as much I respect James Conner, especially what he's gone through, what a story, but he isn't the same player since injuries. Well, Conner's on, on Arizona. No, I know. I'm just, but I'm looking at like the last few years. Oh, like, for sure. I see what you're saying. With yeah, Samuel, yeah. like he could catch, but nothing great. Benny Smell is the most plotting running back maybe in the history. Yeah, like, he he's like, he ain't good. Yeah. He, if you guys remember the name Ben Jarvis Green Ellis, like there has never been a guy that, with all due respect, wasn't extremely talented, just had opportunity. Yeah, and like yeah. could just run up the middle as long as there was a hole. With Benny Snell's kind, Snell is kind of that guy. Yeah. Uh, anyways, but if they are able, and I see the same guy I was thinking of, Andrew mentioned Travis Entienne out of uh, Clemson's kind of like the best running back, I would say. Him yeah. and uh, Harris from Alabama, Najee Harris, those guys. There's yeah. also um, North Carolina. There was I can't think of the name, but um, either way, but like yeah, I don't think any of these guys are like shoe wins, but. I just think the Steelers are a team that's going to be starved to get like that guy this year, whoever that stud running back. That that's the team right there. I mean that that's that's a good good bring up again. You know they do have guys like they they have Anthony McFarland there last year didn't get much run. Mm -hmm. He you know they they could try and, and mix him in. Uh, he, I don't think he's terrible. Uh, Benny Snell I agree though is like not good. The problem with the Steelers I worry is 
they're not very like they're really good at identifying talent on wide receiver. They're not they're not at running back. Like they've been they were giving Benny Snell carries last year, you know, like they they've they've married themselves to James Conner. Like James Conner's not a good running back. He's not yeah. it's not explosive. You know, I know he had the one good year for them, but like they they stayed married to him and like they had a guy like uh Jalen uh, Samuels who's a really good like kind of Lev Bell clone and they just never give him like a, a run. So Maybe Finally. they maybe they commit like to second rounder and, and they bring mm-hmm. in someone and, and if you spend it typically if a team spends a second round draft pick, they really like the guy and they're going to commit to him. So definitely a team to keep an eye on. But if they just end up with like another like late round running back, honestly they're probably gonna go back to Snell. So yeah, I... definitely a team to keep an eye on though. That's that's the one that would pop up the most for me. Because like I said, I don't have anyone else remotely as good a spot. No, I think they're the – but, again, the offensive line is the major yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they could not run the ball last year. No. Uh, oh, our guy Kaufman jumped in, said, just saying hi, fam. See you tonight at 8 and 10. And my yeah. best – in my best Lamarca. I hope he – I think he's saying and. But I hope I hope he – hope that isn't a mistake. I hope he, that actually is the line he meant. Like, in I hope best. he's going to – yeah, I hope he's going to be in a Lamarca. Maybe there's been a product – it's like the Snuggie, but it's a little more. Lamarca, market. yeah. It's just a big. It's a nice, like, bear-shaped, like, <laughs> Snuggie. <laughs> Everyone, get your Lamarca at DraftKings shop. <laughs> trying, to, trying to help make the money. Also, shout out to our guy, Damian Williams. says, Jets def need a running back. Yeah, that's a good call. It's a good pull. I just yeah, don't they know. have. That's right, yeah. I was actually thinking, like, who is their running back? Well, they have the Michael P. Ryan. Uh, yeah. Ty Johnson, I think, is still there. Okay, so that tells me all I need to know. Yeah, they yeah <laughs> pretty much. Um, yeah, P. Ryan, they... is that the guy that was with the Bengals? No, that's his brother. Samaj P. Ryan is with the Bengals. Uh, uh, Michael right. P. Ryan. They actually drafted them. him, so. Okay. But yeah, they'll probably be looking. Uh, Jeff says, uh, well, Jeff Friedman says, Rossi and Ulrich, great show, guys. Thanks, man. We appreciate that comment as well. Jason Myers, I think the kicker is in the chat here. Appreciate him joining us. He says, if Miami drafts Harris, I could see him being a day one starter. It's a fair point. I don't know if they're going to take a running back where well, their draft yeah, position Miami, is. Miami could, yeah, if they, if they went high. Mm. Is there another one? Brita, like, what do you think of him? Brita's moved on, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Isn't he... But who is the yeah? This you know, it's so funny. The same thing. We've been so around quarterbacks, offensive linemen, linebackers, and receivers that I kind of. I want to say Breida signed with Denver, but I don't honestly don't know. Bills, the Bills. Says Bills, uh, okay, there you go. That's a sure, nice signing for the Bills. With that it is backfield. nice signing for the Bills. I really like that signing. <laughs> Matt Breida. Matt Breida is a guy who can work in. You know, he, he, he's. He's a guy who can work in as like a, a 30 to 50% snap guy. He could take a, a couple of games. That's good. Uh, That's deep field goal. Yeah, deep field goal there. So all tied. But yeah, just quickly going back to it, but you're right. So now you have obviously Zach Moss, who I think they want to be like a, gu- a guy there, Devin Singletary, and now Matt Breida. Going to be some competition now that we'll Miami, have Miami. Miami is admittedly a team to keep an eye on. They do like Miles Gaskin, but like the depth chart behind Miles Gaskin is like. Like, they signed Malcolm Brown, who Mm -hmm. isn't exactly, like, thrilling. So, I think Miami's another good team to keep an eye on. Miami and uh, and Pittsburgh, definitely. You know, you could throw the Jets in there as well for running back. But the Jets offense, you know, do we really want to rely on that next year? Probably not. So Yeah, I like it. I like the conversation here, everybody. Love that you guys are throwing out some names here. Um, uh, Death Boss is running back Gainwell out of Memphis. He's the same size as Eckler, same skills. That could be a guy to keep an eye on. Okay. And Jeff Paul makes another good point. They did sign Tevin oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, but like, honestly, that's another. But like, he hasn't been healthy since no. Atlanta days. No, no kidding. Yeah. I think that it, running back is such a fickle position where you get the knee here to go to the half. That like a guy like Tevin Coleman when he was coming going to San Francisco, like oh San Francisco's got their RB one. We're gonna see everything he has, and obviously great three-headed monster there for a little while, but obviously we've seen Mostert make the most out of that position. Actually, the Atlanta Falcons are another team to keep an eye on for running back. True, because they got Mike Davis, right? Out of Mike Davis. But, but does he really scream, like, we don't need anything else in the yeah. position? Yeah. 
their their other guy is Quadre Olson. So yeah, Atlanta's going to be looking for Quadre Olson. Is that your neighbor or is that a running back? That that's Olson. Sorry, I'm just kidding. Either way, it's just it's just <laughs> funny when you throw out these names. It's like oh yeah, no, that no, guy. No, oh I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, is he a third um, corner? Yeah, Anyways. Atlanta great at uh, at drafting running backs with like you know eclectic names like uh, Jacquees <laughs> Rogers. Oh, loved him. His show. <laughs> and who's the other? Didn't they? Didn't they have a crazy name guy on their roster as well? Yeah. Um, oh, uh, Ido. Um, yes. Thank you, Ido Smith. Judge Ido Smith. Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's ten ten here at halftime. We're talking about running backs. Looking ahead to the draft here in the bracket challenges. We are in the eclectic eight. It is, like I said, tied up. The touchdowns in this one, it was Mike Thomas, a bomb. He's got uh, himself having a day so far. He caught the pass from Drew Brees. He has got 76 yards on three grabs. Cook has uh, three grabs for 48. The uh, Austin, I'm sorry, it was Keenan Allen. He's got two catches for 11 yards. He's got the other touchdown. So, whew. LOL. Tev Coleman, he is good, though. Thanks. He was good. I mean, he's, yeah, he's like Rossi said, he hasn't been, I was always a fan of Tevin Coleman, but um, he has not been very healthy lately. So tough to make an argument for him right now. Um, yeah. The, the, we, we throw out a good handful of teams though. I mean, you made a great yeah. point with the Steelers, the Dolphins, I think That's a good uh, Atlanta, one. the Jets potentially. Yeah. But I, I think those are three big teams to watch out for because the, the running think. backs will make the biggest Im- impact on fantasy, you know, if they get the main role. Like that, that'll be True. those are the guys you want to keep track of. So, and and just how these also spiral into things. A guy like Cam Akers, who showed a lot of signs, now is realistically going to be like the running back. Yeah, for uh, the Rams, where Henderson will still be like spilling and receiving back. Yeah, um, they got two good running backs there because Henderson's good. Like I'm a little yeah. disappointed they haven't given him more chance, but it's clearly going to be the Cam Akers show. So. Yeah, I drafted early last year. Uh, also, real quick, in our 6K early bird special, Lonnie, 3228, the second entry still hanging in there. So, a half away from 2K. Jordan lets us know Todd Gurley's a free agent. And guess what, Jordan? I don't think he's ever playing again. Yeah. I don't think, and I, I want to see him play again. He was electrifying, but I don't think we're going to see him. He looked so bad last year. And the, he had that like little bit of a run there from like I think it was like week three to six or something. He had a little bit. You yeah. saw signs again. You're like, oh, look at this, and then he got hurt again. And yeah, he, yeah, that's think, right. It yeah. doesn't he have the situation that you see with running backs? I think he has like no. I think it's all cartilage or no cartilage in his knees. So yeah. at this point, it's just ah, oh, just stinks because he was electric for the Rams. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Had a good. Yeah. You know three-year stretch whatever you want to call it but i guess the knee issue has just caught up with him because the burst just was not there last year um he might he might catch on with me you know maybe the steelers sign him or something like that i could see something i could see that for a veteran guy but again you know like the steelers bringing todd Gurley would be kind of hilarious because like they're they need someone with some speed because like benny (laughs) snell Snell ain't it no and i don't know i haven't seen enough of mcfarland but i don't know if he's it either so that would be a pretty pathetic trio, to be honest. <laughs> like, Seriously. You brought in uh, Gurley. They need, they need to go get someone, like you said, like that uh, NTN fellow. Yeah, they need to find somebody that can be a difference maker. Oh, oh, off the helmet. Helmet ball. <laughs> it's live action. A little cherry picking could have went down. I just want to quickly look. This is Gurley's numbers. So he was he started, was a rookie in 2015, had over 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. Uh, he also had... Where's his receiving? He had 180. Yeah, that didn't matter as much. Uh, next year, he had uh, just under 900 yards, six touchdowns, had th- over 300 yards receiving, no scores there. Then in 2017, he was a Pro Bowler, an All-Pro, 13 touchdowns, over three, 1,300 yards, almost 800 yards receiving, and another six. So he had 19 total touchdowns. Then in 2018, which feels like a lifetime ago, had 1,251 yards, 17 touchdowns, yeah. almost 600 yards receiving, and four touchdowns. Crazy. Like, that feels like it was so long ago. It was three seasons ago, and then fell off the, you know, 900 yards. Still had 12 touchdowns, by the way, in 2019. Uh, last year, by the way, am I reading that he had nine touchdowns in Atlanta? Wow. Yeah, he did. That, that was the one thing he did well. 
Oh, he was scoring from that. Must have been during that stretch. He, he had a three. Scored in the game. red zone. Yeah, he he just he converted his touchdowns in the red zone. It was like the one time he kind of looked good taking it into yeah. the third line, but he's pretty much useless outside of that. They started working in like Brian Williams or whatever, you know. Yeah, pretty uh, incredible. So, um, six six seasons, sixty seven touchdowns. That's that's a nice yeah. that's a nice little career right there for Todd Gurley. And it, if someone does sign him, that, that's going to be the reason that he gets signed. You know, just because yeah. they can they can use him as a hammer inside the red zone or something. But I don't know. Makes me think of Terrell Davis, who I have all my issues with. I know he was an MVP in the Super Bowl and the league, but I want to compare those numbers quickly. Is Drew Brees here on a second and four yeah, from the 49? Off. He fell off the cliff real quick. Yeah, it just oh, nice grab. Oh, ball's no. on the ground. Chargers pick it up. Boom shakalaka. That was quick. Traquan, come on, man. No, no, no love from him today, but makes the catch. Looked like he was going to take it to the house. And then the hammer, boom. Oh, that ball's out. No need for review there. Charger's going to take over. Yeah, I know one thing about this this running back draft, too. It doesn't look like it's super loaded no. for running back. So, I'm, so I'm just doing this for the game for a second because people on here probably know I've criticized. I don't think Terrell Davis should be a Hall of Famer, but I think there's a lot of players in there that shouldn't be. Um I have yep. a bias. I think when you work for the NFL Network, they kind of give you a little rub there. But nonetheless, from 90, so he played for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seasons, total of 60 touchdowns. He did have a 2,000 yard rushing season, 17, 15, 11. So he's, don't get me wrong, he's great. Uh, then he fell right off the cliff. Yep. 99, 2000, 2001, just barely there in a sense. He did have 700 yards in his last season. Receiving numbers nowhere near Gurley overall and Gurley technically has more touchdowns in less time now I know he's not going to have the 2,000 yards he didn't win a Super Bowl went to one didn't win an MVP but that's my point when it's all said and done I get things are in different eras as well but like Todd Gurley I don't think anyone's going to be talking about the Hall of Fame anytime soon no definitely not but him and Terrell Davis similar runs just saying similar similar runs very similar Yep. Just stinks. I, I really don't like to see when these careers just kind of fade off. It sucks. That's that's why running back, you know, it's just such a volatile position. It's why you just, if you're an NFL team, you should just never pay a running back. You should just never pay a big salary to a running back. You should be looking for guys, you know, that are cheap coming out of college, or you should be looking for guys cheap on the free agent market. Mm. Um, yeah, you just never know when the guy's about to fall off a cliff. And there's, there's scenarios the other way, guys who, who produce, like, into their 30s, but they're yeah. just fewer and far between, and it's good luck guessing which way it's going to go with these guys. So. Yeah, there's the rare cases of, like, the Adrian Peterson, who I think, you know, if still given another chance, like, I think he can be a contributor. Like, if there's Dodd Gurley or Adrian Peterson next year, and you're a football team X, like, give me Adrian Peterson. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> he I did agree. the same thing. He could score from the goal line, did it a ton once Detroit kind of turned that over towards the end of the year when they were out. Oh, yeah, I think he's he's a guy who, like I'd rather see get like the six carries to spell one of your top two running backs. Or like I don't know, it, it's just it's so it, like he's a guy that you're like he's still like you could have the argument like he still plays, or Jordan, yeah, Frank Gore. I'm so I gotta get that guy's gotta get one more year. Somebody Frank just Gore. <laughs> yeah, just do us all a favor. Uh, Who's a random team that could just sign him that like. Just, like Detroit, just sign him. Just give him a chance. Dan Campbell just biting kneecaps, telling Frank like he's probably like as old as Frank Gore. Yep. Actually, that would be greater if who's the younger like the Bengals because I think um is, uh, what, what is, I was gonna call him Zach Thompson, but I believe he's young. He's a young coach, so we can get. I bet you Frank Gore is older than him. That would just be hilarious. Yeah, I, oh, Zach Taylor. Zach Taylor, thank you. Coach Taylor, not from Friday Night Lights. <laughs> that would be fun. This is going to be a few coaches out there now. I don't even know all the ages of the coaches that have been signed. Yeah, there's and a couple. Th- isn't <sighs> guy from the Wacko that got signed to uh, the Eagles? I think he's young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I you just feel bad for him. Oh, yeah, he's that's a great public speaker. Again, yeah, not not, not a knock against him or anything. Just was. That was a tough scene, though. That was, yeah. that was Sorry. a rough to watch. 
recipe for disaster. Oh, that ball's almost fumbled, but just knocked out of the hands going forward. A little tuck rule action by Drew Brees. I thought there was like a, a guy in his, his younger 30s, though, who got. Sean McVay still only 35? Are you yeah, serious, Jordan? Yeah, McVay's, yeah I, McVay's still really young, man. It's ridiculous. Um, still. Maybe I was just thinking of McVay. It's probably who I was. No, they, there is somebody. Kingsbury. Is King, Kingsbury's pretty young, too. Um, All right, Zach Taylor's 37. Thank you, Jordan. Wide open receiver there on a third and 10. Can't leave Kamara that open. Don't worry, they didn't because it's Traquan Smith. <laughs> Wow, that was A plus announcing. That is how you do it in the pros, folks. Is it? Never He's really said. I was just saying you would never leave Camaro. That's right. Smart by the Chargers. I swear yeah, to God, red. a team just hired someone who was like thirty. I, maybe I'm just. Maybe there's just so many of these. Jordan's guys. cooking. Jordan's got something going. Jordan, he's okay. He, he's 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 wild right now. Oh, Jordan knows this. everything. So Sean McVay is technically the youngest coach. Then okay. Zach Taylor. Kevin Stefanski, 38 years old. Nice move there. Thomas has a flag on the play. Arthur Smith is who you're probably thinking, 38 years old for the Falcons. Yeah, maybe maybe that was who the one. He was, was the, the youngest hire. The Chargers new head coach, um, Staley. How old is he? Maybe uh, he's in, I think he's like 40, actually. Yeah, he's in the 40s because I don't see him on this list of okay. youngest. So McVay, Taylor, Stefanski, Arthur Smith, Flores, Joe Judge are all under 40. Then Matt LaFleur, Kyle Shanahan. Which Shanahan's only 41 years old. Yeah, he's been around forever. He wow. was like, like 30. Serious. That's that's impressive. This is going to be a pass connected down to the four-yard line. Is Kamara with the catch. Uh, yeah, Matt Nagy also still young at 42. So if things fail out, like that's one thing sometimes with these guys. Like a Matt Nagy, everyone probably expects, hmm, we'll see what happens if the Bears can turn it around. But future mm -hmm. not looking so bright right now um that if he's gone like if he had some success in the league as a head coach in his late 30s early 40s like you get another chance with that stuff yeah absolutely and i mean the trend has been to be like let's hire the young guys right so you got a lot of coaches like that right now you know a lot of them will probably get second chances whatever oh what did i just do sorry yeah exactly i tried to say something the first time on Fortnite because he made a joke about me with a good cover-up and i hit the button whisper I didn't do it, but what does whisper mean on Twitch? Can someone let me know? Whisper? A whisper yeah. button. You usually have to like tap their name and hit mention, but here's the handoff. Into Ooh. the end zone is the man that you don't leave open, Alvin Kamara. Lights action, Kamara. Seven point lead for the Saints. They got my my boys on the uh, on the ropes here, folks. I'm keeping it close, but no 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 more Murray vultures. No, not there. We got one the other night. Nice play there. So Saints, as you mentioned, break the tie up by seven. With Whisper's Twitch DM. Okay. Whisper. Oh, okay. So I thought good. I didn't mean. I thought I didn't want you to think I was like trying to tell you to be quiet or something or like you're out. Whisper. Uh, whisper. Oh, I can. But I don't know if I can on my app here first. Let me see. Oh, dude, you just saved me so much time. <laughs> I literally thought that was only a YouTube function. You can add, and then the names pop up. Boy, I feel like I'm 110 years old right now. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, Jason Myers says, left wish needs to prove more. The enemy deserves a shot now. I'm talking about coaches that deserve shots. I think the enemy is going to fall into that odd Josh McDaniels category where maybe he shouldn't be a head coach. Yeah. Like, people saying how awful he interviewed which i don't really understand what that means i think if you think he has the talent you do you go with it i don't I, it's the nfl it's a results based league i don't care if you interview well if you can draw our plays and rally an organization then go for it you can only imagine what like belichick sounded like in an interview which by the way is really funny fact it was birthday oh, yesterday yeah, he never interviewed, you know, for the New England Patriots job. Technically. Really? Yeah, because he got the Jets coaching job and he was traded for. Oh, that's right. So it was. there's a couple stats out there about coaches that never interviewed and got a job. I keep forgetting how that Belichick thing went down. It's so weird. It's a different time, dude. It's You don't see stuff like that. You saw no. it with the... Um, it happened for Chucky. 
Back in the day, he was traded for by for the Raiders. How long? Because he Bay. was. How long was Belichick on the Jets? Like a week or something? Three days, I think. Three days. Yeah. He was announced at a press conference. Looked miserable as ever. Basically, yeah. like, identified the persona there, and then was quickly because he was with, you know, the Browns and the organization went kaputs. Went back with Parcells here in New England, then got the job to be the Jets head coach after. Uh, uh, was it after Parcells? I forget how it all kind of shook out, but yeah, he basically was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> it's just, it's such a weird... I know, yeah, because he was on the Jet staff with Parcells. Parcells then was going to leave. They announced him as the head coach, and then, yeah, like, days later, boom, traded to New England Patriots. For a first-round pick, by the way. Maybe the greatest trade in NFL history. Yeah. No kidding. So here's Herbert. Oh! Gets whacked oh, as he throws ball. it. Out of bounds. <laughs> Got it out. Second and ten, no harm, no foul. I will give a shout out because I like to, you know, we always say smash that like and everything I watch on YouTube, I like to give a thumbs up. Algorithm's going to get you anyways, but uh, Secret Base, formerly SB Nation YouTube, they put out a video today of the Mangini versus Belichick beef history. It's about 13 minutes of gold. Because that oh, yeah, situation. Okay. Yep. Oh, there's the worst play in Madden. Uh, that's incomplete. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, very, very interesting how like how close Mangini and Belichick were. Yeah. And yep. how Mangini, you know, if you want to call it blowing the whistle or doing whatever he did that created the mass paranoia and overhyped spy gate. And to this day you, you people forget, obviously being in New England, like the in the media at the time, like how everyone really viewed it as like this is nothing, every team does it, how quickly that became like the Patriots are cheaters, they're the worst team ever. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And like guys like Jimmy Johnson in articles, if you can watch this video again, I really do suggest it in between or another time. It's called uh, Secret Base and it's the beef history of Belichick Mangini. And long story short, it's like Jimmy Johnson's like, oh yeah, we did that all the time. Like we were on the <laughs> sidelines. We didn't, yeah. like, nobody said anything. Just nobody yeah. came. Like, yeah. When if you could be, like, and then like Heinz Ward came out, there's a famous quote from him saying how like he believed that the Patriots cheated against them and the. Uh, and and if, uh, AFC title game in 03, it's like, dude, come on, <laughs> give it a rest, bro. Seriously, <laughs> yeah, but that's that's sports, right? And that's what we live for those moments and like those narratives because they drive the stories. I, I still can't believe the whole the play gate thing. Oh, that like, was like, what a joke. You're I will see, you're telling me your team lost because of the inflation of the ball you're worried about that you dead serious like give me a break who cares we'll never respect the the baltimore ravens organization because of it i'm sorry it's why i have a, a hair across my tuchus for john harbaugh what a <laughs> baby because he didn't yeah. know that you could put an offensive lineman as um eligible and the way they did all the, the manipulation of the, the <laughs> rules it's like it's still the rules yeah Anyways, I just, oh, I could go on all day. And I had to read all that stupid paperwork in court cases. What was that even called? Not the Wells. Maybe it was the Wells Report. It was the damn Wells Report. It was the Wells Report, yeah. Oh, obnoxious. Working in Boston media during that time was the worst. I couldn't even imagine it. That'd be terrible. Because oh, yeah. they were like skimmed through it, find lines. I'm, I'm like, I got sick of reading about it. I was like, why are we still getting information about the game? Like, what, what, how can we still be possibly talking about this like a year and a half after the fact? about the inflation oh. of a ball like it was so weird it's still to this day is like one of the weirdest things. it's so bad and then like the, the two things that people always hang over with the patriots on both these situations was the nfl destroyed the spygate tapes which if you want to know the truth behind that is because 65 percent or 60 percent of the league does it and they know if they put that out there every team's going to be like well that guy did it i have proof of this guy this guy this guy and the yeah. other teams that don't do that are going to be like well, this is the biggest deal ever. It would have the league would have went nuts. And then Spygate with Tom Brady's whole cell phone thing about deleting, like destroying his cell phone. It's like, right? Oh, guess what? Who cares what the ball looks like or feels yeah. like? The guy I forget the player's name who intercepted Brady in that game for the Colts, who everybody wanted to pin this on for years, right. had, had come out and been like, "You think I could tell the difference?" He's like, "I was lucky to intercept the ball." You think I'm like feeling it and going to my yeah. coach and being like. Hey, I think there's something wrong with this ball. Like, no. Like, like look, if you so if you funny. want to, if you're the league, you want to find the Patriots, 
find find them. Take a draft. I don't even care. Take a seventh round draft pick or something. No. But just move on. Like you don't need to, to to have the the focus of your league be on Deflate Gate for like you know basically two years. Two years. That's like it, all anyone ever talked about. It was so annoying. So yeah. And, and just so people know, and obviously I get I'm a hog, I'm a Patriots fan, all that. Tom Brady got suspended four games. I know we were probably thinking, well, how do we get here? I don't know. Um, but we're here. Michael Thomas has the bonus. It's 17 to 10. The Saints here in the erratic eight. I will just say that the weirdest thing is imagine any franchise before that, whether you like these teams or not. Let's go Cowboys in the 90s, right? The last one before the Patriots, like as a dynasty. Imagine Troy Aikman, anything happening, him being suspended for four games. <laughs> like you're just harming your own sports legacy by doing foolish oh, things like that. Anyways, it fueled him to another Super three Super Bowl. So thank you, actually. But it's just wild. Like I always think oh, back to that. Like imagine I, Terry Bradshaw in the seventies being suspended. Like I forgot he got four games. Like I actually forgot. Yes. I, I for like it's so it's insane, dude. I mean, well, and if you want to know, you're gonna there's gonna be a book released some point I think this year about obviously the Brady Belichick, the Patriots. I think it's um oh why can't I think of that guy's name? I talked to him so many times too. Who wrote all the articles of like the Patriots what was going on behind the scenes in Garoppolo trade, but um, yeah. anyways, there's a book coming out this year. Uh, yeah, Seth Wickersham. Thank you, Andrew. Like, I need a brain so bad today. Um, <laughs> still Saturday, right? Um, but Seth Wickersham had him on the station I worked for, spoke to him on and off the record many times. He, there's my BK moment of the day. He basically, <laughs> the belief in what I believe is going to come out in this book is that when Brady got suspended the four games and Belichick got to see Garoppolo for those six quarters, he knew, yeah, he's injury prone, but okay, we can move on. Like yep. in this offense, in this system with that defense, we can win yep. with him at a much cheaper cost and make the move away for Brady. But again, wait for that book to come out and sparks to fly. And doesn't matter now, Brady got a Super Bowl outside of Belichick and there's no war necessarily unless you want that to again be another narrative. But that's what I believe kind of the moment happened. For sure. And I mean, it makes sense, right? You know, yeah. you know guys getting a little older, team can save money, whatever, you know. Picked him in the second round, which again was, you know, they had taken right. like the Kevin O'Connells in the third round in the past and random draft picks. Is, yep. They're going to be all tied up here. That is the here big fella. Actually, no, is that a, is that a read? Is that a perm? Oh, wait a minute. Is that Virgil? Who do we got here? Yeah. Yeah, who is this? Don, I thought it was Don more important Perry. than anything. Caca, caca, I'm a vulture. Caca, caca. That's Donald Parham. You say it's Virgil Green. Oh, please, I'm wrong. You know that. No, it is Virgil Green. It is Virg. The one time I get something right. The one time. Wow. I don't know if Donald Parham has caught a pass in this game. I just, you know. I know he's on there. He's on the team. <laughs> Let's see. I can't wait. Right now, Jordan probably furiously looking. What is Virgil Green in the 6K early bird contest ownership? I'm going to guess 0. 0.02. No, I'm going to say 0. 0.08. Like, barely there. He's going to take you all day to find him. Don't even bother. I'm just going to say that as a fact. <laughs> the vulture is in effect, Jason. Yes. That helps no one. Well, think about it this way there. TL, I'll call you. If it helps no one, it technically helps everyone. Think about it. It's a weird well, way to think. Like, I, I, I'm not a Patriots fan. That's the thing. People know that too. But I, I just found the whole thing stupid. Like, I know people oh, yeah, are, are anti being, you know, getting on me for the, the take in the chat. That's fine. That if you think it was like a big rules violation, that's oh, fine. Get and look, out I mean, of here. I'm not saying I'm not saying he shouldn't have been penalized or something, but like. I'm just I'm just looking at it as an outsider, somebody who watched football. The fact that dominated the football news for two years, it's so, so ridiculous. Yeah. Like do an investigation. Okay. He probably deflated the footballs. More likely Find than him, not, the greatest. Send him for a game and like move on. Don't do this whole like report phone. Just if it's obvious, find him and you know, the team can just take it or they can appeal. Ultimately, you're like the you're the overlords at the NFL, man. Like, just do something and move on. I mean, yeah, man, uh, that was that my was issue. The weirdest news cycle. <laughs> again, I took it personally because obviously I had to read all these reports. My thing always was when the when um, Bounty Gate happened, 
The coach lost a year, Sean Payton, which somehow nobody talks about that anymore, but yeah. besides besides the point. Yeah. Um, Sean Payton out for a year. A year. A full yeah. year. Who was it? Vic Vangio, I think, was their coach. Um, or somebody. I forget exactly. But get suspended for a year. Not one player really. Like, I think there was, like, I feel, maybe Vilma, one of those guys. But, like, it wasn't around the player. It was around the team, right? Where this Brady thing became like it was all Brady organizing, like, and, and, like, you hear every quarterback, and that was the one thing I'll give a lot of respect to Eli during that time. Eli Manning's like, yeah, I, I always make sure my balls are at a certain, like, I like more air in them. Aaron Rodgers says he likes a softer hold. It's like, this isn't illegal. This yeah. is this is foolish. Again, yeah. The dumbest things ever. And by the way, I still love that, like, they trounced the Colts in that game, like, 41-7. to 7. And it was made like, oh, the Patriots cheated. It's oh, that's like, right, yeah. And that, that was the other thing about that. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, um... Like, Brady threw, like, one touchdown pass, and it was all on the legs of LeGarrette Blount. But anyways, if you're bringing up dark times here, even though, again, Super Bowl victories were still there, so. Yeah, exactly. Just wild. Yeah, that was such a stupid area. Oh, since Steve Spagnuolo was their coach. I don't think he was. No, I'm, it was pretty sure it was. I'm pretty sure it was, it was Spagnuolo. Yeah. It was, okay. All right, I'll say, obviously. Thank you, Chief. Or Chef Duke. Breeze. Anyways. So yeah, five minutes to play here. Oh, yeah, we could go on. We'll save this for an, uh, the the draw the doldrums of like a June sim. That's right. <laughs> we'll, we'll move off. I know people don't like to talk about it. <laughs> actually, this this didn't go that way. I actually give credit. The Sims being you honestly, you guys have been incredible today. I'm not just saying that. Like the great talk about the draft, uh, obviously with the Sims going on, we're going all over the place. But everyone's just happy this. that we you know we don't have Coffin in here bleeding the screen <laughs> again. So. Buy stream trash. Belichick's oh, no. oh, 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 that's it's a huge hard. sack coming up big. Yeah, that is a big sack. So field goal range. Yeah, uh, it's still third down, third and eighteen. But like they gotta get, they gotta get at least five yards here, maybe even more. Yeah, because right now this would be what a sixty yarder. So yeah, this is yeah, they're out of field goal range. So they need, yeah, they need about ten yards to be safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Patrick says, Patriots fans are all crybabies. Maybe we are. Just passionate. Oh, it's going to be a hold. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, Oh, and it's intercepted. Because it's intercepted. Wow. So that's going to be a hold on the Saints. Decline. Yeah, decline that. And the the Chargers taking over here, Moose, from the 29-yard line. Chargers. Did I say that? No, I said that. (laughs) <laughs> okay. I never know. My insecurity level went through the roof. Dude, just let it out. You and Buchanan are both the same. Oh my god. I, no, I know I'm bad at I just, I usually know when I do it. That's my point. And you put me and Bukes in the same category again, and we're, then we'll have fight for us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Bukes, as I've already told him, I'm coming after him because I am the undisputed wrestling guy of DraftKings, and I've seen Bukes all over the things I've been Oh, yeah. That's so I'm right. going to, I'm going to get him. I said, you, you enjoy the MLB network. Get you guys on a broadcast, man. Oh yeah, we're uh, the DraftKings sponsor that WWE brands. Oh, it's gonna happen, dude. It's all gonna happen. I will. It will be mine. Oh yes, it will be mine. As Herbert connects here, let's play. So Chargers gonna set up now a third down, big play on a third and four, under four minutes to play here. We're all tied up. Winner moves on to the uh, what do we call it? The fat ferocious. <laughs> I love it. What's your cat's name again? Desmond. Desmond? Yes. I don't want to say that. That's all right. It can be Morris if you want. It can be yours if you want to. <laughs> He's actually sleeping in his bed. So if people, that's a big catch there, by the way, by Hunter Henry keeping the drive alive. For those that know, usually the 6 o'clock the cat poop sim. Obviously, there will not be a 6 o'clock tonight, but that's usually whenever I'm on the sim at 6, my cat, that's like his bathroom time, and he stinks up where I am. <laughs> That sounds amazing. Oh yeah, he's that's that's a word I would use. Three minutes, fifteen seconds, and counting at the forty-four. Fresh set it down. Justin Herbert in the shotgun, three wide. Keenan Allen close to us in the slot. Play action. Technically not a sack. Oh no, it is a sack. He lost the yard on that one. Nut says more Virgil. <laughs> Green. Uh, Kyle, no Brandon Glasheen tonight, my friend. He will be on tomorrow night with LaMarca. I think he's doing the nightcap, so he'll be there for your 10 o'clock. 
You've reached your quota on asking that question. Yep. Don't ask during the next Sims. Reach write it down, Kyle. Quota. Yep. R write it down. Tonight it's Koff and Lamarca. Second and 11 after the sack. Two and a half to play. Herbert, quick drop. Has a man caught. Defense right on top of him to the 48-yard line. So here we go. Hunter Henry with another grab. Second of the drive. Third and seven from their own 48-yard line. It's a major play in this game with just, just over two minutes to play. Herbert in the gun. It's been the same set for the three plays. Puts a man in motion. That's Mike Williams coming across the field. Going across has Williams. Not going to oh, throw it. Scrambles oh, out to the right. Get going. Looking get has the room. Throws no, across no. his body. Yes. Has a receiver. Oh, he got him. Across wow. the body. Across the field. Oh, my God. A, Open gutsy field play. for Justin Herbert to gallop to the first down. But no, folks. Not when you have a cannon on your arm like Justin Herbert. He's going to throw it 40 yards across his body. That's insane. Get Shout started. out to... Wow, that I thought he was going to run for it. Had the yardage, but oh, for sure he had the yardage. <laughs> throws across, has a man. There's Eckler up the middle. Shout out to B Don's mom. Says it's my born on date. Send a shout out to my to Linda, my mom's. All right, there it my is. Mom. My mammy. Shout out to everyone's moms. All right, <laughs> wouldn't be here without him. Here is the second and four. Letting the clock tick down. Saints not calling the timeout. Surprisingly. 130 to play. Another handoff to Eckler from the gun. Oh, battling his way to get close to the first. There's the first time out called. I believe that was the Saints. It was, so. Minute 26, two timeouts. Starting two, though, so a, a first down puts it away for sure. Yeah, I mean, look, if they, if they hold them to a field goal here, they get the ball right back. There's enough time for them to tie it up. Need so a Henry T. Yeah. Is is yeah, big play, third and two right now. Omar Cool, 76 leads the for the two thousand oh, dollars. Big oh, run. This ball game in is, the coffin. Yeah, it, but here we go, Moose. We've seen it. We've talked about it earlier. The game right now is in the hands of the Chargers to win. Take knees. Don't do anything dumb, but we have seen in this game numerous times a handoff could be fumbled. They go for a pass and they get sacked out of field goal range. It would take like 20 yards, but... Get Dan Quinn in the machine here. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> find a way. All right, here's Eckler on the handoff. Protect the ball all the way oh, to the end zone! Uh, Austin well, Eckler changing the game! Yeah, I mean... Did the Saints let him in? Might have. I don't know if the sim works that way, but if they did, it was a smart move because now they got a minute left to tie it up. So, wow. Uh, versus if you just stop the run three times, field goal and it's over. So, probably not the smartest play by the Chargers, but they're up seven. Yeah, they got the lead. The highest owned player tied with Camaro at 93% in this early bird uh, special. 2K to the first place. It was Omar Cool. If he had, unless he was one of the 6% that didn't have him, he's probably still in first place. So the extra point is good. 24-17 after the interception on the last drive by Drew Brees. A long drive capped off from the Chargers with an Austin Eckler touchdown. Mamba Vision says too early. Brees too much time on the clock. Might be. It's true. Don't disagree. Yeah, Mo says they gave the Sims uh the Saints a chance. Mo. Mo. Mo for the rules. Mo. There goes my bracket, says Duke. Eckler, 19.7 points, one rushing touchdown, five reception, 12 receiving yards, and 75 rushing yards. I'll give you a moment, Moose, but just start to consider those uh, players of the games and yes. babysitter billies. But I will do that. It's been an interesting game. It's kind of, I don't know if there's a standout. Yeah, it's been like very even, you know? Hmm couple of turnovers. I guess Michael Thomas is... Oh! Sorry, I thought that was only, that was intercepted. Over. No, so, I know. Yeah. Thomas uh, might be the guy for... It's pretty... I think it's pretty much... Uh, yeah, it's Michael Thomas. 145 yards, seven receptions, and a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, Kimmer, bonus. Eckler's been good, but no one else has really been that good. So. No, no one else in the bonus either, so... No. Good point. Yeah, so it's Michael Thomas. And let's see. Here's Breeze. Second and ten. 
Overthrown again. Two straight bad passes. We saw Brady at the end of the last game, but they had the lead. Yeah. Quite frankly, if the Saints are going to tie this, we're probably going to see something crazy from Michael Thomas because, you know, got that 99 ability still or whatever. So, yeah. Eski now in the number one spot in that early bird. Is it Emil? Emil? Whatever you want to pronounce it. Shotgun snap, third and 10. Need the first down. Need, Need to get to the 35. Has a it. man. It's Thomas. There it is. So Mentioned it. Alive. He's still alive. One timeout. Minute left to play. Time is ticking. Need a touchdown. What's the top score in the special? I don't have the score right now, but I can tell you that whatever you need, get there. 181. Thank you, Smash. That's not too late on Thomas. He don't oh. Breeze has thrown three bad passes, one good pass on this drive. Yeah. Helpful they with might, the clock, I guess. They might almost be, yeah, that's what I was going to say. They might almost be helped by the fact that he missed them, though, so. Let's see. So, again, we're monitoring that early bird classic. You're probably going to need somebody off the radar to score for your lineup. Let's get that dub. Here's Breeze with all the time. Connects. Uh, Jared Cook. No, that is Emmanuel Sanders. There's a guy that could be a bust, or uh, 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 at least a tournament buster here. 27, 26. They're going to have to call that timeout, I think, here, Moose. Oh, no, they get it. So 20 seconds at the 46. Breeze takes the gun. Looking, searching. Oh, oh no. Oh. Losing a yard. Yeah, now they got to burn the timeout. Now they got to go end zone. So we're going to get one Hail Mary. Maybe, maybe time for two Hail Mary attempts, but... Breeze just needs pretty, pretty terrible drive here, to be honest. Breeze just needs two yards to, I think, because he lost a yard there, so he needs like two yards. Well, technically, they gave it back, so he's one yard away from the bonus. Unless they do one of those bad AI calls and throw short. This could be it. Breeze in the shotgun. Four wide. Camara to his right. He's in the zone. Staying into block. Throws it to the end zone. Ball bounces. <laughs> oh, wow. By the way that clock went, it was six seconds for the play, so they still could get two more shots here. I was right down there. I was right down there on the goal line, so still alive. The one bounce goes the one way. It could be all tied up. Smash that like. We got it down to the wire. The sweat is on. Did you wear deodorant today? Take a sniff check. Here's Breeze again. Camara to his left. Four wide. Staying into block. Throws it. It's it's caught. It was caught at the three, and that's going to be your ball game. I don't know who got it. That puts Breeze in the bonus, but Michael Thomas. Wow, what a finish. Michael Thomas catch up? No, but either way, I don't know. I just want to say his name. I thought it was him, but I couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think it was Traquan, but uh, I'm not actually sure. So It doesn't matter. If I say a name, it isn't going to be right anyway. So <laughs> I'm watching on YouTube, see if I can get the, the replay here. Oh, no, it was knocked down. It wasn't caught. That was not no, caught. it said it thought it said three yard line on the play. That was not caught. Not There's caught. No that was caught. I don't know. Breeze got the yards. Did he? Yeah, 359. Catch was made by I ooh, oh no, it was Jared Cook, right? I believe so. So, anyways. Oh, maybe I, no, you know what? Okay. You're two I'm plays sorry. behind. I was watching the play before that. You're good, dude. Don't you worry about it. Okay. <laughs> by the way, just quickly, Emil. Hes Heskey, I'm going to go with Heskey, has won the early bird special. So big shout out right there. You're bringing home 2K, but don't be jealous. A lot of prizes also in that pool. Tonight, the AK. So pending stats. Thank you, Jordan. Cover. <laughs> um, so those numbers aren't official, but we will get the official numbers. And tonight, Cough and Lamarck are going to take over the rest of the way. We will have an AK, two grand to the top for your late uh, classic. So please do enter. Um, so we now, you said, uh, we bestowed the Moose Magnificent Player of the Game to Michael Thomas, who will be your babysitter, Billy, not my kid. Oh, right. Yeah. Let's uh, let's give it to, I had Traquan Smith lined up for this. Yeah, well, let's give it to be. Mike Williams, actually. Two, two catches, 28, uh, 4.8. Just not a good game. Yeah, Mike not, 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 not his day. But no. Moose, you were fantastic today. Thank you, pal. And, and, and to prove how good you are, everyone should go over at the Fantasy Grind. Give the man a follow. Hilarious, informational, and handsome. Come on. What else?
triple threat right there. Triple um, threat. He, he also puts away things in the cupboards, so that's four. How can we make you a five-tool player? Uh, uh, what do you, How are you with technology? No. Mm-mm. All right, he's a four-tool player. So, uh, <laughs> But go follow him at the Fantasy Grind. Uh, check out everything he does all around DraftKings and elsewhere. Again, at the Fantasy Grind. That's Jeff Ulrich. I am at Jason D. Rossi on Twitter. You can check out my podcast, The Pop Culture Pile Driver, which I do with yes. Babysitter Billy. Uh, big shout-out to Jordan. Awesome job today. He's been was maintenancing all the stats. Andrew, for keeping this boat afloat. My man, you were incredible as well. P. Fry, dude, awesome job on ops. Everybody, you, DK SimFam. We're going to take a little hiatus here on the Dream Stream, but we plenty of content to come. The next game, Washington at Titans. And then you have Dolphins at Seahawks. Koff and LaMarca will have you the rest of the way. You guys have been magnificent. We'll catch you back here soon. Me and Moose will be back probably Tuesday or so because we're out for the tournament. So yep. thank you guys very much. Have a safe rest of your evening. Drink tons of water. Stay positive and say nice things about your neighbors. We'll see you next time.
What's up, Dream Streamers? Happy to have you back here with us in what has been uh, kind of a, a weird and different day on a Saturday here as we march on in our bracket tournament challenge, a little April madness. Of course, Monday night, the bracket final, but we have got a couple more teams to uh, move right along here in the tourney tonight, and it begins here in prime time with a couple teams that honestly I wouldn't have expected to be here at that point, and that is the Tennessee Titans and Washington football team. I'm Adam Kaufman. This guy, more importantly, is Matt Lamarca, and we've got you for the next couple of Sims to round out your dream stream day. How are you, buddy? I'm great, man. I mean, what could be better? I've got a day with two Met games, with okay. two Sims, and I get to work with the great Adam Kaufman. I'm going to blush. I am. I love it. I'm here for it. I can't wait to do it. What are you looking for in this one? We'll uh, reveal our lineups and then get to who knows what else over the course of the next few hours. I mean, the big question is how did the Washington football team get here? <laughs> right. You know, like the Titans, you can, you can see, right? Like they were, a, they've been a good team the last two years. Um, Washington, it's like, especially Madden, Washington, they have, they're just not a very talented team. So uh, I'm curious how they stop Derrick Henry. I'm curious what they do offensively to move the ball. Um, I, I think the Titans walk tonight. That's my prediction. Walk. All right. So that in mind, Derrick Henry is your captain. I mean, he's going to be a popular play. He's going to be very chalky. We know that. But is that where you're investing a, a huge chunk of your financial sum here? That's correct. Okay. I get it. I get it. Makes a lot of sense to me. Smash Lana here in the chat. My nerves right now. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's bracket <laughs> life, baby, as uh, producer Drew says. That right there is bracket life. So uh, lineups are locking here. In fact, they've just locked. So why don't you give me your complete lineup? Tell me what we got going on. So I went full Tennessee Titans stack. Okay. Eric Henry at captain. Titans defense. A.J. Brown. Adam Humphreys and Ryan Tannehill. My only member of Washington is the sprinkler. <laughs> you got to you got to get the sprinkler in there. So uh I do uh do I have him? No. So I had the sprinkler in and then uh much like with NBA lineups, you know just sitting there tweaking along before lock, I took him out and I went with uh went with none other than Steven Sims Jr. It's a sim. How do you not have a guy named Sims? So Fair. I have him involved. Fair point. There, yeah, I mean, you just, you gotta, it feels like karma. It's like, it's like you gotta play, you know, DraftKings Metcalf when the Seahawks are involved. You just, you, it makes sense. You gotta do it. So I have got uh, Henry in the captain spot, McKissick, my uh, my guy, my new favorite Patriot, John U. Smith, Sims, Dontrell Inman, Adam Humphreys. And uh, obviously those last couple are pseudo punt plays. Uh, I expect they'll be reasonably popular. Uh, you know, they're not full on. It's not like I'm, I'm, playing blasting game or something like that but i'll uh let's see what do, what do we have here ownership inman kind of a punt play he's in about 22 percent of lineups in our uh, prime time the howard washington tennessee still playing free roll with uh, 146 entries thank you all for being here humphreys though is pretty popular he is owned in nearly half of lineups so do the humpty hump you know stop what you're doing because i'm about to ruin the lineups and the outcomes that you're used to. <laughs> nice. That's Thanks. not bad. LaMarca Kaufman, producer Drew, Daniel, our technical director, Cobra K, Tate, and Game Ops all here, and you guys are trickling in as well. Uh, thank you for being here. Robbie says, uh, Adam, the machine guns, cough buster, the regulator. Do the regulators intro, Adam. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a while. Maybe we will break that out. Maybe we will break that out, especially with LaMarca here, who uh, is, is all about all about that base right there uh little no travel your celtics screwed me up cough i had to change my entire lineup with like a minute to go before lock because of jalen brown well jordan i mean in fairness you gotta jordan you gotta get your news like quicker. hour ago yeah you gotta get your news a little quicker yeah <laughs> <I> mean, <it's, laughs> you know you stay you gotta stay on top of the stuff my man must be kaufman matt you're both very intelligent could you tell me what a cow sausages uh lying tom carroll said that he purchased an eighth of cow and made sausage i mean this is we we are getting into it early man i uh i have never heard of a cow sausage but i would imagine you take the sausage casing and you fill it with hamburger material you know that seems like a cow sausage 
And Drew says, right, really like Drew says, it's be beef sausage. Beef sausage. It's not like you call a sausage sausage a pig sausage. You know what's interesting though, and I mean, I'm I'm obviously not a foodie. We all know that, but it is interesting how one can, uh, as Haskins completes that pass, good for a first out to the 38, 13 yard pickup right there. How we can just like even something like a sausage. There are just so many different like I'm regular sausage, not for me. Chinese sausage links all day. Both have sausage in the title, and yet I feel very strongly about one versus the other. <laughs> I, uh... I'm going to tell you. I li- you know, I-, I like a nice hot sausage. Nice Italian sausage. Link. Sure. I just wanted to let that breathe a little bit. We are scoreless here. Almost a minute gone by. Opening quarter. First and 10 from the 44. The, uh, 830 though that'll be fun what channel that, that by the way brings me back to the ballpark that's like my go to at at city field you get a nice sausage and peppers hero yeah and you are just in business I've talked about this before way back when at uh, that so people in this area I mean really it's it's renowned across the country for uh, it, it is something of a landmark, the Kowloon Chinese Restaurant. It, it is an institution uh, in, in this area, but I, I imagine it is well-known elsewhere as well. They used to, way back in the day, and this is going back a solid 20 years, they had a Chinese food stand right behind home plate. It was like a little, like a little cart. It wasn't even, you know, like you you go and you walk around a ballpark and you've got all the different vendors where you just get in line and there's you know pretzels and popcorn and pizza and chicken fingers and french fries and all the ice cream and a little helmet and all all the stuff that you're used to seeing at all these different stands no this was like a cart a little push cart where they had chinese food right behind home plate and oh god like you know you don't think of chinese food at a baseball game until you've done it and it's hard to go back it's just that good like buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks Fenway Frank nope how about some uh how about some pork fried rice in my uh in my, in my green monster seats interesting very interesting yeah, yeah, that's that that's good at a ballpark maybe that's maybe I'm that's... not sure how I feel about the you know like the food revolution at the ballparks now no you know well, it's like you go and it's like oh do I want to get the gourmet chicken uh, sandwich with, you know, all these different things? And it's like every every rest like restaurants there and stuff like just go get me. I just want to go I'll get my hot dog or sausage and peppers and get back to my seat, make a mess. It's the best part of the game. I don't want to go spend thirty seven dollars for a gourmet cheeseburger. So just to let the people know, I know you're watching along, but uh, for anyone that is listening, it was a wildly missed field goal on the part of Washington. And so it's Tennessee ball midfield about two yeah, minutes. That, that field goal came up about 15 yards short. It looked not like. remotely close. Just not even close. It was a real good job, good effort, kid kind of moment. That ball's completed, though, inside the 40. Gets in 34, Tannehill. One for one, a big gain. Out to my guy, John U. Smith. Jonathan, Chinese food at a baseball game. Classic cough. Uh, the guy who's asking about the UFC stuff, you're in the wrong spot. I, Me and Kaufman and nope. the producers here have no say in that matter at all, and we do not know the answer. Is Tim Finnegan available somewhere? Can we get Tim Finnegan on the line? Get some insights. Hit up DK Support on Twitter. Uh, that's your best bet. Or send him an email, something like that. But we're, we're not going to be able to answer that question for you. Not very smart when it uh, comes to many things, including that. Lamarca and I do have an NBA contest going tonight. It's good to see the last minute NBA cough stinks at, uh, at basketball now. Free roll, well, not free roll, dollar contest uh, filled up. Obviously, it, it needed to fill because it, you know, had, uh, had, had some monetary gain attached to it. I have just been, you know this, you've played me a little bit during the week, not nearly as often as you should have because I have been an ATM <laughs> this week. I have just been, you know, 
you get five dollars you get five dollars and going all oprah everybody gets five dollars it's been it's been a real scene sean preston big saxy soft pretzel with mustard um drew says the pretzel at the park sucks too what do you have against uh you know i'm i think i'm kind of with drew here whenever i get a, a pretzel at a stadium it's always like a little soggy which i'm not a huge fan of the best is you get one at at while you're walking out to your car there's usually a guy at city field who's selling pretzels that they cook like on the grill that's where you get your pretzel those guys that are out there like the i mean around here they're the vendor is sausage kings but the guy like where you get your your steak subs and all the different kinds of subs that you can get they just got the, the grill in the cart kind of thing yeah yeah Into get one on the way to the car just to hold you over yeah absolutely <laughs> you know sometimes it's a walk yeah, it's going to take me about five minutes to get there. I'm going to crush this steak sub. Touchdown, Tennessee. Capitan Derrick Henry. It's very popular here today, as one would expect. And the Titans on the board halfway through this opening quarter. Derrick Henry. You can put it on the ball. We used to do that one. That was the White Sox guy. Okay. Yes. He is uh, owned about 80% of lineups, shockingly. Maybe it was the salary. Shockingly, only 20% in the captain spot, whereas J.D. McKissick at about 25. Interesting. He's yeah. just, maybe it was just too expensive to fit in for a lot of people. I guess so. Hey, you see my guy Jacob DeGrom today? No, actually. It, how did he do considering we've been waiting like three weeks for him to pitch with these postponements? So he had a chance at history. Okay. I don't know if you know this. Record for the most consecutive strikeouts is 10 by Tom Seaver, another Met legend. Fitting. So DeGrom struck out the side in the second, the third, and the fourth inning. So he had nine in a row heading into the fifth. But the guy put the ball in play, and the yep. Mets made an error, and naturally he gave up three runs in that inning. Uh, so it was lining up like a classic Jacob DeGrom Mets start where he was going to pitch brilliantly and lose. But the Mets actually rallied back and won the game 4-3, so Jacob DeGrom picks up his first win of the season. Man, well, I'm glad he got that for you. I'm just glad that your Mets won. I know that each and every one of these things is important. For sure. I mean, I feel bad for DeGrom. Yeah, the I guy, mean, guy, the guy the guy's got like a off. career 2.8 ERA, maybe even lower at this point. Yeah. And like he's got years. like 75 career wins. <laughs> it's unbelievable. He's going to be, he might be the first pitcher to make the Hall of Fame with like 100 wins. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, as, as Drew says, his whole career is like the Felix Hernandez Cy Young season. <laughs> I mean, basically. Yeah, I remember that from the last couple of years. Just that, like, any day that he pitched, and he'd give up no runs, one run. It was like that was the that was the registered day that they couldn't score. <laughs> like, nope, just uh, you know, maybe we'll get one later, you know, when the bullpen's in. But uh, no, so long as you're in there, Jake, nothing for you today. I think I saw. I'm gonna get these numbers slightly wrong, but just know that I'm in the ballpark. He's had something like one run or fewer allowed in like 60 percent of his past uh of his starts over like the past two or three seasons hmm. and the mets are eight games under 500 in those outings how is that even possible that's nuts <laughs> anywho hachimura playing pretty well to a hot start by the way hachimura He's not in my lineup but i just wanted to tell the people uh, my team is doing great red sox won again today what are they 10 out of 11, I think, at this yes, point. Sir. And really, it, you know, very close to being 11 in a row. You know, that, that game. They when is the first column coming that's going to be like, you know what? Maybe this Mookie Betts trade wasn't so bad. Who's going to write that column and when can I expect it? I mean, I, I, I got to think that. Well, I got to think that column's not. Well, you know, there are a lot of hot takeout artists out there. So I won't say the column's not coming. Won't come from anybody reputable. <laughs> but uh, I'll say this much. 
obviously, like, there's no defending that trade. Mookie Betts should have been a Red Sox for life. So I want to preface with that. Alex Verdugo has been better than I expected him to be. It actually looks Fantastic like, start. Like, like where, you know, whereas they made the trade, you know, and at that time it was like, are you kidding me? For a wide range of reasons, but including which were for that, it looks like they got a kid that can play. For sure. So I'll at least give them that. And, you know, maybe Franchi Cordero, and obviously he was in the, you know, a separate deal. He was in the Benintendi trade. Maybe he can play. We'll find out. You know, J.D. Martinez has had a resurgent year. The offense in general has been excellent. And and I do believe this is what the offense is. I think this is what they're going to be throughout the entire year, so long as, health, you know, health holds up. The pitching staff, Drew and I were talking about this the other day. The pitching staff... I feel like is at the high water mark right now. Unless, you know, Chris Sale comes back mid-season and just lights out after I Tony forgot Gonzalez. they had him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, who knows? I mean, who knows what to expect from a guy coming off of Tommy John? But uh, I, I do think that it's very fair to question the pitching staff going forward. Often, I'm, uh, I'm leaving you solo for a few seconds. How dare you? When Washington scores a touchdown, you're just going to go? That's What's right. the matter? What's the matter? You're not a fan? First of the day for Sims. Like I said, when there's a guy named Sims in the Sim, you play him in the Sim. That's what you do, folks. Steven Sims Jr., 7-7 seven, seven game after the extra point. Hope you're having fun, folks. Awesome having everybody here with us. We appreciate you. Fight a ways. Sprinkle me down. Nope. Sorry. Didn't happen. Robbie Noble, Bo Sox in first, LOL. How did that happen? Remarkable consistency. That's what we've seen so far. Let's go, like Koff said. Says uh, Tiger. All right, I have returned. Hey, there he is. But are you wearing your best LaMarcus? Nope. Just regular sweatpants today. Okay, all right. I've got, uh, I've got, I think what the kids call joggers on. Ah, okay. Joggers. I think it's a soft J. This, yeah, it's a, it's a new fad. Jogging or jogging. It sounds wild. <laughs> that escalated quickly. Yeah, as Drew says, the uh, the Yaromir joggers. You know what's great? Uh, you'll you'll appreciate this, Drew, just because you made that joke. My two year old. Anytime he, he like he'll get up from a nap, he'll go to the refrigerator and he'll say, "I want yogurt." Now he, he's yogurt, obviously, but he'll always, "I want yogurt." And I just I I sort of chuckle every single time. It's like, yeah, let me get you a Yarmir yogurt out of the fridge. Perfect. Seven all through one quarter. Head zone dance with the hard hitting analysis. What do we got? Hachimura's NBA equivalent to NFL's Minshew. They both sound like sneezes. <laughs> Min Hachimura. <laughs> Min I see it. It's not uh, bad. Well done, Ed, Ed Zone Dance. I like that. Oh, God. 91 passing for Haskins so far. Henry, 19. Same for McKissick, except Henry's got the touchdown. And uh, we'll look at the receiving numbers as well, but uh, nothing too wild. Other than Sims, 3 for 48 with the score. 3 for 24 for McLaurin, so he's pacing in the direction of a bonus. Got 18 for Smith, 16 for Brown, 13 for Logan Thomas. And uh, those are your larger numbers to this point. Two teams in the majors are worse than the Yanks so far. Yeah, I realize it's April 17th, but still. It's not been a good start for New York's other squad. That's why I'm sure you don't mind. What a disgrace. What a disgrace. I hate it. Um, oh, so show, show us the Yagers. All right, let me show you real quick. All right. These are the Yagers. Huh? Look. Nike, Got the elastic on the bottom? Nike branded Yagers. Oh, no free endorsements, Cole. Nope, no, I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm just looking for a personal Nike sponsorship. I don't care if they come anywhere near the Dream Stream. I want them <laughs> to represent me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Drew says hashtag not an ad. Right. I, I think we need to keep in, in perspective that the Yankees are still the favorites to win the American League. They were three games under 500, and some of these entitled fans of theirs 
felt that they had the right to throw crap on the field just because their team was three games under 500. If the Mets fans threw stuff on the field every time our team was three games under 500. You guys were three games we, under 500 be throwing a party. We would have no field anymore. <laughs> and yet, you know, it's like, oh, anytime you meet an, a Yankee fan in person, not all of them. I'm, oh, I'm talking about yeah. the, the worst of the bunch here, of course. Yeah. There are a lot of very reasonable rank Yankee fans, but the ones that you meet and they're like, oh, we have 27 championships. Like, you know, we're, we're, it's just a little air of superiority. Sure. And then to pull that crap at the same time, joke. So you're not a fan is what you're saying? No. I honestly, when I was a kid, I really hated the Yankees. I mean, I have, fan, I have cooled down on them. Oh, you have? Yeah, because they're not the same team anymore. They don't just buy championships. They actually don't win championships anymore. So it's hard to hate them. But that crap that they pulled the other night was just a, a joke. You assume this is just a little slump, though, and, and then they'll get going, I'm guessing? Yeah, I mean, they they their pitching is a real concern. You know, they were counting on Kluber and, and Tyone to be, like, legitimate top-of-the-rotation guys. And at least in Kluber's case, like, that's not going to happen. But their offense will heat up 100%. What about your Mets? How are those going to hold out? I think the Mets are really good, dude. I do. I don't think it matters because good? the Dodgers are the best baseball team I've ever seen. Like they're what now? 11 and 2 or 11 and 3 something and they haven't even had Cody Bellinger for most of the season. Yeah, something nuts. Da David Price is coming out of the bullpen like and, and oddly happy about it. At sicko. It's uh it's it's really crazy, man. Like, I think that they would need to have many, many things go wrong for them to not make the playoffs, and then they're going to be favored every round in the playoffs. So we'll see what happens. I mean, anything can happen, especially, like, I think a team like the Mets, you know, if you match up and you get three starts against Jacob deGrom, like, could J deGrom shut them down three times? Like, it's very possible. But... I, uh, I just think that the, the Dodgers are just so much better than everybody else at the moment. You know who's good? Tennessee. Ball out to the five. Seven all setting up perfectly for another Derrick Henry touchdown. That was Corey Davis. Uh, we can get back to the baseball and whatever else, and I'll, I'll see what's going on in the chat because I love you all in the chat. You know that. Let me ask you a question, though. Uh, it's just kind of occurred to me as we're about nine minutes from game time that the Celtics and Warriors have themselves a uh, showdown contest in the DK lobby. That's right. Any interest on top of our little classic contest we've got going on tonight? You want us? You want me to build the lineup against you in nine minutes while calling a sim? I mean, I got to do it, too. I All right, let's do it. Lineup. Okay. I, I, again, I'm just seeing that this exists. So, you know, we're, we're on equal footing here. Yes, that's what you let me, say. Let me send, hang on. I got to create the contest to send. It's not like I'm just importing a lineup. Like I haven't been uh -huh. this for an hour and a half. I think you've been working on this all day. And I love that you, well, yeah, I got Jalen Brown in the captain spot. Second and goal from the three. I'm going to send this to you. First, we need a touchdown. Do we have it? We do. It's a score. Jono Smith. New Patriot. New Patriot. Jono Smith. It's a, I'll, just because we're, we're both rushed here, I'll bring it down. How about a little, uh, we'll, we'll do a, a $3. Do a little, Whatever you want, dude. A little, little handsome $3. Drew says his 821 alarm just went off. The table is, uh, or the label is surprise the marker with showdown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Like uh, here's something I just randomly stumbled across. Yeah, I did. I didn't even know they were playing tonight. And wouldn't you know, DK has a showdown for it. So no, really, well, I, you guys probably think I'm screwing them over too, but I, I hey, just got just so you're aware, I just got an alert on my phone that uh, Kelly Oubre is out tonight. So got I it. I wouldn't want you to go and roster him. All right, let's see. 
Let's see. We got seven minutes to work with. We got four minutes left in this quarter. We got a 14 7 Tennessee lead and Dwayne Haskins, Washington football team, getting the ball. Come on, let's get him. Dwayne Haskins, of course, a new check, 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 check. Pittsburgh Steeler backing up Big Ben Roethlisberger. Very exciting stuff. All right, well, you're in bad shape because I have already built my team. I haven't even, I, I have not even started. What do I have? Seven minutes, something like that? Second and nine from the 27 on the way. Hmm. And the ball is completed. Good for a first. Do what you do. Not easy. I think the rule should be whoever wins this contest has to go buy Dogecoin with it. <laughs> We're going to buy the peak, baby. Dogecoin. I woke up the other day. Yeah. Saw that it was at like 35 cents. And nearly died. <laughs> I bought four figures worth of it. I won't say exactly how much, but <laughs> I bought four figures of it at less than a cent. And I sold it at seven. Because I was like, this is great. I'm getting out of here with a 7x on my money. This yeah. is amazing. And then I had to see it went to 35. And I was like... Just this is on your mind, huh? This is the this is the worst day of my life. <laughs> unbelievable. Can you imagine a 35x return on Dogecoin? No, I, I obviously I could not, which is why I sold <laughs> no, it. No, but I mean, like even now, can you imagine? <laughs> even knowing, can you imagine? Yeah, it's uh, it's rough. I have imagined plenty of times. Yeah. Here's what I would do with this. Here's what I would do with that. I would own DraftKings. I would call it to DraftKings. I think you'd still be short. We're We're changing it to DraftKings. Officially. Hello and welcome to LaMarca Kings. (laughs) Branding everywhere. I'm just going to tell you, this is not... Yeah, Drew's got the right idea. His headquarters move. Toys R Us is out of business. We'll get Jeffrey on board. <laughs> Giraffe Kings it is. Giraffe Kings. Uh, so good. Washington's uh, held their own here. They're they're moving the rock. I uh, I expected the Titans to just bury them, but it has not happened. <laughs> Juice says we'll also buy a, an NBA team, the New York Knicks. Second and three from the 39. Minute and a half to go here in the opening half. Haskins. Touchdown to his credit so far. First and ten on the way. McLaurin with that grab, his second, trying to even things up before the break. Can they do it? Some people there saying, you fool for selling at seven. Guys, it's a coin that's based on a meme. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. I thought that this was the, la- the, the you know, like GameStop type of thing where it was right. just everybody was pumping it for no reason at all. But, you don't um, know what I've been through. <laughs> now it's that. Now I think it's kind of, uh, cooled a bit, but it's still like over a quarter. So clearly. If I had hindsight, I would uh, I would not just hold, but I would 
invest every dollar that I owe. I got to get back into the chat, see what's going on. It's been been a little bit. Got uh, got tied up there. What do we? All right. So I, I I just paused it way back when too. So I still have like the Hachimara, you know, Minshew. That's that's how far back I'm living right now. Here we go. And no, incomplete. Ball at the seven. Uh, Captain Blood, how are you liking your NBA lineup? Uh, cough. Are you going to get out of that slump? I hope so, Captain Blood, because like I said, I have been an ATM this week. I have just, I have been hemorrhaging my DK, DK dollars, uh, you know, after a, a solid run, taking people's cash. Not today. Well, hopefully You've got today. the lead on me to start the day. It's very early. I mean, what are the minutes? That's, um, that's like, that's, I've become that guy who gets like excited early and then I look at the minutes. <laughs> you have one additional player playing. Uh, Jeremy Grant's off to a great start for you, buddy. Good. And Russ? Yeah, I mean, Russ is a cancel out because we both have Russ. Right. I'm sure everybody has Russ. Too. I just mean, as you know, I was very close to playing Giannis instead of Russ. Yeah. Watch Giannis still go for like 70. That I mean, good. that would be incredibly impressive to do in 28 minutes. <laughs> uh, Edo. Mr. Herzberg, LaMarcus should be DeGrom's agent like Koff loves Edelman. Listen, if you guys can't find the Hall of Fame case in that career, that's on you at this point. I didn't say it's inevitable. Listen, I, I got a lot of hot takes going right now. I can't begin to tell you my level of excitement about the Celtics signing Jabari Parker. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> like, like, because what you need to, what you need to understand... Is, uh, is sometimes you just need a guy who shoots 40% from the mid range and plays no defense. Plays no defense. Uh, <laughs> Abby says, Cough kind of carries himself and reminds me of the lead actor in Mad Men. If you're talking about John Hamm, we just became best friends. Um, but, no, the thing with Jabari Parker for me is, and I, I quote tweeted one or two of these last night after the signing. I'm the, uh, like, I loved him in college, and I loved him to start his NBA career. And, you know, at the time of the draft, and this was the Marcus Smart draft, if I remember right, you know, I, like, I so desperately wanted the Celtics to get Jabari Parker. That was, like, top of my draft board, please, for the love of all that is holy, get this guy. And so eight <laughs> years later, and look, I'm not going to pretend his NBA career has not been very up and down, and we are in the down right now. But eight years later, the, it's like the prophecy has, has, has come. You know, we are we are here now. It is happening. It's happening. It's like the the Steve Carell office gift. Oh, my God, it's happening. That's me. <laughs> That's me with uh, Jabari Parker being a Celtic now. And so, this is me. The, my office gift reaction is, why are you the way that you are? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's 26 years old. He turned 26 a month ago. He has the knees of a 39-year-old. <laughs> well, he's had his ACL, you know, torn twice. So yeah, it's, it's that's in the knee, it. if I remember correctly. No, I know. I just mean... Oh! Like, I even, love these throws. I just, it's that. not even like he's got, like, this, you know, kind of gimpy, chronic, debilitating situation like Kemba Walker's knee. Like, he's, you know, straight up had the ACL torn twice. Right. This, 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 can, this conversation really makes me sad for you. <laughs> Let's switch over. Let's. Sw I want to hear your Edelman Hall of Fame case. Is it based solely on... <laughs> Drew the, says in all caps, no. Is it based solely on the on the playoff stuff? It's because based, on it's regular based. season numbers alone, he has no shot. It's based heavily on the playoffs. It's yeah, you, you can't make a case out of, you know, it, I mean, I'm getting a little tired of people calling them like pedestrian regular season numbers. That's not the case. Like his numbers in the regular season were not pedestrian. They're not Hall of Fame level. I'm not, you know, delusional. But of course, his regular season numbers are not Hall of Fame numbers. It is his, if he has, it's, it's like Eli Manning in some ways, in the sense that, you know, if Eli Manning is a Hall of Famer, and to me he is, by the way, if Eli Manning is a Hall of Famer, it's because he won two championships against the greatest dynasty the NFL has ever seen. I'm not even certain the two Super Bowl rings alone get him into the Hall of Fame. I think it's the two Super Bowl rings against the Patriots 
that get him into the Hall of Fame and wrecking 19 and 0 and all like it's what what's oh for Eli okay yeah yeah, yeah, for Eli I mean I think it's more the two Super Bowl MVPs even though in my eyes he's Eh. he didn't deserve the first one but Super Bowl MVP for a quarterback is cliche at this point it's honestly like more notable that Julian Edelman has a Super Bowl MVP (laughs) than seriously than it because like that's it's a QB award more often than not and I say I, I say that with full acknowledgement of Tom Brady like Tom Brady wasn't the MVP of Super Bowl 51 it was James White but it went to Tom Brady you know, like this. So I'm, I'm kind of floored that Edelman got it in the first place when they beat the Rams. It's and now another missed kick to end the half. Just gross. All right. Well, the chat doesn't want to hear you talk about Edelman. Which, which is why, and I know that because I've done it enough. So that's why I'm not going <laughs> to do it. I was just wondering if you had some cool, you know, like advanced metrics type. I could give you but, some numbers. But the case is rings, baby. No. No, it's not just rings. It's not just rings. It's it, it, like rings aren't enough. Like there are plenty of three time Super Bowl champs that aren't and shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. It's not it's not a rings thing. He's second all time in yards and catches in the playoffs behind only Jerry Rice, a number that may not get touched ever. Potentially. I mean, we'll see, obviously, if like Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey and the Chiefs just like keep on getting back there. He's <laughs> what second or third all time in, in Super Bowl yards. He is uh, tied for sixth in 100 yard pl- or no tied for first. Pardon me. Tied for first with Michael Irvin with uh, 100 yard games in the playoffs. In his I mean, I hate these stats though. These are all based on the fact that you, you play in a lot of playoff games and so listen, that, that's this, not an indicator of wide receiver talent. Fine. Like if, if we can here, we'll, we'll, let's appease the chat by moving off of Edelman and moving into what you just said, because yeah. this is, because this is a really good to me, asinine discussion to have, but people believe it, which is why it's good to have like okay. Deadspin, I think wrote an article about Edelman the other day saying, and it's, again, it's Deadspin. I know it's Rob Parker, but wrote an article, but like Edelman doesn't belong in the hall of fame because of all the opportunities that he had with Belichick and Brady, basically like carrying him there as if Edelman was just, you know, along for the ride. He was a passenger and didn't make anything happen on his own, which is just absurd to me, but I don't understand the argument across sports, but it, we hear it more often than not in the NFL, the argument against an athlete or a team because of opportunity, like you should be re- rewarded for the fact that you were that good and got there that often. It's like, it's the people who think like Joe Montana's four and in the Super Bowl is better than, you know, Tom Brady's seven and three or whatever he is now. Like it just, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Like you should be appreciated for getting like, since when did a Super Bowl loss become worse than going out in the first no, round? I, I, I have a blemish of a Super Bowl loss hear you I, on that. I completely hear you on that. And that's my, that's my big knock against Eli Manning, you know, like, and again, Eli's getting in the hole. I have, I have yeah. come to that realization. I seed all the fences. It's going to happen. But to me, if you're a Hall of Fame quarterback, you get your team to the playoffs every year. And Eli was not that guy. He just happened to get them there a couple of times and get insanely hot, a la Joe Flacco. Like if Flacco has one more title run, which obviously isn't going to happen, but let's say he takes the Ravens to another Super Bowl. Is Flacco a Hall of Famer? I don't know. It's it's an interesting question. Anyway, I think Tate Tate uh, kind of sums up how a lot of people feel about him. What was that? He, ba- he basically says that Edelman is uh, Tom Brady's plus one to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> now let, and I'm, this isn't even the. Let's remove this from the Hall of Fame discussion, although it's it's part of it. But I'm I'm trying to move away from fixating on that because, as Drew notes. Really, here's the debate: which cough, which cough take is worse, Edelman Hall of Fame or Jabari Parker is going to be impactful for the Celtics, um, which, which is fair. And you're you're all going to have to apologize to me when Jabari Parker goes out and has like 20 points sometime in the next few games, um, and you know a negative plus minus because his defense is atrocious. But the points, you're going to have to apologize for the points. Does Julian Edelman not get rewarded for being one? If not the best, certainly the most important receiver during the Patriots dynasty. 
and two being like you know we all talk about tom brady as we should for being you know his go-to guy like for you don't you, know, you don't for, consider gronk that guy i don't think gronk was and i'd have to look at the numbers to be perfectly honest to see like targets you know receptions all that stuff but uh it was certainly kind of a 1a 1b i think edelman was more of his binky if you will as we always say around here than gronk in part because of the gronk injuries and edelman you know didn't stay completely healthy either but Edelman, I would say, was more dependable than Gronk. He just wasn't, you know, where he gets killed in part of the Hall of Fame discussion is he had 36 regular season touchdowns because Edelman was largely responsible for getting the Patriots downfield. And then, you know, Gronk was the the primary end zone target. So Drew says Jerry Rice played in 10 more playoff games than Edelman. And you're saying that Edelman had more yards than Jerry Rice in the playoffs? No, Edel- no, Edelman is second in both catches and yards in the postseason to Rice all time. Okay. I don't know what the difference is between first and second. I don't know that off the top of my head, I, but 10 games is pretty substantial. I mean, that's that's multi- that's what, like three postseasons of going all the way? Pretty much. Three Patriots postseasons where you start in the, in right. the division. Right. Right. <laughs> Um, all right, we'll we'll cut it off there. I apologize to the chat for getting Kaufman started. I just, you know, this is new information for me. I hadn't heard his take, so I wanted to hear it. And, yeah, uh, and you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll do it off there. I'll, I'll give you the, the full. You know what? I Can I just give you this one stat that I, I just found interesting because I had no idea? Just as All right, a, yeah, let's do it. And then we'll uh, we'll keep going. Andrew says, and it's terrible. You should have known. Um, this was this is a Matthew Berry stat that I heard uh, my guy Adam Rank recite the other day, which I wrote it down because I was just I, I was in disbelief. Um, so Julian Edelman was only a full time because remember he came into the league, you know, basically like, I mean he, he was a converted college quarterback, comes into the league as really a, a kick returner, or punt returner. You know, even spent some time at uh, defensive back very briefly. Obviously, very rarely threw the balls. That Haskins, was with, I'm sorry to cut you off. But oh, just of course, interception. They completely to... off the back foot, just hook down field. Gross. Into triple coverage, and it gets picked up. So, uh, skipping whatever, all, all the crap. Julian Edelman was only a full-time wide receiver in the NFL for six seasons. Six, Okay. And yep. obviously had multiple 1,000-yard seasons, came close another couple of times. I think he had 3,000-yard seasons. This is what I found interesting. During that six-year period of time that he was a full-time wide receiver in the NFL, his seven catches per game, seven catches per game those years, ranked fourth in the NFL. Here we go, here we go. Fourth in the NFL all time? No, 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 no. During that time period, that, that six-year period, his seven catches per game – Ah. ranked fourth in the NFL. All I just, right. I, that's not all that surprising. Well, I'm just saying, like, it's, you know, people look at him, I think, like he was just, like, just a guy, you know, because he wasn't a pro bowler. He wasn't an all-pro guy. He was viewed as not being elite. Again, I don't necessarily think that catches equate to wide receiver talent when, A, you're catching them from a Hall of Fame quarterback, probably the greatest quarterback that ever lived, and, B, we know that the New England offense likes to incorporate those bubble screens. Mm-hmm. So again, not taking away from your argument, and I do want this conversation to end. That's fine. I just I thought it was an interesting step. That is my rebuttal to your to yeah, your. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I just skip all the stuff. Skip all the stuff in the chat. I'm sure the chat doesn't want to talk about it anymore. I hope there's some good Jabari Parker love in the chat, though. There should be. Yeah. All right, we gotta, we gotta. Let's get back two. to what we do best, Kaufman, and that's shenanigans. Ignore, ignore the game while it's on in the background. AJ <laughs> Brown with that uh, catch out to the two, setting up nicely for another Derrick Henry touchdown. We'll see if we get it. So we we've got a buy stream trash out there for hairstyles: mohawk, oh. mullet, or a ducktail. I don't know what a ducktail is. I know, like a rat tail. Is that what a ducktail is? Is that the same thing? I'm looking it up. I'm intrigued. That ball's caught but out of play. Gonna do it oh, again. It's horrendous. 
It is really bad. It still might be the winner out of these. I'll have to pull it up. <laughs> out of these options, though. <laughs> Kilgore says uh, Jerry Rice was the GOAT wide receiver because of Montana. That argument's garbage. I just wanted to, wanted to read that. Yeah. Mm, Fantasy okay. Hawk, uh, Cock, can you approach one debate without semantics? I can't. Ask my wife. <laughs> she doesn't like it either. The duck tail. All right. I'm uh I'm buying the mullet. I'm uh I'm streaming the ducktail and I'm going to trash the mohawk. I mean assuming I never have to personally have one of these, Henry, no! Stop short of the two right back to the line of scrimmage. I would uh I mean, like, what's better than a mullet? So I'd have to buy the mullet. I, yeah. I haven't I haven't pulled up the duct tape. I basically have a I, mullet at the moment. But it's true. I still think I would stream the mohawk even without seeing the duct tape. Rigel wants to know if Bobby Boucher has a chance at the hall. Um, in terms of, like, if we were building a team from scratch and using only fictional football players mm -hmm. bobby boucher clear he's number, your number one, one he's your top draft pick i mean the man had 18 sacks in a game in a game <laughs> what's the record for a season like 23 these days <laughs> Man, you guys were very unhappy in the chat. I'm just scrolling back and looking at what you got. What do you mean, really? We're going for it on fourth and goal. And if Get the there. first don't succeed, touchdown! Henry gets it in. Oh, captain, my captain. Smash captain Ducktails. Like for Derrick Henry. Run it in, big fella. Let's talk about your favorite pizza then. Love pizza. Abby Rizzo. Koff loves Edelman's Netflix doc. His vote for Oscar. <laughs> it was entertaining. It wasn't Netflix. It was Showtime. You know what? I actually watched a Oscar contending movie last night. Oh? Promising Young Woman. I've heard of it. I don't know anything about it. Um, It's dark, that? man. It's dark stuff. Uh, but it's basically like a revenge type story, and uh, it was entertaining. Oh, okay. This is the uh, yeah with uh, with Carrie Mulligan. Carrie Mulligan, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. It looked um, it looked interesting. I mean, did you enjoy it though? I did. Producer Drew also says he enjoyed it. HBO Max. Sustained. It had a lot of like random actors and actresses kind of appear for like just one or two scenes. Okay. I'm always a fan of that. Yeah. And uh, the Carrie Mulligan did a fantastic job. I would imagine she's nominated for Best Actress this year. I would suspect. And Russ is going off, by the way. Russ got 35 fantasy points right now. Reminder, uh, we're having a pre-Oscars show uh, where we're going to have people uh, crushing uh, crushing hard-boiled eggs tomorrow. It's a pre-Oscars show? Yeah, major... Oh, next week. Next week, that is. Major League Eating on the, on the DK Sim channel. There you go. <laughs> Drew nailed it. 21 to 10. About halfway through this third quarter. I also watched something pretty dark earlier today. Rudy, you familiar with it? Rudy? <laughs> yeah, he really, he went through a lot of stuff. But, you know, death of his best friend. Being told Didn't we talk about how overrated that movie is? So, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> oh, boy, here we go. I, I, I feel that way. I did, it, Rudy is an overrated movie. No question about it. But I watched it today with the kids for the first time that I saw it in easily 20 years. 
easily 20 years. And I think it gets slandered, you know, kind of like Nickelback, it gets slandered to an unnecessary degree. I don't agree with that. I think people love Root. That's what, no, no, or, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, 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 I worded that very poorly. It is praised to an un- unnecessary degree. Like Nickelback gets slandered to an unnecessary degree. Rudy gets praised to an, like, it's like the Sandlot. Like these movies are not nearly as good as they are regarded for being, but if you block out how overrated they are and you just watch it, it actually was better than I remembered it being. I think I had convinced myself over time that it was, you know, like, oh, it's so overrated, so overrated. So like to where I like can convince myself it sucks and it doesn't, it's, it's an enjoyable movie. It, you know, for, I, I gotta tell you this. Did you you have a tear or two? Uh, I, I, I got a little emotional at the end. Yeah. When he runs out on the field with a spoiler alert with the, uh, with the, you know, his, his parents and brothers and friends and every, you know, the, even the jerk coach smiling and, and, uh, uh, you know, the, the rock there, uh, you know, the guy from the, the old sitcom rock, whatever his name is in real life, but off there on the, uh, on the sidelines, taking in a live game for the first time there. Yeah. There's some emotion behind that. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, more than that, as I'm sitting there, like, cuddled up with my eight-year-old and six-year-old watching this movie, PG meant something different in 1993, my friend. So some of the language in this movie, I was not prepared for. And I just kept looking down at my kids like, is that going to register? Like, or or, or are we just going to breeze past that? Are they going to ask me what this means? Hopefully we're okay. Like, they're, they're, PG, PG this, go watch that movie. And Daniel says it's a hard PG. Yeah, exactly. Uh, go watch that movie and tell me if you feel like that's a PG film. All right. No doubt. Drew says Nickelback gets slandered properly. Creed, on the other hand. With arms wide open. Yeah, there's some cliche Creed slander as well. It's like Dane Cook. Same no. thing. The, the, the ultimate example here is Guy Fieri. He does was, not deserve that slander. This is your guy? Love the guy. <laughs> well, Coldplay. Eh. Eh. Coldplay <laughs> doesn't do a lot for me. I like clocks a lot, though. That's probably the least excited I've ever been for a halftime show. Field of Dreams is trash. Ban this person. I've honestly never seen it. I don't know how that's possible. I mean, I guess I, I I've mean, just I, never I, felt I mean, the urge I guess to watch. Never watch Soprano, so I, I guess I should get it. But still, you feel like my my father did something wrong by not forcing me to watch that movie. No, I'm I'm questioning whether you're doing something wrong as an adult who is just able to watch the movie. I feel like that's a child's movie. Oh, it's not remotely a child's movie. Drew, you're a baseball fan. Field of, would you describe Field of Dreams as a child's movie? Come on, Drew. Do the right thing. Isn't that a movie? 21 to 10. <laughs> very adult a, movie. It's a very well, adult movie. Well it's, well, it's not super adult. There's no, there's, there's no like, you know, nudity. Well, then I'm out. It's a very ad- Field of Dreams adult film. <laughs> If you build it, they will come. Oh, oh stop it. Oh. Stop it. That's, that's on you. No, that's on you. You said it. It's the tagline for the movie. It's on the poster. <laughs> you knew what you were doing. You stopped that. 21 to 10. Yeah, AD Poker. How do you even know if it's a child movie if you've never seen it? That's just my interpretation that I had. Drew says main themes, censorship, mortgage payments, marital strife, and ghosts. <laughs> like he said, adult movie. All right, that's pretty adult. Oh, we got a big go, right, big go, lane here. Go, 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 gone. Touchdown. He gone. 66 yards, J.D. McKissick. Looks like 25% of you guys are feeling pretty happy, Capitan. (laughs) 
<laughs> Joel, Tom Hanks is Julian Edelman. What? How? Well, how? In this. what regard? Agent, I think he's kidding. <laughs> all, all American man. Angels in the outfield is better than Field of Dreams. It's so no. I it's, will say it's not, but you you could argue it's a more enjoyable watch. But it's certainly <laughs> not a better movie. I will say that I watched his retirement speech, and I was like, oh, like this is this is nice. Oh, the video. And then, and then he got beams up, beamed them up into a spaceship at the end. Well, you didn't think Edelman was wasn't going to go a little Edelman at the end of it. He's all about the social media shtick. All right. <laughs> it just seemed like a weird time for it. There's Jadavian Clowney with a big sack. Everybody, smash that like button. We're a couple away from 150. I mean, it's really, uh, it's not a lot to ask here on a Friday, Saturday night, Saturday night, Saturday night, we're all together. Appreciate you. <laughs> Drew says, yeah, it was, it, it was nice. Then the end slate pops up and I see there are seven seconds left in the video. And I said, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, uh, I stopped it too when I saw that. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, it's over. Because I, I was watching it with the kids. They wanted to see the speech. And I went, wait a minute. There's got to be something else. That, that wouldn't just, like, fade to black for seven seconds. And then, yeah. Beam me up. Put that video in the Hall of Fame. AD Poker, Mr. 3000 is the best child's baseball film. If I may, on Mr. 3000, by the way. Underrated film. It is. Like it, it gets considered. It, it's it's literally if you Google around at like you know ranking sports movies, not even just baseball, sports. It's considered like the worst sports movie of all time, all time ever. It's a fun movie. I'll tell you right now that movie is better than Hoosiers. Hoosiers, we almost watched today before we settled on Rudy. Talk about a, a oh, film be- that is just incredibly overrated. Hoosiers is just, as Drew says, it's a drag. It's a snoozer. It's it's not a good film. I will say that the premise of Mr. 3000 is incredibly stupid. <laughs> but that, moment, that movie's got its moments. It's just fun. It's just fun. Plus, Brian White, who is the, uh, I don't know his name in the movie, but he's, he's the actor who plays the like the the kid that he mentors that he like you know the the cocky kid that he gets him to actually be a t-rex penabaker yeah um he's from the boston area and follows me on twitter and often quote tweets my like things about the patriots or red sox or celtics or whatever and it just cracks me up because i've dm'd him like four times asking him to come on my podcast and he's never responded to that but he's <laughs> but he's always quote tweeting <laughs> stuff about whatever like come on man is uh is on, Mr. Brian. Baseball another one of these movies that is considered Mr. Uh, Baseball terrible? Well, I'm never going to say anything bad about Tom Selleck. First, I love the, I, I I love's a strong word. I enjoy Mr. Baseball as well. It's fun. It's again, it's a fun movie. <laughs> like if I were, you know, one of these days, one of these Sims, hell, maybe Madden After Dark. If we if it gets crazy, maybe we should just sit and and actually like, you know, it's and there's no consensus. It's it's opinion. Everybody's got one, but we should rank just all the the notable baseball movies we'll skip over the ones that people have never heard of or you know ed with matt leblanc or something but like you know ones that are more mainstream we all put together my list in between the sims like one through what you're going to give me a top 10 top 20 i'm going to come up with as many as i can i don't know how many baseball movies that will be i'll I'll, (laughs) drew why would we skip over ed (laughs) i'll give because it's a horse's name i will give you a uh what at you know after the sim we'll hang on for a second and and we will come up with all the ones that we can come up with and then we will rank them I okay think good idea jabari parker's in for the celtics by the way i just wanted to right you know right right into the fray 21 16 tennessee just want you guys to know I love, by the way, that AD Poker's here. I haven't seen you in a while, pal, and I missed you. I missed you. It's good to have you back. How's our showdown going? 
Uh, probably not good. I put Tristan Thompson in the captain spot. He's got one Did point. You really? Yeah. And then I just put in all the good players around him. All right, let's find out. Um... No, you're beating me right now. Which with, with Tristan Thompson in the captain spot? Because you, uh, I, you have Draymond and Bazemore, and I do not have them. Mm. We both have Smart. We both have Curry. We both have Tatum, but Tatum is my captain. Gotcha. I do have Thompson, but in the flex. You're up by about seven points. All right. Should Jabari Parker. Is he even eligible? Uh, buy stream trash from Viper. Kevin Costner, baseball player, cowboy, or golfer? I mean, I'm going to buy a baseball player all day. I'm buying golfer. I'm going to trash golfer. I, Tin Cup sucks. You suck. <laughs> Drew loves Tin Cup. That is one of my favorite. That was one of my favorite sports movies of all time. Really? Oh, yeah. I feel now I feel like I need to rewatch it. Like I missed something. Granted, it was a long, long time ago. I actually wrote an article about Tin Cup. That's funny. I did that with For Love of the Game. It was my college application essay. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm sure if you Google, I, I, it was about like, uh, you know what? I probably shouldn't talk about it, but it's out there. Google Matt Lamarck a Tin Cup and it might come up. <laughs> I'm going to Google it right now. Are you kidding me? Matt LaMarca. Is it going to be a picture of your face on a tin cup? Matt LaMarca tin cup. Is it? Sh okay. From from Action Network. Yes, correct. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm 100% going to read this article. I don't know if it'll happen in between Sims, but it will happen in life, and I'm going to read it, and I look forward to it. Uh, Winston says, Cough, you should have your own show. We can watch a movie with you, and you can comment on the movie like the uh, old Muppets that sit in the balcony. I can't tell you how much fun that would be. <laughs> that field goal is good, by the way. Tennessee, extending its advantage. Eight-point lead now. Oh, Robbie Noble had asked... Uh, I asked this way. I gotta find it. I gotta find it. I gotta find it. What movie is he is is Kevin Costner a cowboy in? I mean, I'm sure it's multiple, but I can't. I think mean, of yeah, one. several. He's like always a cowboy. Movie, TV shows, movies. So, and I swear, in in another world, he. Oh right, like yellow, the one that he's yeah. on now, Yellowstone, right. which I've never watched. I haven't either, but Ulrich says it's very good. I mean, a lot of everybody says it's good. So I, I will I, take, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll trash that though, because I've never seen it. I'm, I'm streaming the baseball player. Man, as soon as you count Washington out, they just, they just mm -hmm. hang around, man. They're, uh, they're on the move again. Potentially could tie this game. Hater, hater. My college application essay was also on a sports film of sort. A uh, little film called, yeah, no. Mm -mm. It's like Hoosiers. <laughs> Let's just go with that. Nope. Tater, hater. Not going to do it. I'm not glad. You almost got me, though. Third and three. <laughs> Here, Robbie Noble, this is for you, buddy. Regulators. We regulate any stealing of his property. We damn good, too. But you can't be any geek off the street. Gotta be handy with steel, if you know what I mean. Earn the keep. Regulators! What in the hell? Mount up. <laughs> <laughs> I give that to Robbie once every, like, six months. <laughs> Even Tater Haters going, Cough, don't read that. That wasn't for you to read. <laughs> I mean, in fairness, guys, everything in the chat is available to be read. That's why it's in the chat. 
Washington will have to punt this one. But it's a beauty. But it's a beauty. Kick save and a beauty. Coming up next, Madden After Dark an hour from now, it is the two of us back. Seahawks Dolphins after their upset of the Chiefs. Of course, is it really an upset when we always mock the Chiefs in Simland? That's your question. I picked them to win it all. And now I am saying my uh, my champ is still alive. I picked the Saints. My runner up is uh, is out. That was the Texans. Mm. 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 Oh, Saints lost today. Oh, well, I take it back. I'm out. <laughs> Drew says, <laughs> nope, Saints lost uh, to the Chargers. Okay, well. I'm out. Believe me then. <laughs> Classic Seinfeld episode. Uh, I'm out. I'm out. So good. Thank you for that cough, says Jared. You're welcome. Robbie, got you, baby. <laughs> Jeffrey, I'll kick it off, cough. It was a clear black night. A clear white moon. I think, uh, I think all of you guys should take it upon yourselves now to just alternate lyrics to regulator. Do, do, do you think... Uh, you think you guys could go through the whole song in the chat? I, I don't even know what the heck song you're talking about. You don't know regulars? Warren G? No. Nate Dogg? That, there's no way. There's literally no way you don't know that song. I might. I'm, I'm, I'm going to send it to you right now. I don't even care. I'm if looking you, at the lyrics. I, I, don't, I don't even care if you walk away and go listen to it. There's just there's, there's no way you don't know this song. <laughs> Drew, yeah, you need to know this song. There's there's no way you don't. Third and ten. Funny, I'm reading I'm reading them in my head. Like Nate Dog, the lyrics right now, yeah. and yeah. Alright. I think coming I, back to you now. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan, I guarantee you know that song by heart, LaMarca. Abby says, I can't believe I'm taking cops' wealth in NBA. Is that how the lineup's going right now? I haven't looked in a little bit. Beat is catchy. Even LaMarca will dig it. What does that mean? You know. I have wonderful taste in music. You know. Aiden asking if there's another game tonight. Sure is. Madden After Dark, an hour from now, a little less than that. The two of us right back, potentially acknowledging the game more than we have during this last <laughs> hour. But probably not. Don't but get your hopes up. Yeah, I mean, we are going to be ranking baseball movies, so the odds are heavily against it. What should I watch tonight, guys? Hey, can I uh, can I plug something? You got a hole? <laughs> I know you like dad jokes. Sorry, go ahead. What do you want? What do you want to advertise for the people? Uh, we uh, we're we're doing a Top Shot show on this year channel. A Top Shot show? Is yes. This, now, is this a Top Shot show like that that stemmed from the? Weren't you guys gonna do a a DK uh, box break? Well, I I believe that is also in the works, but hasn't officially been announced yet. Yeah. Well, I, I I I thought we've talked about it at some point in time. Have we not? Am I giving am I giving out trade secrets? You might be. All right. Well, I'll stop. All right. Tell me about the Top Shot show then. It's gonna be me and Sharon. Okay. We're on after the 6 p.m. sim on Thursday, April 22nd. Yes. Now the coolest part is, is that we are doing a giveaway on our first show. We're giving away a Mike Conley seeing stars moment. Nice. The way to enter for the giveaway chance is you have to go on Twitter. You have to uh, follow me, follow Sharag, and retweet his 
tweet where he's sort of announcing the whole contest situation. Give, uh, give, give us the when again. April 22nd. Thursday, April 22nd, after the 6 p.m. sim. Okay, excellent. Let me tune in and check some of that out. I want to hear that. I mean, we've talked enough about Top Shot on the Sims. Why not have a show dedicated to it? Yep, and it'll be right here. Same bat time, same bat channel. Whose moment is this that uh, is being given away? Is is it yours? We got it from Top Shot. Is it DraftKings? I believe Top Shot gave it to us. Nice. So, so we have a little top shot relationship then. Yeah, I mean, sh- listen, Chirag's doing all the work. I'm just bringing the sexy to the show. Sexy. Yeah, that's right. So I just, I, you know, he tells me what the deal is. Just like in real life, Chirag is my boss. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, that's exciting. Man. Check that out. We got a time out on the field here. Very cool. Top Shot Show coming to DK's Dream Stream, baby. Mr. Patrick says, uh, I jumped out the ride and said, what's up? Uh, some brothers pulled up some gats, so I said, I'm stuck. Mm. Yep, that'll happen. That'll happen. Time out. Twenty-seven seconds left. Ball at the forty-two. Eight-point game. Mm-hmm. Dwayne Haskins at quarterback. How do you feel about those chances? Uh, I mean, intellectually, not good. But in sim land, anything's possible. Man. Oh, a drop. Any given sim day. Mr. Patrick, I know I know it's from regulators. <laughs> I know. I know. And thank you for that. Come on, Dwayne. Oh, that's too that's too far. Oh no. Flag. Flag. <laughs> oh no. Oh, Defensive pass interference. Let's do that. Come on, Joseph. Putting him right there on the one like that? Are you kidding me? So, Obi says, Big Saxy, is that Got it. Wait, touchdown. Overtime maybe looming, folks. It's Sprinkler. Sprinkler. It's not a very good sprinkler, but I went with it. <laughs> um, real quick. Huh. He wants to know the time of the show. It's after the 6 p.m. Eastern time sim. So probably between 7 and 7.15 will be the start. And it'll run up until the 8 p.m. sim. Two-point conversion. Oh, they brought oh. the heat. They got there. Well. So much for overtime. By the way, sprinkle me down. <laughs> me down, 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 down. Mr. Hawk says, do not bungle the two-point conversion. Sorry, Mr. Hawk. It has been bungled. Bungled. S- such a bungle. Now they're going to have to try for the onsider. Jason Meyer says, gutsy blitz. I agree. They brought the heat and it worked. Yeah, they stay out the kitchen. <laughs> that was a pathetic onside <laughs> Not good. Celtics are getting worked early in the second quarter. Down by nine early. I got to say, I know it's been a rough year for them at times. They've been playing much better recently, but... Yep. Jalen Brown has had some games this year where I'm like, man, this guy is incredible. Yeah, he's uh, he has far and away been their most consistent player this year. No question. 
And you know, like he had that one game where he scored 30 points in less than 20 minutes. Right. Yeah. It was like, and then it was like uh, their, their last game, he was like 17 for 20 from the field. I think there are people out there that believe Jalen Brown is a better basketball player than Jason Tatum. And I get it. I, I don't feel that way, but I get it. I get the argument. Fact of the matter is Celtics are lucky to have those two guys locked up long term because absolutely you, you know they might be as far as NBA young duos go, so not like you know, LeBron and Davis, like mm-hmm. young duos in the NBA, they might be the best. Yeah. You know, so I, I agree with that, but like eventually they have to make that leap. Yeah, of course. You know, like we've been saying they're the best young duo for three years now, probably. Yeah, but now this is the first year that it's like their team. You know, there's there's whose no, team was it last year? It was still like Kemba was, you know, the, the All big right, fair like, point. Like Kemba's now like he knows he's the third wheel. You know what I mean? Yes. Like now now it is their team. And that was not the case last year. Fair point. Thank you. So Tennessee has won this game to advance in our tournament. Congratulations to the Tennessee Titans. Very proud. I won that tournament. Friggin' Chuck Norris. (laughs) Tannehill, 222, a touchdown. Haskins, 206. Two scores and an interception. Uh, We will take a look at the rushing and receiving numbers for for you as well, and then uh, give out some awards, because that's that's what we do around here. Henry hits the bonus, 101 on 19 carries and a couple of touchdowns, so uh, making people feel pretty good about uh what he did now aj brown just missed out six for 98 touchdown for sims for smith for sprinkle uh no huge yardage uh, other than obviously brown sims went five for 72 so put a little respect on his name out of the 146 entries barring any stat adjustments with the manual scoring from our guy cobra k uh, i'm going to finish in 20th uh we're going to have Janko 18 Looks like about a three-point victory. Uh, again, barring changes, which could happen. But uh, what about you? Where's uh, Where's M. Lamarcus sitting? 91, 91st. Good. I did not have J.D. McKissick. Mm. So who is your uh, Krusty Koff player of the game going to be here for this one? Going to be Derek Henry. Okay. Over 100 rush yards, two touchdowns. Yeah. Almost Most fantasy points. points. The That'll Check get the job the, done. Uh, the projected winning lineup. Makes sense. Who disappointed you? Who's the uh, Babysitter Billy Not My Kid Award here? Corey Davis. Mm. 50% owned in our little free contest. Yeah. Two catches for 34 yards. No bueno. No. 14% owned in the captain spot, too. Tough. Okay. Well, that one's in the books, and we hope you enjoyed it. We know we did. Uh, We have got uh, an hour from now, well, less, 45 minutes from now, uh da, 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 dolphins and seahawks the two of us coming on back looking forward to it well actually this is a three in a row for us because we're back tomorrow night too so that'll be fun but uh the next one is the middle game that is on the way don't go anywhere we got some more great stuff for you coming up in between sims get in the uh free roll you can go to the dk sim fan friends league lobby and it is right there for you to jump into please do so Best of luck with your NBA contests as, uh, you know, things progress in the next 45. And we will return, give you our our, uh, lineups and start thinking about baseball movies, folks, because we're going to come back and and rank like crazy. It's going to be a blast. Join us next. I won that tournament. Chuck Norris.
It's the Seahawks, it's the Dolphins, it's Madden After Dark. Welcome on back, everybody, to the Dream Stream. He's Matt LaMarca, I'm Adam Kaufman, and we've got one more tourney game uh, coming at you here. And uh, I suspect most people opted to Captain Russell Wilson, but I want to hear from you guys, obviously. Let us know. Lineups lock in about 30 seconds. Uh, all you in the uh, DK Sim fam, the Chat Kings conference room, we want to know what's going on with you. A lot of good options here, and obviously we are going to... Uh, jump on into uh, a lot of this lineup construction stuff but how you feeling big guy yeah all right how was your break did you do anything <laughs> exciting did you have, have any fun uh yeah I, I hung out with my niece for a little bit good uh and then i printed out some labels to ship out some of these uh stuff that i've been selling on ebay nice so, very productive break very awesome glad to hear it people will be happy to know i snacked on an ice cream cone there's want everybody to know that Celtics have taken a three point lead on the Warriors. That's exciting. And uh, lineups have locked. So what's your lineup looking like here? Yeah, I went with uh, Matt Breida as my captain. Sure. I did have Russ in there. Uh, I also went with DraftKings Metcalf, mm -hmm. Al Wilson, okay, Carlos Hyde. Yeah. And uh, Jason, don't call me Jacoby Myers. How, I mean, why would we? Uh, so <laughs> I have got, uh, I mean, obviously some of the same players that happens in a showdown. Russell Wilson's my captain. I expect he is very popularly owned. I'll look at the ownership percentages in, in a moment. Also have Matt Breida. Uh, also have Al Wilson, as you called him. Also have Carlos Hyde, although that salary has jumped. You hate to see it. He is uh, 5K, was 2,600 last game and went for about 16 points. He is almost doubled in price here for this one at 5K. I also have uh, Greg Olson and the Seahawks DST. I will say the last time I was on a Seahawks game, mm -hmm. I came on here and was like, Carlos Hyde is literally a free square. And he went out and he scored 0.6 points. So wasn't great is what you're saying. It was not great. Not great. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. As we take you on out to Simland, we appreciate everyone here being with us. Going to, uh, of course, hit <laughs> Reti's, did you know, just the cone, no ice cream. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. That's exactly, That's why I said it as I said it. We got Drew, we got Daniel, we got Cobra K all hanging out here with us. Tate and Game Ops and all of you in the chat. Twitch, Tate's my favorite. Wherever you're finding us. It tastes the best. He's the best. I mean, no slight on anybody else. No, I'm slighting everyone else. Tate's the GOAT. Just kidding, everyone else. Everyone else. I Jim like you and all as Joe well. Joe and Kyle and Asher. Where's he been? But me and Tate just have that. I haven't seen Asher in a while. Me and Tate just have a bond that can only exist between two people that barely know each other. It's just a mutual admiration. That only meet over Zoom and you've never seen his face. Oh, Frangelico's going to be pissed, says Drew. Yeah, I love Fran. I do love Frangelico. All right, 1A, 1B. <laughs> Sorry, Tate. Joker says uh, Glass should be calling a game with two Wilsons. Wilson! 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 That was also the last time I called a game involving the Dolphins because I played Albert Wilson, as I do every time the Dolphins are on the slate, basically. Yeah. And he had two touchdowns, so it was a Wilson party. Wilson! Wilson! <laughs> Lamar and Kaufman, we're ready to kick off here at Virtual Century Link Field. Thanks for being with us. Maybe you guys can help me decide what I feel like watching after uh, this simulation because I, I got to watch something. Got to gotta watch a little something. Celtics game be over by, well, maybe it won't be. Um, Are you all caught up on uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Yeah, I am. I uh, I am. I watched that last night, so one to go. That was that was a good one. Nice surprise cameo, right? Yeah, I know. We probably shouldn't spoil it for the people. We won't, but, but I'm just saying. It was, yeah, that was enjoyable. In fact, from what I read after the fact, I don't know if this is true, because remember the uh, the scarlett johansson the black widow movie was supposed to be out before all these tv shows but okay uh, apparently the person that character is also in that that movie. character i believe is in that movie and was supposed to be there before being here okay 
that, that we gave nothing away. We handled that very well. I, I can't ja Daniel. I can't guarantee that the chat won't ruin things, but yeah, D Daniel says don't spoil it. We're spoiling. Me and it. Cough treaded extremely gently. Bruce says don't spoil it. We've spoiled nothing, guys. We've spoiled nothing. All, all, all we told you was there was a cameo. There was a cameo. A cameo. A cameo. It's a cameo. Oh, Daniel says, oh, that cameo. What cameo did you think I was talking about? There wasn't another cameo. I mean, you can message me privately if you want. Oh, he says, I haven't seen the show. Ah! But he knows the cameo. How many times can we say cameo before we start charging people money? <laughs> Cameo. Welcome to the Coughlin. You know what? I'm going to join. Can I join Cameo with you? And people can pay money to get videos over Zoom from the two of us together. I'll do it, but I want 60%. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> I just assume people are coming for you anyway. <laughs> uh, must be, says uh, Tate. Ops MVP, Coughs a sim captain, undercover boss, has 30-minute uh, sims. It's like four-minute four abs. <laughs> yeah, much love for T-Pike. Well, well, what if somebody makes three-minute abs? No, you can't do that, okay? That's stupid. Yeah, it's dumb. <laughs> so what's wrong with you? Uh, all right, Michael says, cough count. How many uh, NBA New England references are we going to get? Bonus a Celtics ref uh, counts as two. A reference, obviously. Um is that fair like the celtics are playing right now in prime time against the warriors me referencing the celtics anything else sure like if i bring up the patriots and belichick and edelman and and uh and, and brady even or the red sox yeah you know, anything like the, the bruins and taylor hall do all these count by the way if i do all that those should count but should the celtics count when they're playing right now michael i want to know I, I mean, I have no problem talking about the Celtics. Here's a question that you're probably well equipped to answer. What does the Tooth Fairy pay for a tooth these days? One of our Sim, sim uh, parents wants to know. Oh, yeah, Alana. Our daughter lost her first uh, tooth today. What's the going rate? So we have... Are my kids listening? Now they're sleeping. We uh, just, have... you know, keep it... Say what the Tooth Fairy does in your house. Yeah, the, to the Tooth Fairy... When the Tooth Fairy drops by... Uh, it has been wide ranging, depending on what the tooth fairy has available, with, without a trip out to the bank. <laughs> so, um, the the tooth fairy has, uh, when when gotten creative for a first tooth, for instance, you know, because that's that's a big deal. That's it's a big tooth. One. It's a yeah. milestone tooth. Yeah, that's the first one. It's a big deal. Um, tooth fairy has has brought two dollar bills, and I've seen that written in the chat. You know, because that's special. That's unique. You're not going to go spend that. You know, a crisp $2 bill or two, or a few even, I think, uh, I, I think the Tooth Fairy brought when, when those first first teeth came out. But uh, since then, your, your run-of-the-mill teeth, your, your run-of-the-mill molar, if you will, um, a few singles, a five, a couple pieces of candy. I mean, it really, it, it, it sort of depends what's laying around at that point in time. The Tooth Fairy <laughs> is very busy. Tooth Fairy's got a lot going on. Yeah, two bitcoins says Ed Zone Dance. Never more than a five. Now, yeah, like John says, five dollars. Never more than a five. That seems about right. I think I got a buck. An IOU under under the pillowcase. We didn't do the pillowcase. Mine would just be on the dresser the next day. Oh really? No, the the tooth goes under the pillow, uh, usually in like a Ziploc bag, so it doesn't get lost. And then, uh, and then. Awoken by uh, dollar dollar bills, y'all. <laughs> but yeah, I think with standard inflation, five dollars is a Dougie pretty generous says, rate. As, as a Canadian, uh, the bleep is a two dollar bill. I believe you would call it a two. <laughs> Monster says, Alana, do you love her or not? Give her the damn two dollars. I mean, you're going to have to go to the bank if you want a $2 bill. Like, most people don't have those lying around. Oh, there he is. DK Metcalf. That's what he does. How in the world do we not have a professional relationship with this guy? DraftKings Metcalf with the first points of this game. It's a touchdown for Seattle halfway through. 
This reminds me, by the way, of the classic South Park episode where the kids get the brilliant idea of they were going to take their lost teeth and bring them to, like, neighborhoods where with more money. Right. Because they found out that the tooth fairy in rich neighborhoods <laughs> left more money for uh, for teeth. Yeah. And, of course, they stumbled upon this whole underground tooth business that this one kid has been running. And, yeah, it's good. Uh, that's got to be an old one because I only barely remember. That is an older one for sure. That's great. Though. A lot of people uh, who are obviously, you know, nowhere near childhood at this point in their lives are shouting out like, I used to get like a quarter. Like, what is going on here with this $5 time? Drew's, even Drew, $5 is a lot for a tooth. Well, Drew, wait till you have kids, pal. I mean, what do you even do with less than $5 these days? Yeah, a co- no. My morning coffee costs me four dollars and one cents every day. Every day. Every damn day. Lana says, "I'll give her a crisp new Madden sim under her pillow." Jared says, "Cough." I know this may shock you. I have many two-dollar bills. You're right. That that does shock me. Daniel says, "I need a Keurig. I've had one. It's not the same. I don't like it nearly as much." AD Poker says, season four, son. God, that, that's, what, a full decade ago? Longer. Decade and a half? How long has South Park been on now? Forever. I remember when I was a kid, like a, like a, real, a real wee lad, mm. Having a babysitter and not being allowed to watch South Park, so I would just be like running all over the house, going room to room, put on South Park for a couple of minutes. Babysitter would catch me, then I would move on to a new room. Ah, uh, gotcha. <laughs> uh, you can't catch me. I'm going to the next one. Abby Rizzo, somewhere producer Mads is thinking, I was the real Sims MVP. Uh, Abby, more like somewhere Fraser Mads is not thinking about the Sims at all. <laughs> nah. I bet right now she's like, I bet you this is a Kaufman Lamarcus Sim. Yeah, this feels. Well, it's not like she doesn't still have the link. Do you think she ever just pokes into the assignments to see like who's working together when? Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll pop in. See what's what. <laughs> Drew says she she knows your schedule. She could probably guess it. I mean, for sure. I'm available the same three days at the same three times every single week. Uh, must be says this is a whole other exercise. Last night during Madden After Dark, Rossi and Tom did DK staff as actors. Any thoughts? Okay, this is a this is a great <laughs> phenomenal question. Are we saying? But like it just happened last night. Are we saying as as in terms of looks, or are we saying which actor would play us if there was like a DK movie? I think the latter. Okay. Daniel says, actually, wait, I think I have this info. <laughs> okay. Is it better that we come up with our own or that we evaluate their picks? Andrew says we've probably done it before. Are you kidding me? Like we've done two thousand Sims practically. Thousand percent we've oh, done it. Before. Tate says Tommy Freeze Pops tweeted it. Okay. Drew says uh, have the chat tell us what they decided. Yeah, you guys were probably here. Hashtag Team Always Here. Uh, why don't you tell us? As Alana says, you guys have too much fun. Minute to go, opening quarter. It's seven nothing Seattle. Yeah, what what did uh, what did those two knuckleheads come up with for everybody? I don't see it. Because we got to decide based on personality. Incomplete pass. All right, they say guess who was Lamarca. I would I would say. Um, It's a good question. Oh, we got a little deflection there. 
Ben Affleck as Kaufman? I was thinking Kaufman for for Ben Affleck. I was also Green? thinking like uh, like James Franco a little oh. bit. Yeah, he smiles with squinty eyes. That fits. Uh, Tate says, did you see this from Tate? Yeah. LaMarca was Kevin James. And Not Kyle thrilled about was that. Was maybe Paul Rudd. You know what? I mean, Paul Rudd isn't who I would have picked. It's but, a good one for you. But, like, nobody dislikes Paul Rudd. Like, <laughs> I dare you to find me someone that dislikes, that has a bad word to say about Paul Rudd. So I'm good with that. I'll take that. We Damian Williams says, Cough was Paul Rudd and LaMarca played himself. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I, I've, I see, like, I've had a similar conversation with, uh, with my friends and like the guy that I would have picked for me, mm. unfortunately is no longer with us. Chris Farley? That's Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh, okay. But I also like, like I've heard James, uh, Seth Rogen a couple of times. Um, Dougie says Dougie. he's on the campaign for Seth Rogen to be LaMarcus. So there you go. Drew says Chris Pratt, but it would have to be like old fatter Chris Pratt, not like new jacked, uh, like you know, jacked, star. ripped Chris Pratt, yeah. Star Lord Chris Pratt. Sure. But yeah, like uh, I would, I would love Parks and Rec, Chris Pratt to play me. That would be an honor. <laughs> Drew says, "No, nah, I want jacked Chris Pratt." <laughs> <laughs> um. You know, Reed, the highest compliment Reed has ever given me, whether he realized it at the time or not, was that uh, that I that I, I had a real Jason Bateman thing about me. And that, I, I'd, I'd welcome that one in a heartbeat. I, I adore Jason Bateman. I think it's that, that subtle, dry humor. Does a good job playing the straight man. He's not a goofball. I mean, he can be. We've seen him, obviously, in Dodgeball, among other uh, pictures. Or Pepper Brooks, but uh, Bateman's awesome. I like that. But Paul Rudd, I'm, I'm not disappointed by Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd's a, uh, this is a strong pick. Strong pick. Strong pick. Philip Seymour Hoffman is a legit force, says Corey. He was, that's for sure. Who caught the touchdown, says Jeffrey? DK Mitcalf. Mitcalf, if you will. Mitcalf. Uh, I don't, do we have any others? Uh, somebody says... Uh, Moose is Stanley Tucci. Eh, I don't see that. I think that you're you're diving into uh, visual comparisons at that point. Like just the like Stanley Tucci, phenomenal actor. character actor, for sure. Can, I I bet he yeah, can pull off probably, Moose if he needed to. Moose. Who would Glash be? Who's Emerson? So Emerson is. Um, I'll tell you exactly who Emerson would be in in my mind. But you go ahead. So it's got to be somebody who can play like a goofball, but also has like that leading man characteristic, you know, yeah. Emerson is a, is a classic Hollywood leading man. Okay. <laughs> got here. The guy that I want to say, and it's not for physical purposes, mm -hmm. cause there's probably like a foot height difference between these guys, but Tom Cruise. No. What? Tom Cruise is a lunatic. Okay, but that, I mean, maybe I just like my pick much better. Than all right, me. well, I'm all ears, my friend. Okay, here's mine. And really, I have it, uh, I, I have it geared more toward a, uh, oh, Albert Wilson with the Dolphins touchdown for those. Wilson! Uh, Wilson! Um, as Christopher says, cough, you're delusional if you think you're anywhere close to Rudd or Bateman. Well, thank you, Christopher. Appreciate you. Ooh, Ooh. Tate with a good one, though, when uh, you're done, by the way. Oh, okay. Uh, no, what I what I was going to say, um, the first person that popped into my mind was not only Sean William Scott, but almost more specifically Sean William Scott in the stiffler role. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Capable of being a leading man, good physical presence. Yeah, he's a bros bro. I don't know if he's a if I would characterize him as a leading man. He's been a leading man TV in what? Shows and movies. What has Sean like? Who my... did you know says Vince Vaughn? Is it like that? Couldn't be further off. 
I like Tate's. He says Josh Duhamel. Or Dumel. Yeah. Is it not Duhamel? I don't think so. I think it's Dumel. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Dumel? <laughs> Potato no. potatoes is true. I, wow. I don't accept that as correct. <laughs> uh, Lamarca Jonah Hill. Is it Rob Lowe? Uh, Flash Christian Bale, American Psycho. I've I've gotten that one before actually. I don't feel like that's a compliment. Well, that's scary. But I have I have gotten that one. <laughs> Flash is John Cusack. No, that doesn't. I don't see that one either. Yeah, role models. Oh, Thank you. sorry. Okay. First of all, he's not the leading man in role models. That's Paul Rudd. Second of all, the goon and Mr. Woodcock. I mean, come on, guys. Jordan says, since we're on the American podcast, I could see Jason Biggs playing Clash. That one fits. I could see that. I'm not saying it's the best choice, but I could see it. Yeah, Sean William Scott was the leading man in Goon. Come on, LaMarca. I love Goon, but that's not like a leading man movie. He was in, uh, what was the uh, that action one where he, him and, oh, uh, now I got to look it up. Charlie Day is Glass. She is a wild card. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I love it. That's yeah, the best yeah. one so far. He is a wild card. Make him go clean the bathroom. I um, love that. Horrible, Drew says, Horrible Bosses is an accurate depiction of Cough, Emerson, and Glass. <laughs> Yeah, I could definitely see Clash with the with the Pepe Sylvie board. <laughs> just, well, just, like while we're on horrible bosses, one one of the times I have laughed the, going back to that just straight man humor, one of the times that I have laughed the hardest in a movie is when they're getting interrogated by Ron White, you know, for running the red light in the Prius. And Bateman goes on the whole, you know, I was drag racing. The, <laughs> yeah. He goes, You were drag racing in a Prius and he just goes I don't win a lot <laughs> that is a good line that killed me wow I've got two people back to back saying Matt LaMarca is Nick Cage phenomenal actor Nicolas Cage who either whispers all of his lines or yells them I totally forgot that Sean William Scott was in an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia while we're talking about Charlie Day uh, uh, because I'm looking at his IMDb now. The Rundown, I think, is the movie I was thinking of before. He's a leading man. Bulletproof Monk. Maybe that was the one I was thinking of. Well, both of them, quite frankly. We're actually. digging real deep to find leading roles for Sean Williams, Scott. I'm, I'm just saying. Like, it's it's way closer than than Tom Cruise or, or Vince Vaughn. Like, those don't fit. He's got to be... He's got to have an aura, a presence. <laughs> I think John William Scott has an aura. Is it? Is it just me? Am I the only one? I guess so. <laughs> Somebody said that that we one of the did a field goal here, by the way. Yeah, who cares? One of the submissions last night was uh, was Chris Evans for uh, for Emerson. I don't see that. Maybe I'm just really locked into the one that I've pictured. Producer Drew says I have the Nick Cage hair from Con Air right now. <laughs> He's not wrong. Yeah, it is 10 to 7, by the way, Seattle. Absolutely flowing. Majestic hair. Right now, right now, I feel like... <laughs> Damien Ducey's Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> no. Need a good Glass one. I thought we had that. I thought we had Glass as Charlie Day. Oh, yeah, that is a good one. Never mind. Take it back. Glass is Jim Carrey, says uh, Anthony. I can kind of see that. 
There's certainly some crazy there. Same as Mackle, like Rob McElhaney. From It's Always Sunny, is that what we're talking and about? We got a fumble! Fumble! Who's got it? I believe the Seahawks Seattle's got it. that up. Seattle's got it. I'm usually so much better at these. I'm like very slow right now. Ooh, Joel McHale. That's a good one for, for Emerson. Yeah. Joel McHale from like, community. like community Joel McHale. Yes. Yeah. Specifically. Yes. Yeah, that fits. That fits. Nope. That's a good one. That might be the leader in the clubhouse right now. I like that a lot. Especially with how willing he was to take his shirt off in every opportunity available. <laughs> hey, speaking of Emerson, could, I don't has, is this out there yet, Drew? Should I bring this up? Give the people what they want, as they say. Make the announcement, he says. So here's what's up, gang. Y'all listening? Y'all paying attention? I'm on my edge of my seat. I can only imagine. Monday night's bracket final. We don't know the teams that will be competing just yet, obviously. But Monday's bracket final, 8 o'clock prime time. It is the only sim of the day on Monday before we get back to our regularly scheduled six a day on Tuesday. The only sim of the day on Monday, eight o'clock Eastern prime time will be called by none other than me and Emerson. We have never before done a sim together. Ah. This is the first time. This is the big announcement. Yeah, I think a, we've never done, a, a, I don't know, people flipped out when Glash and I did a sim together. Well now Emerson and I are gonna do a sim together. It's the first time. Can I come too? Let's make it a three man booth. I mean, live live your life, man. I'm not going to tell you what to do or not to do. I'm just. I don't you. know. I popped in on a sim randomly one time and got in trouble. I do that all the time to Glass, just to <laughs> just to rattle him, just to get in that noggin of his. Like, let me in the Zoom. I'm coming in. Seattle field goal. That's a couple of them out of Jason Myers. 13 to seven. Who's excited? Smash that like button. Get us to 200 if you are in. If you are going to be here hanging out with me and Emerson for the bracket final on Monday. Emerson, let the rhythm take you over, Emerson. <laughs> yeah, see, Mike says, when? This is must-watch and eat entertainment. Tara says, I cannot wait for that sim. Bonzo just, says, that's a lot of ego in one wow. booth. See just busting Bonzo? your chops. I know the people love you. They you know, love Emerson. That Bonzo, though? Bonzo, that's a lot of ego in one booth. There really is. <laughs> Have we considered a three-man booth and letting Glass in there, too? I don't know if the world's ready for that. What a world that might be. <laughs> Drew says baby steps. Alana says, I thought it was going to be a birth announcement, but the birth of you two together is cool also. <laughs> Kicking Club, is Tara Lynn going to join you too? Well, she might be part of the production team. Jordan is just fighting with people about the definition of a leading man right now. I mean, listen, man. he's not wrong. Calm. I just, I'm not, I, I don't necessarily care about it as much, but the leading man is the top build character in the movie. It's not the person that has the most lines. Super build. It's not the best character in the movie. It's the star of the movie. He's 100% right. Jordan Lindenbaum, mark it down. You're correct in my eyes. It's just a damn cough man, says uh, Glash is Gonzo from the Muppets. Rossi had Tara Lynn as Scarlett Johansson, by the way. Daniel says, what about Emerson as Ryan Reynolds? No, nah, that won't sit with me. I like Ryan Reynolds way more than I like Emerson. Um, you know <laughs> what? I think that. that's perfect. It's not. Stop I that. I think it's like he's Stop got that, that like, that like, uh, I'm trying to say it the right way. I'm he's got that confidence that borderlines on him being a jerk. Okay. But he's funny. Sure. I'm in. I'm in on Ryan Reynolds. 
I'd be hard pressed to say that Emerson or anybody that we have here, you know, as part of our commentating team. I'm, none saying. of these people are any, we're, you know what I'm saying? It's no, a no, 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 I, Yeah, I know. No, I'm talking about <laughs> like, I don't think like, I think you are underrating the, the, the funny that is Ryan Reynolds. He's hilarious. Like Emerson. It says funny. he's Ryan Reynolds. No, because he's hilarious. Not because he like looks or sounds a certain way. It's the cadence, it's the delivery, it's the quick wit. Oh, I just, I, I like pray at the altar of Ryan Reynolds. I think he's just a. Oh, idiot. I think you got to increase your level of respect for Emerson Lazio. <laughs> you know, maybe after you work with him, you'll understand. <laughs> Tate says, oh, please, I'm Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, I said that already. No, no. Oh, Tate? Yeah. Oh, I missed that comment. I apologize. Josh, Emerson's toe for grace. Toe for grace. That's what we got here. I mean, if any comments come from Tate, they deserve to be read twice anyway. Of course I've seen waiting. Waiting is outstanding. It's messed up. <laughs> it's what it is. Oh, it's so fun, though. <laughs> well, here's what we haven't done. We're almost at the half, so we can... This this has been a good time. But I think we can, uh, we can ditch this conversation and move to another one for the second half once we get there. Because we said we were going to talk baseball movies. Yeah. And we have not done that yet. So seconds away yeah, nah. after we uh, give you some statistics, uh, Jordan Warren, Ryan Reynolds was awesome in Waiting. He was, and maybe Waiting is the movie that I'll watch tonight. <laughs> Mike, so uh, Cough, Clash was on a Netflix special. What you got, Playboy? <laughs> That's true. He did, uh, he did a little VO work in a Netflix special uh, that came out just recently. I haven't seen it. I saw the clip that he put out on Twitter, though. Clash is on Netflix? Well, he, you can't see him. You hear him on the radio. He's like, you know, Joe Boston announcer, basically doing some, uh, I think, sports. I'm assuming sports um, on like in the background of the uh, of, of the scene. He's, he's not like featured, but he's I mean, he's in it. You can hear him. You know, it's him. <laughs> That's awesome. Drew says, I watched the Glash movie. It was good. <laughs> Daniel says, in the script, it probably says voice on radio. <laughs> Jordan Warren says Steve Buscemi needs to be somebody. I'm not sure who, but we need Steve Buscemi in this. And I will say that if he's willing to put on some weight, he can play me. <laughs> I'll allow it. Daniel. No, Buscemi's not, I mean, he's got some crazy in him, but Bukes is a whole other level. Bukes is like, you know who'd be Bukes? And it doesn't, I'm not saying it fits visually, but I just, first name that popped into my head. Or first actor like don't you see a little jack black in bukes yes like that's that's who popped into my mind i like that i like that call just screaming about crap all the time <laughs> 13 10 after miami got a field goal back congratulations mr sanders stack them kickers game more screen time we need less of you two schlubs lol fair that's, i get it yeah. <laughs> hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and uh, if you're watching on Twitch, give us a follow there as well. Two a one thirteen passing a score. Wilson seventy three a touchdown as well. Carson five for twenty one on the ground. Wilson five for thirty one. Breed a three for thirteen. Bushemi could play Kenny. Nah, we could do better. We can do better for Kenny. Parker I have the perfect one for Kenny, but I can't use it. I Why? can't use it. Now, this is somebody who's been canceled, you know? Oh, okay. All right. You know who would be good? I mean, he would have been canceled if, you know, like if, if that were a thing way back when. Sam Kinison. You remember him? Comedian? No. No? All right. 
Uh, you guys in the chat. Uh, da, 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 da. Jared says, just a damn cough, man. Buscemi for CD. Abs no, no, DeAndre is, uh, is, is Keanu Reeves. <laughs> here, like, here, he already Izzo sounds says, Bukes is Rob Riggle. <laughs> you know what? That fits. I, I can totally see that. <laughs> uh, I can see that. That's good. That is good. In the face! <laughs> <sighs> okay. So we need, like, for Kenny, we need, like, a, a complainy guy. Jabari, I just want, can I mention Jabari Parker is 11 points in 13 minutes? How many has he given up? What's his plus minus? He's plus three. All right. All right. In the face. <laughs> In the face. Oh, man. All right. How do you want to do the movies? So, Drew, as uh, the, the producer that he is, has done such wonderful research going to Wikipedia and looking at baseball films. But narrowing down a very long list, a very long list to uh, ones that you've heard of, for starters, and uh, and beyond that, popular ones. Now, we're not going to sit here and, and rank them in real time. That you know, that's that would be very difficult. It would be exhausting even. But we could we could shout one out, and you want to give it like a one through five, a one through ten. Love it. Something like that. We do that. All yes. Right. Or so, we can pass if. Uh... If what we you, haven't seen what, it. What do you... Oh, if you haven't seen it. Okay. All right. I was going to say, what are you passing on? Um, Kenny's Adam Sandler. All right. This needs to stop. Adam Sandler. Gary Busey is Emerson. Uh, aspects of it fit, but I, I don't think... that's That might be a little too crazy. Yeah, that might be uh, just a, a little much. You know, maybe we'll ask him when uh, the two of us are together on Monday night. I love it. Drew says, give the movie a good or a, a bad, and I'll keep track. Um, can, just for clarification purposes, what if it's a like we can call it a bad movie, but like we really enjoy it? You know, for instance, like The Bench Warmers isn't a good movie, but I love it. How does how does that? Work? I think you give it you give it a one to five scale. Well, Drew wants a yes or no. That's not a one to five. That's why I'm looking for. Uh, I just want I want I want to know. All right. I mean Drew's in charge, so whatever Drew says. Right. So that's why I just want to know how this works before we start. I like to ask questions. You guys know that. This right. Okay you, have, you, you have to take a very easy concept and make it convoluted. Yeah, well it's what I do. Okay, he'll keep the ones that are ranked three or higher. Fine. Can you, Drew, can you send me the list again? Just so it's like buried in our chat. I appreciate you. I have to go all the way back. Emerson Vanderbeek. Says, uh, I don't want your life. I don't want. That's what he would say about playing Emerson in the movie. I don't <laughs> want your life. <laughs> all right, so here we go. Guys, uh, you can jump in as well. Give it a one through five on how you feel about this movie. Um, all right, the first one, Million Dollar Arm. Actually, I almost watched that today before we landed on Rudy. That's a pass for me. I've never seen it. Okay, I will give it... Uh, I, I don't really remember it all that well, so I'm just going to give it a three. I, write down, I, I saw it. I just don't... It was, I remember liking it, but, I, you know, whatever. 42, of course, with the late, great Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, that's a movie that it's importance and its significance is greater than like its entertainment value i'm gonna give that one a three i'm gonna go four i enjoyed it <laughs> drew uh, on million dollar arm says by the way no it's not good it's a one Ranka. <laughs> uh all right so uh how about trouble with the curve that's a nice uh nice that's one. another three for me you could, you could watch that with uh with, with a significant other. Um, uh, yeah, I'm good with three. Three's fine with me. How about Moneyball? 
That is a 4.75. Yeah, I'll go four and a half. I mean, can we do that? Are we messing through up, giving it these, you know, going into fractions or decimal? Well, my thing is, like, I don't want to give out more than one or two fives, and I don't think Moneyball would be in, like, my sure that's my fine. true upper echelon of baseball movies. Totally fine. Four and a half for me. Uh, Beer League. Beer League is a five. It's, it's, see, it's a pass for me. I never saw it. It is a hard five. It's the funniest. Now, granted, it's like this is the it's a New York based movie. So, like, I relate very well to the characters. Like, I know a lot of the, the guys in this movie, like the, the you know, the, the stereotype people. This is the it's, Artie Lang one. Yes, it's a five. Is it streaming somewhere? I might have to watch that later. I don't know, but you would not. Reg- I have turned so many people in this in my life onto this movie. And not a single one has regretted it. Uh, all right. Well, Drew says it's good, too. I like Drew. Beer League streaming. Watch now on Pluto TV, whatever that is. <laughs> uh, oh, it's a, it says it's on Amazon Prime, maybe. Excellent. Watch free now with ads. Come on. Anyway, all right. Next on the list, uh, the Bench Warmers. The Bench Warmers is going to be a two five for me you're a jerk it's a four uh bad news bears remake one 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 two one one two yo the sun don't shine forever but as long as we're here then we may as well shine to get no biggie i'm not biggie uh fever pitch remember one to five I like Fever Pitch. I know that's a hot take. I'm going to give it a three. Okay, zero. Not allowed. Minus one, as Drew says. <laughs> yeah, one to five, I give it a zero. It's uh, a three ben, for me. Daniel gave Bench Warmers a six, <laughs> which, <laughs> which I, I fully support. Uh, all right, Mr. 3000, we talked about this earlier. As we get another field goal good for Seattle. Uh, that's a two five for me. It's two five. Uh, I like it more than all right. Two five. I'm good with two five. I'll take a two five. The rookie, Dennis Quaid. It's a movie that I feel like I've enjoyed, but like, if I see it on TV, I never feel the urge to put it on. Sure. So I'm gonna say two and a quarter. Strong four. It's a strong four. Okay. Really good. Yeah. It pulls the emotional heartstrings. Uh, Air Bud seventh inning fetch. Pass. Yeah, me too. I never saw it. Summer catch. Speaking of fever pitch, summer catch. That's a four just for the scene where Jessica Biel is out Come mowing out the lawn. Well, she's not mowing the lawn. She's coming out of the pool. Well, no. Well, I mean, that scene, but there's also one where she's mowing his lawn. Oh, right. Yeah. I'm with you there. I remember that. Four. He was trying to he was trying to teach her how to use the thing. Uh, all right. Well, for Mr. Mrs. Timberlake, I'm going to give it a one. It's not a good movie. Uh, hardball. 4.5. You're going to find this hard to believe. I've never seen it. Wow. That's a good one. That's what I hear. So I'm going to have to pass on it. 61. For you Yankees fans out there. I've only seen it once. I don't remember a ton of it. I'm going to give it a two. Uh, I liked it. I'm going to give it a, uh, I'm going to give it a three, five, three, okay. five. Okay. For love of the game. Two and a quarter. Really? It's a, it's a, for lack of a better word, like it's a romantic date movie disguised as a baseball movie. Okay. Um, I will agree with that. But again, there's a there's a lot of spiritual stuff went, that went on to clear the mechanism and all that. I mean, I, again, inspired my college essay. I'm giving it a four or five. It's a four wow. or five. Yeah, I liked it a lot. It's, a, it's, it's important to me. Uh, and this is, this is all about me, my ratings. Major League Three, back to the minors. One. Me, yep, same here. Uh, the fan, Snipes and De Niro. 
Yes, never seen it. Really? Yeah, never Basically seen it. Basically Barry Bonds' life story, except no one's trying to kill him. Two. I'll go two. Ed. Matt Yes, Lombard. again. Yeah, I saw that a zillion years ago and don't remember it. I can't imagine I liked it, but I'll pass. Major League Two. Two. Really? I can't get over the fact that Wesley isn't in that movie. All right. I get that. I get that. Um, four and a half. I just love that movie. How about uh, Little Big League? Three. Really? Three and a half. Maybe. You're going to really me and then give it a half a point higher? Maybe, well, maybe a four. <laughs> a four. Four, Drew. Four. Yeah, yeah, it's above average. It's a B for sure. I'm a harder Three. grader than you. Angels in the outfield. This is probably going to be my most controversial one. That's a two movie. You are a jerk. That's a two movie. You have no soul. <laughs> that guy's dad abandoned him. What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's a three. <laughs> you better like it. <laughs> uh, the, the Sandlot. The Sandlot is a 3.75. rankings come in, by the way. 3.75. 3.75 the Sandlot. Uh, all right. Um, three and a half. I still, honestly, like, the, I just still, I get, I get ticked when he loses the Babe Ruth ball. Like, I get ticked on behalf of his dad. Like, I am Dennis Leary in that movie watching it all unfold in real time. I am just angry. Like, it, it makes me viscerally upset. So three and a half quarter break. Let's let's pause in this to give you some numbers in this 16 to 10 barn burner that we have with Seattle in front. If you're into field goals and stacking kickers, you've come to the right place. Madden after dark on a Saturday night with Lamarca, Koff, Drew, Daniel and Cobra K in it to win it, baby. Two a 127 passing a touchdown. Russell Wilson, 126 and a touchdown uh, rushing and receiving numbers as well for you. Obviously, Chris Carson. Eight for 38, uh, five for 25 for Matt Breida. Russ Wilson is five for 31. No touchdowns on the ground in this one. Poor Carlos Hyde has been just that. Three for seven, two of one for eight. Parker, four for 49 still, four for 39 for Olsen. No one has cracked 50 in this one. Metcalf, two for 27, but he's got the touchdown. Two for 31 for Al Wilson. He's got a score. Uh, Jabari Parker, 11 points in 15 minutes. He's five of six from the field and has four rebounds to his credit, making a positive impact in this Celtics one-point advantage with about five minutes to go in regulation. Uh, he's the difference maker tonight, if we're being not, not Jason Tatum's 35 points or Kemba Walker's 20. It's it's Jabari Parker here in this one. <laughs> That's just felt like uh, you all really needed to know. <laughs> Daniel says that was a fantastic segue on stats. Thank you. I uh, I felt I had to. Um, we're going to keep a close eye on that one. Steph is doing Steph things, by the way. He's got 38. So again, 16 to 10, Seattle's in front in this one. Is Michael or whomever it was still out there keeping track of my Boston references? What else do we have here? Uh, Cobra K, the greatest, says Robbie Noble. Program, well, yeah, we're not talking football movies. We're talking baseball movies. Uh, Ryan, cough, you're better than that. It's a five. I don't even know which one we're talking about at this point. That's, that's the problem with just asking people for their numbers as we go rapid fire with movies. Uh, all right, going back to where we left off. Rookie of the year. Same general timeline era of, uh, of some of the ones that we mentioned with the Sandlot, Little Big League, and Angels in the Outfield. Rookie of the year. My doppelganger. Thomas Ian Nicholas. A garden hoser. Uh, rookie of the year for me is a 4.25. I will support that. I'm good with that. Mr. Baseball, Mr. Selick, and Mr. Haysburg. 2.5. Again, I stand for Mr. Baseball a little bit. Yeah, I, I works for me. How about uh, a league of their own? <sighs> That's a five. Five, huh? That's a five. 
I was going to go four and a half. I'm going four and a half. It was either four, seven, five, or five for me. But Maybe like, just the more I think five. about it, like Maybe the four. Tom Hanks, Jimmy Dugan character is hysterical. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. It's a five. Oh, it's, I mean, it is an elite movie, but fives are hard to come by. For sure. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for, I'll go, I'll go four, seven, five. I'm fine with that. Four, seven, five. I can't go five. Um, major league. Five. Yeah, me too. That's a five. Mike Bizzlecoff thinks he's a Griffey. Meanwhile, he's a Mo Vaughn. <laughs> you think about me? Is that a specifically a dig on me? That, that works though. I think that probably fits. Um, Field of Dreams. It's a pass. Yeah, it's just wild to me. Um, I mean, I have to give it a five. I, I've said it's my favorite movie ever. I have to get. I have to give it a five. Um, Stealing Home. I've never. That's a pass for me. I've, I've never. Same. Heard. Eight Men Out. It's another pass for me. Really stellar cast in that one. It's a little slow moving. Three and a half. Eight Men Out. Okay. Bull Durham. Four. Four and a quarter. Yeah. You know what? I like that. Four and a quarter. Jared, Blue Mountain State, 6.9. Well done. Um, okay. That's our main list. And then... I'll be honest. I haven't seen a single one of the ones on this other list. All right. So let's let's just skip the... Let, let's skip that then. Because I've seen a handful of them. But if you haven't seen any of them, there's no... Not problem. a single one. That's fine. Now, we did leave off some, like, the natural, obviously. Yeah, that's true. All right, so let's do the naturals. We have a touchdown here for Seattle to extend its advantage. And Philip Dorsett. Philly B. Yeah, where, where are you putting the natural? 3.75. I was going to go three and a half. Yeah, I think that's a fair number. Yeah, very good. Why is Bizzle coming after you? What are you doing, Biz? What about the original Bad News Bears? Sure. Um, two Rusty point runs is good. Team. Russ took it in himself. 24 to 10. Five and a half to go in regulation. Seattle well on its way. Um, the original Bad News Bears. Three? I'm gonna go three and a half. Okay. I want just I want to look at my wall and see if we're missing any. I mean, I trust Drew, and I, I, I how can you not trust Wikipedia? But I, I can't help but look to see if I own it. I know I have Game Six, which was on his secondary list, but you haven't seen that. And we probably, the Scout was on his secondary list. You haven't seen that one. Yeah, after that, now we're getting into the real old stuff. Like, Pride of the Yankees is a movie I've heard of. I've never Every, seen it. Yeah, everything else I have, we, uh, we've we already talked about. All right. Good. It was a fun exercise. So, uh, so what's this, Drew? What am I looking at here? All right, so these are all ones that we gave. At, at least one of us gave a four to. Okay. Okay. Now what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to rank these? No, I think just read them off. Or just read them off. Yeah. He says rank Oh, them. rank. All right. Well, here are the ones that the two of us, at least one of us gave a four to. 42, Moneyball, Beer League, Bench Warmers, The Rookie, Summer Catch, Hardball, For Love of the Game, Major League Two, Ugh. The Big League, Rookie of the Year, A League of Their Own, Major League, Field of Dreams, Bull Durham. The fact that you allowed Major League Two to be on this list is a tragedy. Well, Drew says, how about each of us pick five? So we know that won't be on yours. I mean, yeah. So, okay. so how about your favorite five? You don't even need to like one through five. Just no, I, I mean, five the up. money, I gave three movies a five. I gave Beer League a five, League of Their Own a five, and Major League a five. Um, I gave 
Cassie says clearly 42 won't be mentioned. We just met, we've talked about it multiple times. It's on our list, Cassie. Pay attention. I gave Moneyball a four or five, and I gave Bull Durham a somewhere in that range as well. So that would be my five. And I feel I feel good about that list. Give me that again. Moneyball, yep. Ear League. Yep. Ooh. That means I have to cut hardball. That means I have to cut hardball. Okay. All right, I'm okay with that, though. Moneyball, Beer League. League of their own. Major League, Boulder. Mike Business says, are you serious? We are privileged. Smash that coffin Lamarca like for Mike. Uh, all right, Mike. All right, Mike. Hey, could, uh, could I get... Uh, Mike and uh, the you know the, the Godfather Mike and and obviously Mad Dog talking sports movies. Uh, Mike, uh, I saw this movie the other day. Uh, it's called a- a- Angels in the Outfield. Uh, you won't believe it. They were baseball players, and they had angels. They were helping them, Mike. <laughs> uh, dog, this has got to be the dumbest premise for a movie I've ever seen. You think an angel is going to be able to pitch to Babe Ruth? Okay. I'll tell you who doesn't need an angel. Andy Pettit on the mound, game six. You can't stop it. There's, I don't, you need, you better have a whole angel showing up if you're trying to hit off Andy Pettit in the game six, right? <laughs> uh, uh, that's good. <laughs> you, you had me, but then you really had me. I'll tell you who doesn't need an angel. <laughs> Andy Pettit, game six. Uh, the the only other place that I thought you'd maybe go with that was why we why are we talking about these movies? You know, I was in a sports movie. Oh <laughs> yeah. You ever, uh, you ever I would have to one? say uh greatest movies of all time are uh, number one, uh Ben Hur. Love that <laughs> film. Number two, uh specifically my three and a half minutes in Uncut Gems. Uh and then number three, Forrest Gump. I can't tell you how much I love Mike, by the way. I'm just such a Mike fan. I'm a, I, I mean, there are a lot of us, but I am a, I am a Mike stan all day. Um, all right, so my five, again, not one through five, but my five would be Field of Dreams, Major League. Moneyball, I think, would have to be in there. I say this not remembering at all what I rank these movies. <laughs> Yeah, it's Major tough, League, right? You kind Major of get League, Field of uh, Dreams, Moneyball. Uh, I'm going to put Major League 2 in there. And, oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> and maybe Bull Durham? Maybe Bull Durham? I mean, I love the bench warmers, but I can't sit here and, and in good conscience call it one of the top five baseball movies of all time. Just can't do it. I still think that's only four, though. Bull no. Durham, Field of Dreams, Major League, Major League Two. Oh, and Moneyball, did you say? And Moneyball, yeah. Yeah, okay. Daniel says it is, though. Top five yeah. If Daniel was involved in this, bench formers would win. Best three baseball movies via consensus. Moneyball, Bull Durham, Major League. I'm fine with that list. I'm good with that. I think that's a great top three. Yeah. See? Sometimes it just works. Uh, Jabari Parker is in with the closing lineup and a minute to go in a tie game. Can I mention? All right. You know what? We should probably get back to this game a little bit. Twenty-four to ten, about ninety seconds to go. Just what what a night, what a what a time to be alive. Jabari Parker, impacting the Celtics in Game One. I refuse to live in a world where he's a rotation player on a contending team. So. Not that the Celtics are true contenders, but 
Panthers as a, are the Celtics a contending team or not? Not, not yet. I would probably have them fifth in my Eastern Conference power rankings. You might be sliding them a little bit, but not drastically. They're not the Bucks. They're not the Sixers. They're not the Nets. And, from and there, I think the Heat, when healthy, are better. Oh, drop that one. That was fourth down. We got a Todd. That's it. That's it. As Daniel says, Miami's Cinderella run has come to an end. I really thought they were a team of destiny. So Seattle's going to advance. Terrific. Congratulations. Someone just tweets out, Jabari Parker has more points tonight for the Celtics than he did all season in Sacramento. <laughs> so here's what we got tomorrow. Eight o'clock, the two of us for a 20 against a one. Bucks Chargers. That should be a good time. At 10, Madden After Dark, Lamarcus sticks around. Brendan Glasheen comes to the rescue. Titans, Seahawks, and 11 versus a 10. Would you like to give us your early picks for these games? Pressure. Uh, Bucks, Bucks, Chargers. Bucks win and the Titans win. Okay. I like the upset call. And then the Bucks win the Super Bowl. I'm eating the chalk. Eating the chalk. Trent says it's awesome that we keep ignoring what's happening here. What do you would you like me to call that first down loss of one? I apologize, Trent. That was a loss of one on that first down carry. <laughs> I bet if you dive on into the YouTube engagement though. Been a whole lot going on in the chat talking about sports movies. Rank, rank, rank. The only problem is it's just a lot of random numbers. Just a lot of numbers. Here. One, <laughs> six, four, three and a half. What are they talking about? Fantasy Hawk says first place in Coffs NBA. Let's go. Let's go, Mr. Hawk. Good for you. Says, uh, looks like I'm going to lose to Kaufman tonight, unfortunately. I have not even looked. How's our showdown going? With the, are you going to lose to me there? I think so. Well, that's what I like to hear. That's what I'm talking about. I ended up not going with Eubanks because oh, I just didn't know where showdown. else to spend the money. Yeah. yeah. And Eubanks is going off. Good. I've got him. 22 well th obviously that's why i'm telling you this well i just mean i've like i got him in multiple places i got him in a showdown I this is the difference in our lineups i, lo I love the, love it love some use banks <laughs> <laughs> they punted that one which um a little bit ridiculous got me this time so much creative not talking about the sim like, wait is that good or bad Seahawks punted. They punted. And now they shake hands. They hug. This is shaping up to be quite a victory for the Celtics, might I add. 44 for Jason Tatum tonight. The big dog. 47 for Steph Curry. The bigger dog. Uh, that's some LeBron Pierce action right there. I mean, can we can we flash back to the beginning of the season when some of you guys tried to tell me that Damian Lillard was be better than this man? As long as you're not singling me out there. It wasn't even just the beginning of the season. It was happening like halfway through the season when it seemed like maybe there was a little bit of a case too. And then Steph just going off. Don't forget. Turbo Jets. Nice, nice, good. Good job there, Celts. Uh, all right, good job, Seattle. 55 on the ground for Carson, 45 for Wilson. Let's take a little look-see 
at our lineups and see how those are going. BTW. Uh, the prime time. No, that was the last one. Hang on. That one's not closed out yet. The Madden After Dark. That was a good uh, good night for me here. The Madden After Dark. The Wait, the Dolphins really beat the Chiefs? Well, uh, yeah, Cinderella season's over, unfortunately. Uh, I finished 12th, barring any stat adjustments, with uh, Nithink. And I think, I think it's supposed to be, and I think, and I think in, uh, in front right now with Wilson in the captain spot as he's about 22% owned, Brita, Parker, Wilson, Dorsett, and Myers. Uh, why don't you start with the babysitter, Billy, not my kid award? Cause I think that one's pretty obvious. Carlos Hyde. That's who I'm giving it to. I do not mean that. Who Matt, are you giving it to? Matt Breida had nine points. He's 20% in the captain spot and 75% owned. All and right, fine. Four captain. Fine. Goodness gracious. I mean, Carlos Hyde was not good, but. And Carlos Hyde was 50% owned, but we'll give it to Matt Breida. Yeah, thank you. Uh, what about your uh, Crusty mm -hmm. Cup player of the game? Does it have thank to you. us? No, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I always give it to Wilson, but not the Wilson that you're thinking of. Albert Wilson. Yeah, okay. Four catches, 53 yards, and a touchdown. That gave him 15.3 DK points in a low-scoring sim. sim. Mm -hmm. Wilson! Wilson! Uh, Scotty is Scotty says, Conf, I thought New Orleans beat the Chargers 24-17. to I am told the Chargers won, but admittedly I wasn't here earlier today. We get verification there, Drew? Chargers won. Okay, that basic. <laughs> the producer is weighed in. Uh, Robbie thanking everyone individually. Uh, don't let cough change your mind, Lamarca. You can give it to anyone you want, says PhD. Yeah, unless it sounds stupid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the team game up here, you know? Uh, business, off each other. Uh, almost 11-11, preemptively giving love to cough and everyone else, especially you, Lamarca, and R.I.P. Madison. Uh, <laughs> we... we, we we are who you made us again. She's not dead. Uh, look, Rossi says, Hey, here. Rossi in the Rossi building just pops in to say sweet dreams. Rossi will be Rossi's coming up for the midnight sim. It's an hour from now. Uh, <laughs> no, don't hang out, really. Rossi, I'm insulted that you picked Kevin James to portray me. Rossi, Rossi, if you're still here, who won the Chargers game? The Chargers are saying you were here earlier today. Did the Chargers win or the Saints? This is professionalism <laughs> at its finest. <laughs> He pre I hope he didn't just come in and say sweet dreams and leave. He might have. He really might have. I would. <laughs> I get it. If you're still here, Rossi. I mean, I'm pretty sure we have a spreadsheet that, that gives us all these details. But Madison never would have messed this up. I hope he's. I really hope he says the Saints. I hope he answers. Should we just wait until he answers? And just see how many people he might be gone it'll be just five people hanging out it'll like watching now six we're waiting on you rossi we need that answer all right i ain't waiting tomorrow's, anymore tomorrow's schedule is uh me and lamarca chargers bucks unless we find out the saints one and the titans and uh and of, of course the seahawks will be together glash and lamarca will be uh tomorrow madden after dark is Drew says tomorrow 8 p.m. We're still on waiting. Yeah, so we're gonna have to hand off the stream. Mul multiple people saying Chargers won. Good, but did Rossi? Because no. I really trust him. Oh well. All right. Well, good win for the Celtics. I suppose nice job for the Seahawks too. He's Lamarca. I'm Kaufman. These other fellas that make all this possible: Drew, Daniel, Cobra K, and of course all of you in the DK Sim fam. Thanks for hanging out with us on a Saturday. Guess I'm gonna go watch Beer League now. And uh, yeah. have yourselves a night, folks. Lamarca. Let's do it again tomorrow. Sure thing, bud. All right. All right, Mike.